What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto has mutated Mangekyou. Summary, Naruto is almost killed on his 8th birthday and saved by Itachi and then adopted by him. But what this, Naruto has unlocked his Sharingan. Now Naruto has to train in order to prove not only that he is not a demon but to become clan head too. Chapter 1, a little boy 8 years of age with spiky blonde hair, with blue eyes, and 3 whiskers like marks on each cheek. Name was Naruto and he was running through the streets scared because a mob was chasing him. Get back here you demon, yelled a villager while holding a sharp knife. Die demon! Screamed a shinobi with a kunai. More bloodthirsty screams of anger was heard soon after. Little Naruto ran through a small alleyway only to end up at a dead end and then huddled into a corner hoping they didn't see him come down through here. When they found him they all started laughing at what he was doing. Look, the demon is trying to protect himself, said a shinobi. Hiya hey! Too bad that won't work demon, said another shinobi. They all then started stabbing him, cutting him, and beating him like a bunch of wild animals. Meanwhile, a very young Jonin was passing through the gate, not too long after finishing a mission. He showed the guards his license and let him pass through. It was Itachi who was considered a well-known ninja in Konoha. And, Itachi left the Anbu and changed to be a Jonin and also he doesn't live with his family in this fanfic. As he was walking towards his apartment, he heard yells of happy. Bloodthirsty screams coming from an ally. He also heard a small child screaming out for help. He walked over to investigate and he saw Naruto getting beaten and stabbed by the mob and he became angry. So he dove in to rescue the boy. They at first wondered what was going on, but once they noticed who was in front of the boy, they started to become scared. I I Itachi, W what air why why you dd doing h here? Said a very scared shinobi. Mm maybe h he's here t to h h help us kk kill the demo began a villager but was killed by Itachi with a kunai to the throat and his Sharingan activated spinning violently. They all started screaming and running from the angry Uchiha to avoid getting killed. Itachi started to run towards the hospital to get Naruto help. Don't worry Naruto you'll soon get help, I promise, said a worried Itachi. I I Itachi Chi and Nies San, said Naruto very weakly who then passed out. Itachi then went as fast as his legs could go. He then arrived at the hospital and quickly went in and ran up to the front desk. A nurse looked up and saw Itachi and then saw a very beaten Naruto. I'm sorry, we don't have any available rooms for him. The nurse said with anger. Itachi then flared his Sharingan at the nurse and said you will help him or so help me. Also flaring his killing intent at her. It was so strong that it was felt by the Hokage who decided to investigate. When he arrived at the hospital via Shushin, he saw Itachi, who was holding a bloody and beaten Naruto was staring a nurse with his Sharingan activated. Naruto-kun, said a very worried Hokage and ran up to Itachi. Nurse, put Naruto in a room right now, yelled the Hokage. She obeyed him and ran Naruto to a room to begin treatment on him. Itachi and the Hokage were in the room as they were beginning to discuss what had happened to Naruto. What happened? asked the Hokage. Itachi began to explain but was interrupted by one of the doctors. I'm sorry, you two will have to wait outside while we do the procedure, said a doctor. Itachi and the Hokage decided not to in case that they would try and kill Naruto while they weren't in there. Damn it! The doctor mentally cursed. After a while, the doctor said that he would be okay and they left quickly. The Hokage called a few Anbu to protect Naruto and they obeyed. Hokage Tower Itachi and the Hokage were discussing things about Naruto and Itachi then came up with a solution that could help Naruto. Hokage-sama, I was wondering if I could adopt Naruto and he could live with me in my apartment said a hopeful Itachi and the Hokage just stared blankly at Itachi and then smiled very happily. Of course you can Itachi, he sees you as a brother figure and I'm sure that he would love to live with you, said an overjoyed Hokage. Thank you Hokage-sama, he said as he bowed and left. Thank Kami that Naruto will finally get a better place to live, thought the Hokage. He then pulled out a very familiar orange book and started to giggle perversely as blood dripped from his nose. Hospital slash the next day. Itachi and the Hokage were walking into the hospital to see Naruto. They walked into Naruto's room and he yelled Itachi Nisan, Oji san. Very happily. Hello Naruto kun, how are you feeling after that experience? The aged Hokage said to the boy. I feel great and thanks Nisan for helping me with that mob, said Naruto. No need to thank me Naruto kun said Itachi not wanting to be thanked right now. Naruto we have something that we want to ask you as it would be your choice to do it, said the Hokage. What is it Oji-san? Is it something good, said Naruto. Well Itachi and I were talking and Itachi asked me if he could adopt you and let you live with him, said a hopeful Hokage. Live, with, Itachi, of course I would love to live with you Itachi Nisan, yelled an overjoyed Naruto. Good then, now we will go to the orphanage and get the paperwork done, 
said the Hokage while he was smiling but that changed when Naruto said something. Oh jeez and I no longer live at the orphanage. They kicked me out two years ago on my birthday. They did what to you Naruto-kun? I will deal with it soon very, very soon. Thought a very angry Hokage then sat and looked crossed his face. How come you never told me Naruto? Well you're always so busy with the village and I didn't want you to be bothered by something I could handle on my own. Naruto you didn't need to do this alone you can always call on me. Okay? Okay. One, more thing Oji-san. Why didn't you tell me that the QB was sealed in me? Asked Naruto. Itachi and Hokage stopped right in front of the door and looked at each other with shocked faces and then looked towards Naruto. They then place all kinds of seals to avoid any interruption. Okay now Naruto. Tell us how you found out about the QB and him being sealed in you. Asked the Hokage. First off, the QB is actually a girl. Correcting the Hokage. They just sat there listening to the young boy. Shaking from their shock they then asked tell us everything that happened. Flashback slash mindscape. Little Naruto was walking through a place that looked like a sewer and he was ankle deep in water. He then came up to a room with a large cage door and a seal in the middle of the cage. Naruto then walked closer to the cage and stopped when he heard a large booming voice coming from inside the cage. So my jailer finally comes to see me. What do you want kid? Who are you and where am I? Asked Naruto not worried about who it was. Oh come on you never seen the QB before. Aren't you supposed to have been killed by the Yandami five years ago? Said Naruto still not scared about it. And what about my second question? First of all, you can't kill me, I would just be reborn in hell and just come back over time. And to answer that second question, you are in your mindscape, said the QB. Then how did you end up inside me? I was sealed by your Yandami five years ago and into this cage. The QB replied, Okay then so why am I here now, did you want to tell me something? Asked Naruto. Yes, I did want to tell you something. Several things in fact, said the QB. Like what? Well first of all, I'm really a female and this is just my fox form. I actually have a human form would you like to see it? He nodded and then she started to shrink down to a human-like shape and he walked closer to see. What he saw was a very beautiful woman with a heart-shaped face and blood-red hair, red silted eyes but she was naked and he noticed that she had very large breasts at least large C cups to mid-D so Naruto turned away blushing with some blood coming out of his nose while stuttering. CC can YUP please put us some CC clothing oh oh on. Ha hey oh hey, sorry. Is this better? Naruto turned around and saw that she had a beautiful crimson Komodo on. It had blue trim to it that hugged her curves. Yes, thanks. Second thing that I want to tell you is that I didn't attack the Konoha on purpose. I was forced out of my previous Jin Shuriki, Kushina Uzumaki, who I think is your mother, by man wearing a strange mask and forced me to attack the village. You knew my mother what was she like and do you know who my father was as well? Those questions would probably have to be answered by your Hokage. Oh okay. You can continue now. The final things that I wanted to ask you is do you want me to unlock your dojutsu? What is that? It's a special type of aijutsu. The one I want to unlock for you is what Itachi's family has it's called the Sharingan. What can it do? That dojutsu can give you the ability to copy and see through any ninjutsu, genjutsu, or taijutsu. Then yes please give me eyes like Nissan has. Red energy flowed out of the QB into Naruto. It craped up his smell body and into his eyes. Pain flooded his body forcing him to scram out. After a few painful moments, Can I use it now so I can see what it looks like? Asked a very happy and tired Naruto. Sure, all you need to do is put a little chakra into your eyes and then look into this mirror to see it, he did what she said and it looked amazing. Blood red eyes stared back a single black comma like shape slowly circled around his pupil. Thanks Q-chan, it looks amazing. Also, there is something that you gain through having me. And that is the ability to use all five main elements including the ability to combine them into sub-elements with hard training, she said. That's so cool. So, how do I get out of this place anyway? Just wake up and I think someone is coming so hurry up, she said quickly. Naruto then woke up just in time to see Itachi and the Hokage come in. Flashback end. What happened on the outside were different things. When the human form of the QB was described, the Hokage and Itachi were blown back by major nosebleeds. The part about being forced to attack Konoha, the two felt sorry for accusing her. Finally the part about his new dojutsu and how he can learn every element made them nearly faint. It looks like Naruto-kun will become one of the world's strongest people if he trains long enough. Hey maybe you Itachi could help train Naruto-kun. I'll even put him in the academy in two or three years to be with many of the next clan heirs. Offered the Hokage. Naruto looked like he was about to explode with joy as he smiled happily. Yeah I'm going to be a ninja shouted Naruto. He then remembered what he wanted to ask Oji-san. Oji-san who was my father? 
I already know that my mother is Kushina Uzumaki. So who is he? Naruto questioned and the Hokage started sweating bullets. Okay then your father was, Minato Namikaze the, the, the Andami, fourth, Hokage, said the old man as Naruto and Itachi just fainted at the answer. Looks like they took it too fast hey hey hey, laughed the Hokage then pulled out a little orange book to read while waiting for them to wake up. Thirty minutes later, Itachi and Naruto woke up to the Hokage reading an orange book while making perverted giggles. Hokage Sama slash Oji San. They both said at the same time scaring the Hokage half to death. He he sorry, so anyway Naruto-kun could we see those new eyes of yours? Asked the Hokage. Naruto then closed his eyes and put chakra into his eyes activating it. When he opened them they saw Naruto's new Sharingan looking at them. Itachi smiled at how the Sharingan ever present in its glory. Naruto then took chakra away from his eyes turning them back to normal. So what was that about adopting me san he asked. Itachi then snapped back to reality and answered him, Huh? Oh. As I said I was wondering if you would like to come live with me in my apartment. Sure I would love to, would you also train me? He asked. Sure, why not? That afternoon slash Itachi's apartment. Here we are. Your room is down the hall on the left, Itachi said. Okay Nisan thanks. Naruto replied, I'll make dinner soon so make yourself at home. As Naruto walked around his apartment it was fairly normal. Had a one kitchen. One bathroom, a small living room, but it did have two bedrooms. The walls were painted a light blue, with some pictures of Itachi's family mostly of his mother and brother Sasuke who he has seen around the village. Some pictures of friends or of cousins, but he couldn't find much with his father and he never looked happy. Not knowing how families worked he didn't think much of it. Soon he came to his room and the first thing he noticed was the bed. Mostly due to the fact it was the only thing in the whole room. But he didn't care because up to now he always slept outside even at the place where all the other kids were and people brought them home to become their son or daughter. He didn't like it there the people in charge or would often beat him and not feed him most of the time for days on end. How they made him sleep outside after a beating on the coldest day of winter. Assholes. He thought out loud with a small amount of anger. I'm sorry if the room is not to your liking I didn't have time to shop yet. Itachi said with amusement in his voice as he cleaned his hands off on a towel knowing ever while Naruto wasn't talking about his room. Naruto now embarrassed couldn't hide his red face. No, I mean it's nothing about the room I love it. This is the first bed I will ever sleep in. It's just. You know never mind it doesn't matter now. I live with my niece and now that's all that matters, he said with smile on the last part. Smiles cross on his lips. Good you feel that way because you're stuck with me for now. Go on dinner is waiting, I'll be out in a minute. Naruto quickly left to the table in the kitchen leaving a dust trail behind him. Itachi's smile slowly turns to a frown. His first bed? Were we at war and I didn't notice? He soon left the room to join Naruto and what Sal made him smile. Sitting at the table was Naruto his food untouched. Obviously waiting for him and openly showing how impatient he was getting if his grumbling was any indicating. Why did you wait so long to eat Naruto I thought you would have eaten both our plates by now. Hey I'm not that bad, okay so maybe I'm that bad but... I wanted our first dinner as a family to be eaten together, he said looking at the ground, he closed his eyes ready to cry thinking he did something wrong and was scared that his Nissan wouldn't want him around now. Itachi smiled, touched that Naruto would do something so out of character. Reaching over he placed his hand on his spiky blonde hair and rubbed gently. Naruto was shocked at the feeling and opened his eyes to see Itachi smiling brightly at him. As brightly as one gets with him anyways, Naruto was used to having someone put hands on him but it was to cause him bodily harm. Seeing this caring act made him cry and feel safe. Truly safe like nothing could ever hurt him. They soon eat their food in pace and made small talk. As they enjoyed their night their laughter filled the air of the apartment. The night ended with a movie Itachi had bought that morning a princess scale that just came out. Naruto was entranced by the movie and Itachi couldn't help but smile at Naruto's antics. After the movie Itachi put Naruto to bed. Good night Naruto-kun sweet dreams. Good night Itachi Nisan. Thanks, today was the best day of my life, said Naruto with a true smile of the one he didn't put up in front of people, but the smile of a little boy just as it should be. Itachi decided in that moment to protect him in any way he could, to have him truly smile for as long and as often as possible. Right after Naruto was out like a light within two seconds. Itachi had to stifle a laugh for just how quickly Naruto would be full of energy one second then out the next. That night Naruto was for the first time in his small life was able to sleep peacefully with no worries. The next day, after getting up and taking a shower Itachi has to get Naruto up to start the day. Naruto-kun time to get up. No response. He puts his hand on Naruto's shoulder and lightly shacks him. Come on Naruto-kun we have a full day planned. 
Still no response from the blonde boy. Itachi was known as a fairly even-tempered man but even he had limits this early. Naruto-kun get up now, ahhh. Screams Naruto as he falls from his bed his blanket wrapped around him. Oh good morning Nissan Naruto said tiredly. Recomposing himself Itachi watched as Naruto untangled himself from the blanket. Naruto after we are done eating and you take a shower we're going shopping to get you something new to wear. Can you teach how to do some ninja stuff? Hum, sure I think a good to start with how to unlock all of your churka. Nissan can't I do that, I can already use the Sharingan after all. No. You're only using a small portion of your overall churka, just as much as it takes to use it. The rest is still locked inside of you. Naruto closed his eye and thought and tilted his hand to the side much as a fox would. Okay so if I can unlock the rest I can learn really cool jutsu? Itachi simply nodded his head. Sweet. I'm gonna learn how to do cool jutsu just like Nisan. Itachi smiled and laughed at the young boy's enthusiasm. Well if you wish to learn we better eat and get going then. At a clothing shop in the Uchiha district. And that they did. 30 minutes later they were out the door and on their way to a clothing store. When the shopkeeper glared at Naruto Itachi shot him one back daring him to try something. The killer intent liking from Itachi made the man back off faster than you could blink. An hour later of shopping Naruto walked out of the dressing room in some new clothing. Naruto was wearing a black t-shirt with an orange spiral on the back, black onbu pants, and black fingerless gloves with metal studs where his knuckles would be, and to finish as the emo look Itachi was throwing at him black shinobi sandals were on his feet. You look good Naruto-kun. Thanks Nissan but it's like it's missing something. I think are right, hold on I'll be right back. With that Itachi took off for two or three minutes. He returns with something held under his arm. Here try this on I think it will look good on you. Naruto unfolded it to find it was a very dark blue jacket that went down to his ankles. Black leather straps hung off the front, made to quickly do or undo them. On the inside were pockets for scrolls or offhand stuff lined with steel mash to protect the wearer. On the life shoulder was metal plate on the right side. The size of Naruto's hand, was imprinted proudly the Uchiha crest. Without a second thought he put on the jacket his Nissan give him. This is so cool, I look like a badass. Naruto proudly yelled. You won't sound the part if you keep yelling like that though, Itachi chuckled when Naruto began to pout. That also doesn't help your case any. He mused at the youth. Hey Nissan what's that thing on that back it looks like a holder? Asked Naruto with a confused look. Oh you'll see Naruto. At the flying dragon weapon shop. Next they headed off a weapon story and a basic seat of kunai and shuriken which was 40 of each. Mash armor of different sizes with steel arm and leg guards. When Naruto wasn't looking Itachi also paid for a seat of special wrapping of legs and arms. Naruto walked around the store. Eyeing the many and varying items. They had every weapon a person could ask for. Looking over every weapon they had Naruto felt he was in a candy story. That one has taken a liking to my shop it seems, said the gruff looking shop owner said to Itachi as Naruto had stars in his eyes. He was as tall as Itachi with many scars on his face and arms. A strong looking body honed from years of blacksmithing. Neat tucked brown hair tied in a ponytail with a goatee complete with deep brown eyes. Indeed, it seems he has. He's the boy it's he? Itachi nodded well as welcomes here any time, fuck the pig headed people. You better be good to him Itachi has had a hard life. He needs you, someone to look after him and care for him. Yes he does. And I'll be there for him don't make the mistake thinking I won't, said Naruto adoptive brother in a hard voice. I just wouldn't want my daughter to have to live the life he had to live at all. Speaking of your daughter how is Tenten doing Miyosha? Itachi asked. She is doing very well in the academy. Perfect aim never misses once, said the proud father. Hey Nisan look at what I found. Naruto said as he ran up to them with a sword in its sheath wrapped in a cloth. Let's see it Naruto-kun. After grabbing sword and unwrapping it. The sheath and handle were rectangular in shape and midnight black in color. The handle itself had a small indent where a deep red like blood color metal was placed. Pulling it out slowly it gave it a beautiful ringing noise. The blade was silver with a reddish blade edge and looked deadly. Think. Sasuke's sword from Shippuden but with the colors. This is a beautiful sword Naruto how did you find this? Itachi asked as he sheathed it. I don't really don't know. I guess something just called out to me. It's really weird to explain. I see well in that case there are only thing to do. Itachi smiled at Naruto then handed the sword to the man. As of today Naruto the sword is yours take good care of it. W what are you serious Nisan? After a nod Naruto keeping looking like he couldn't believe what just happened. Are you going to teach me how to use it? I will teach what I can. Come on now let's go unlock the rest of your chakra now Naruto. Okay. At the academy training grounds. They soon found themselves at the academy's training ground. Naruto had taking off his jacket and had Itachi to hold onto. 
After explaining the basics of Churka to Naruto we find our blonde hero setting on a seal array trying to unlock his Churka, but so far to no luck. Nisan what those chakras feel like? Hum, I guess the best way to say it is it's a warm feeling. When you feel Naruto-kun you grab it and pull it, pull as much as you can. Keep pulling it to the point won't budge anymore. With a nod Naruto closes his eyes to fell his chakra. Soon a sensation Itachi described could be felt. Naruto did what he was told and pulled it. But no matter how much he pulled it keep coming so he kept going. There's so much it doesn't seem to end. But Nisan said I shouldn't stop so I won't. I won't stop Nisan. When Naruto starting pulling on his churka. On the outside Naruto looked clam almost statue-like. Itachi was trying to sense chakra from Naruto. Then a small flicker began showing itself as the grass around the child started to be pushed outward. That's it Naruto you can do it. Then a large burst of chakra started pouring out of Naruto's small frame. The level just kept climbing up higher and higher. Damn what the hell. How can he have so much already? The chakra got so high it became visible looking as if Naruto was on fire with blue flames that kept getting longer. It was at this point that Itachi started to break out in a cooled sweat. H how much more can he pull out? He said out loud. What Itachi saw next amassed him the chakra itself started to twist inward to Naruto's body look like a whirlpool. Then in a split second all of it was pulled into the blonde hero's body like it was never there. Naruto opened his eyes looking tired. A smile spared across his face how did I do Nisan? You did amassing Naruto. I'm so proud to be your father, Itachi said without thinking with a smile and eyes closed missing the fox like smile on Naruto face. Good night, dad. And with that Naruto drifted to sleep. Itachi picked Naruto up after gathering their things. He headed home and put Naruto in his bed and packed things into trailing packs for what he had planned in the near future. As Itachi sat down as there was a knock at the door. Now who could that be? Itachi said to himself as he opened the door. To his shock it was he mother who he had not seen since he moved out because his father would not allow it. Mother? I'm so happy to see you but why are you here I though father wouldn't let anybody in the clan see me as clan head. Mikoto was a beautiful woman with long black hair like most Achiha. Don't forget about Naruto's blonde hair, with onyx color eyes. She was wearing a blue mid thigh skirt and a red tank top with a darker blue jacket that stopped just below her chest. Itachi your asshole of a father cheated on me. I'm leveling his ass and taking Sasuke with me, she said with a raising voice. Okay but you need to keep it down mother my son is trying to sleep. Itachi said with his monotone way of speaking. At first she simply compiled not thinking much of it but soon what was said clicked in her mind. Son. What do you mean son Itachi? She spouted in a semi-quiet voice. After taking a seat on the couch Itachi began to tell what happened in the last two days. They keep talking for an hour going over almost everything. Who would have thought he would have the Sharingan and at such a young age? So what are you going to do now Itachi? I'm leaving to train Naruto tomorrow for two or three years. Until then feel free to live here. I'm taking Naruto to train him for two or three years. Until then feel free live here. Mikido just sat there doing her best impression of a fish. Are you sure you want this? Itachi nodded. Okay I love you Itachi take care of yourself and Naruto. She lovingly hugged her son, and then punched him hard in the head sending him to the floor. What was that for? Itachi whined as he rubbed his head. That's for making me a grandmother already. Now I feel uh, old. She dropped her head in depression. Well you sure as hell don't look like it mother. I'm going to bed I need to get up early, you can have my room. Thanks son I love you. Do you know any places I could rent out? Yes I'll make a list before I leave to talk to Hokage Sama tomorrow. Could you watch Naruto when I'm gone? No problem what kind of grandmother would I be if I couldn't do that? She said smiling. After Itachi went to bed Mikoto looked around the apartment and soon came across a sleeping Naruto covered in a blue confider. She smiled at seeing the small boy and slowly went over to him sitting next to him she covered the new Uchiha a little more. So you're my grandson huh? Well welcome to the family Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha. Then she closed her eyes and took a deep calming breath. Take care one young on path, may you grow strong in both body and spirit. Grow strong for you or Uchiha, the family of fire and strength. She opened her eyes and looked at Naruto. That's the prey of our family Naruto. May you grow strong under Itachi's training. I fear that in the coming days that you won't have a choice but to be strong, for yourself and this family. The next day with Itachi. Itachi woke bright and early for his talk with the third Hokage. Itachi had been thinking of the training Naruto would need. As he neared the Hokage tower he noticed some Anbu watching him more than normal for someone going to tower. After entering the tower he went straight to the Hokage's office and knocked on the closed red door. Come and said in voice of the Hokage in a leader-like fashion. Hokage-sama I need to talk to you Itachi said as he entered. Looking up from his desk Sarutobi he saw Itachi coming in. This brought a smile to the Hokage's face. The old Hokage of 55 years of age sat at his desk. 
His lightly tanned skin did not hide the aging lines on his face. His white spiky fading hairline showed. His brown eyes showed compassion and love for his village and his people. Yes Itachi what can I do for you? How is Naruto-kun? Said the aged Hokage radiating grandfatherly love when speaking of Naruto. Well I came to speak to you about Naruto and is very happy and doing well. With a simple nod from the Hokage Itachi continued on. Well I'm going to take Naruto outside of the village for training tonight and would like your help on some things. Of course Itachi what do you need? I need permission to train Naruto out of the country. A list of possible training grounds. Ah, uh, I will give you give the list you asked for but I want mouthy reports on him. I will also give him some of my personal jutsu to learn. Is that acceptable Itachi? Of course Hokage-sama and I thank you for your help on this matter. Now Itachi I need to talk to you about something of the utmost importance. Itachi face got hard at full tension. It has come to the worst possible conclusion Itachi they are going to rebel. They will try to attack soon and kill everyone in their quest to power. And we both know who's behind that one. So father will lead them to war against the village after all. Itachi balled his fist until his knuckle turned white. Those power hungry morons. What the hell are they thinking, Itachi said as he started to cry. That means that it's my family or the whole village. God damn it. He started to cry harder he knew his family was going to be killed off on the Hokage's order, but he knew if he was in charge he would order it as well. I'm so sorry Itachi I'd tried to stop this but your father wouldn't hear of it. The order was already given. Stopping himself from crying and drying his tears looked at his Hokage. Who's going to do it? Your old friend Shinjo Uchiha will be the one to do it. But there is good news Itachi. Those made Itachi look at the old cage. He is to only kill the ones involved with the rebellion. That's good, said a relive Itachi. It's still over 70% of the clan but at least some will live. His mother and my brother on that list as well? Yes but neither will be able to take the position of clan head. Then who will lead the clan Hokage-sama? When you return to the village you will be clan head Itachi then Naruto after you. That had been the biggest shock Itachi had that day. But why me? Hokage-sama there has to be someone other than me? You are the only choice because it's well known to those in power that you and your father would often fight over the rebellion as well the whole village. That makes you ideal to rebuild face with the villagers after this. You are also known to be the most powerful Sharingan user that will make those of the Uchiha clan unite under you. Also you will change the teaching of your clan as you see fit and teach them the right way. Itachi lowered his head to think it over. Looking every possible detail over he knew the leader of his home was right. He was the best and only chose on the matter. So he just nodded his head in understanding to the Hokage. Come Itachi we need to get your things to gather for your Naruto's training trip. Meanwhile, after Naruto got up he found Mikado cooking breakfast in the kitchen and freaked out. Soon Mikado calmed him down and told him that she was his grandmother. Then they talked about the Uchiha clan and being a ninja, and her personal. Soon they went to park to play for two hours of fun-filled laughter. Now they're eating ice cream enjoying the afternoon of fun and laughter. Thank you for such a great day I had so much fun, said the young blonde Uchiha. You're very welcome Naruto I had fun, said Mikoto with a small smile. I can't wait to learn how to be a ninja from dad I'm going to be super strong and smart, Naruto said with a big grin over his face. Mikoto laughed at his energy and couldn't help but feel happy. I'm sure you will Naruto but don't ever lose who you are. I won't because now I don't have to hide myself. I have a family that loves me and I'll protect them with my own two hands. A proud smile formed on her face. Keep that to heart and there's no limit to what you can do Naruto. You're going to change the clan for the better if you keep that up Naruto I just know it. Naruto did you have fun today said a monotone voice from behind Naruto and Mikado. As they turn they see Itachi standing there with a smile on his face. In a split second Naruto tackled him to the ground hugging him. Dad I had so much fun today. We went to the park and had ice cream and talked it was great. I'm glad to hear that. Naruto were going go on the training trip in a few minutes so go get ready. After a few minutes they got their stuff together and headed to the village gate. They both looked back at their home for a few seconds. Both making silent vows to come back stronger, then they headed out to find the first of the training grounds. Later that night scrams were heard from the Uchiha clan compound. A few days later at the first training ground, Naruto sat in an open grass field in his boxers. Itachi was giving Naruto the basic rundown of how to use Churka and Jutsu. They were somewhere in fire country, their camp sat up as a basic two tents a pit for a fire and all the things they would need. Okay Naruto I need you to stand up now, said Itachi from a standing position as he looked at Naruto. Naruto didn't hesitate standing up as he did Itachi quickly throw five unraveling wraps into the air. His hands moved faster than Naruto eyes could follow. When his finished the wrapping stopped mid fall and quickly went to Naruto wrapping around his arms, legs, and chest. 
After they stopped strange symbols appeared all over the wrappings and in the middle of hands and feet showed the word gravity. As soon as that was finished a crushing weight come all over young Naruto's body making him fall onto the ground. Tun san why am I so heavy now? I feel like I'm being pulled down to the ground. That because I put a gravity seals on you for training. This is the first stage, that's double normal gravity. Naruto looked at him with bugged eyes, as he was about to say something about it Itachi interrupted him. Naruto if you can do this in training then you well become very strong. A gentle look came over Naruto's face then became one of determination. If it well make me strong then I'll do it and master my training. I'll become the strongest ninja in the world. He started to try to get up but was having a hard time. I won't let this stop me I well become strong. He got a foot under him. Starting pushing up he put all his strength in to keep up soon standing there in front of his father Itachi. Well said Naruto now we well are going on a 14 mile jog then you well do 200 push ups and set ups. And then move on to chakra control and taijutsu. Naruto then face planted on the ground. Are you okay Naruto kun? Fine, I'm fine he said as got off the ground a lot easier this going unnoticed to him but not Itachi. He is already getting used to it. It must be the QB healing his muscle making them stronger in the presses. If this keeps put I can increase his training tenfold. Okay father let's go I'm ready after that Itachi jogged off on an easy pace but Naruto had to try a lot harder to keep up. This is going to be a long three years, but I'll come back stronger thanks to father's training. Naruto you're falling behind move it or I'll have you do 100 extra push ups and set ups. Then again it could kill me too. Naruto thought as he spade up. After 14 painful miles Naruto wasted no time and got straight to push-ups and set-ups. When he finished his whole body throbbed in pain, fire filled his veins and his breaths were labored. After a sore break it was on to chakra control. Soon Naruto found himself surrounded by trees. Itachi reached up to a low branch and picked off a leaf from the tree. Okay Naruto this is the first step to gaining control over your huge amount of chakra you have is keep this leaf to stick to your forehead using nothing but your chakra. Father how does keeping a leaf on my forehead help me become a ninja, will it allow me to keep a sword to my head? Naruto asked as he imaged himself armed to the teeth and a short sword sticking to his head fighting a horde of enemies ninja. Well I suppose one could do that. Itachi sweat dropped. But the point is to help you learn to control your chakra so you don't waste it trying to use jutsu. For you personally it will be the hardest thing you learn how to do. Nodding his head and understanding Naruto takes the leaf and puts it to his head and sticks for a second before it shots off like a bullet. Time and time again it kept happening just a second longer with every untempt he does. After half hour Naruto loses his temper feeling as he's going nowhere and cusses like no tomorrow. Why can't I do this? Didn't I say it was going to be hard for you Naruto? Yes I don't get why it's so hard to do this. It's because you have so much chakra and zero experience using it correctly. Those two things together are what make your control so bad. The adoptive father said in full lecture mode and small gentle smile apories on his face. Believe it or not Naruto you are getting this very quickly. I know you're young yet so you have a long way to go but you'll get strong Naruto. And the first step is getting this down I believe in you. The look of shock covered Naruto's face then a confident took over with a steeled gaze. Getting back into the grinder Naruto put the leaf to his forehead, Itachi took this moment to leave to go catch lunch. After an hour getting a few fish to cook Itachi returns to something he didn't think he would see. Setting still Naruto sat with a leaf in the middle of his head and one per temple. Staying in one place he watched Naruto continue for 20 minutes before Naruto opened his eyes with a yawn but the leaf stayed in place. To be able to get this far in so short of time is far above what I expected at his age. Itachi thought. Come on Naruto it's time to eat. A short while later Naruto was eating more than his fair share of the fish. Meaning eating like he hasn't eaten in weeks. After inhale. I mean eating lunch they got into Naruto's studies teaching everything he would need to know was the goal. This went on for several hours showing this was not his strong point, and to end the day jumping into Taijutsu. Their Taijutsu practice is consented of the very bisect of the interceptor fist stale Taijutsu going over it until it was perfect and then some more to lock it into place. I'm so sore, Naruto said as they walked back to camp. The pain I feel has pain. Naruto faked cried. If you feel that way, then get over it. Itachi smiled playing along with Naruto's antics. Pretending to be upset Naruto says. Fine be that way, one day I'll get strong enough to beat you in a fight father. The last party said completely serious and full with confidence. Itachi is filled with pride in his adoptive son and smiles as Naruto father. I hope you do one day Naruto. Keep training like we have been in you well. I'll keep training until I drop. Good now then tomorrow I will push your taijutsu farther with 2000 punches and kicks per hand and leg. Naruto stops with the look of complete horror on his face. He knows his father was completely serious and slowly a smile forms on Naruto's face. Fine I will do this insane training and push further. 
I will become stronger, stronger than father. For the next two months Naruto trained in this fashion pushing him farther and farther. Sweat, blood and tears were shed every day. Naruto wouldn't have much of arms or legs if he didn't heal by the next morning. At the end of the week Itachi would go over what Naruto learned. Then it was time to move on and out of Fire County. During his time there Naruto got every good at controlling his Churka. Itachi was impressed so he taught Naruto Shadow Clone Jutsu, confident that with Naruto's revisors he could handle it. Itachi was surprised when Naruto performed the Jutsu thinking one or two at the max, when Naruto made 50 before becoming too exhausted. Itachi taught Naruto the secret of the Shadow Clone and allowed Naruto to increase his studies. Father, where are we going now? Naruto asked. We're going to the Mist Village first so you can water walking and water jutsu. Then the village hiding in the clouds for lighting, sand for wind, and lastly village hidden in the stone is our last stop for earth jutsu, and if you think this is some kind of vacation then you're mistaking. Boo would we could have some fun if you train hard. It was going to be a long and painful three years for our blonde hero. Three years later at the village gate. It was early morning the sun has not even started to show and a thick fog hung in the air. Three figures walked towards the village hidden in the leaves. All of them were dressed in dark blue rain cloaks with hoods covering their faces. Two of them stood less than six feet in height the other was just over five feet. They were stopped at the gate by two Chunin guards. Halt! Why are you here? Said the Chunin trying and falling and intimidating the traversers. We are returning home from a training trip, said a man that then took off his hood. As it followed showed his black hair and onyx eyes. Itachi-sama I'm so glad you have returned said an Uchiha guard walking up to them. I have heard what happened. How is everyone? They are well. Your mother has been acting as clan head until your return and has done a fine job doing so, said the Uchiha as he bowed to his clan head and stood back up. Well you and the young hair be returning to the compound after you see the Hokage. Yes. But it will be some time before we come back, we have a lot to talk about with Hokage-sama. Very well I will inform the clan as my shift is ending. With a quick nod they entered the village. As they walked to the tower Itachi took off his cloak opening a scroll and sealing it away. He now wears a black long sleeve shirt, anbu pants, and anbu shoes. His fishnet shirt was easy to see under his black one. They didn't stop as they just walked right into the Hokage office with a clam air around them. Hello Hokage-sama we have returned. As you know Naruto's training went far farther than we originally thought, said Itachi in his business-like, monotone voice. A smile appeared on the third's face. So I heard but I would like to see him for myself. So Naruto why don't you come over and let me see you. The shortest one came over to the Hokage and took off the cloak to see a more mature face with three whiskers birth makers. His clothing had not changed much from three years ago but his dark blue jacket was now black with blue flames with red tips at the bottom's trim. Note he has his sword sealed away. His blonde hair was a little longer but had not changed. The air around Naruto seemed calmer than before but has a warmer feel to it. Hi oji I missed you. I see you took care of the village. So when can I become an official ninja? The old cage couldn't help but laugh at his energy. Even with him being calmer he was still full of energy. After two years in the academy I'm afraid. But it gives you a chance to make so friends in your age group. Now Naruto why don't you go have a day off and have fun. We don't need you here for the boring stuff. Ok see you later Oji-san. Bye dad I'm go train for a little while and then get some ramen. Ok but don't pig out or I'll have to work it off of you. Itachi said with a smile that made Naruto as pale as a ghost, and Naruto quickly left out the nearest window. Well did you finish that little deal tell we talk about Sarutobi? Said a gruff voice of the stranger still wearing his rain cloak. Yes I did. The Hokage handed the stranger some papers and a head bended. Yukisame Hoshigaki are now a Jonin ninja of Kanahaga Kaur. As the Hokage said that the man took off his hood reviling a blue skinned man with the appearance of a shark. With sharp pointed teeth and gill-like marks on his cheek it's hard not to think that. Thanks Saru Hokage-sama, said the grinning shark man, and thank you for helping Naruto with his training. The smiling cage said with joy, please that little kid was fun as hell to train. He can take a beating and get back up like nothing. As he said that he took out a scroll and unsealed a large sword and wrapping that was as long as he was tall. At this point Itachi jumped in. So Saru Tobisama have you giving any thought of what you are going to with Naruto do when he leaves the academy? Yes I have when Naruto leave and reaches the age of 15 teen he will be put under the CRA that got the other two to look right at him like he grew a second head. Why would he be put under that Hokage-sama? Because Itachi there's now only six Uchiha in the whole world now. You, Naruto, Sasuke your brother, Mikido your mother, the Chunin you saw, and Shinjo who became a missing ninja. You were going to be put under this but you're going to clan head it is already your right to enact this as your right at this time so it's a mood point. The old cage take out his tobacco pipe and starts smoking. 
After taking a few moments he started talking again. Your mother is becoming too old, and I wouldn't put a woman under that anyway. Sasuke is your brother but is feared that your father has had too much influence on him. So Naruto is the only chose now and in truth the only one to begin with as he was only adopted just before the relabeling ended and has the Sharingan. I see but please don't force anyone onto him. Asked the clan head. I won't have to until his 18th birthday. Now tell me everything that has happened in the last three years. With Naruto. Naruto was on the other side of the village enjoying his day. Outside of some new stores and restraints the village had not changed from three years ago. He so found himself in restrained part of the village as they were just starting their day. As his stomach started growling at him he decided it was too early for ramen so he went to the closest place to him which was a barbecue place. As he entered it looked fairly normal hardwood floors and places to set down conformably. What was cool about the place is that in the mid of the tables were grills to cook the food how you like. After eating Naruto walked around some more and soon came across a small group of man six and all that are a little older than him surrounding a blonde girl his age in an alleyway with B cup bust her hair up in a bun and a thick strand covering one side of her face, and baby blue eyes, in a purple top that shows her mid-sanction and shorts that complemented her bottle butt, wrapping round her thighs and under her top most likely hiding her true breast size. Come on babe join us for some fun you'll like it? The leader of the men said. There's no reason to make it hard on yourself. Go fuck yourself. I wouldn't touch you with a ten foot pole. The blonde girl said angrily at the men surrounding her. Well you had your chance bitch now we do it the hard way. And to think I would have been so much gentler to you if you had just came like a good whore. As the group jumped to grab her, a black and yellow blur appeared kicked them all upside of their heads in a spin kick. What the hell was that? The leader said as he held his head in pain as did the other men there. Standing there in the circle of people was a kid no older than eleven with his arms at his side and an icy stare that looked though them like if the death himself was looking at them. The look in his eyes made them pause for a second before they became enraged. What the? How did he do that I couldn't even see him move? The girl thought. The leader of group quickly got a cocky grin on his face as he saw it was just a kid and thought he simply got the drop on them. Okay kid if you get out of here now you won't get hurt. We just want the little blonde bitch behind you. Naruto narrowed his eyes and get into a lose stance. Fine, get him boys. As soon as he gives the order they charge to get the blonde boy only they couldn't lay a hand on him. He moved too fast and blocked everything they sent his way and worse he never moved from where he was. Soon with quick hard punches disabled four of the five men attacking him. Naruto grabbed the last punch and pulled bringing him closer for Naruto to uppercut him in his jaw with a sickening crack as his jaw shuddered apart. As the man fell unconscious Naruto started walking forward to the leader who was on the ground on his ass shaking in fear at the boy who just took out his men without them touching him once. You want her for yourself you can have her, just leave me alone. He still kept coming at the rapist. You well pay for what you tried to do here today you scum. Naruto said in a dark voice as the air around him seemed to become colder. The man tried to get up to run away only Naruto to kick him in his side forcing him to the ground. Then he grabbed him by his neck holding him in the air then slamming him into the wall of the alleyway. The look in this boy's blue eye made him tear up in fear. Naruto then dropped the man for him to get a knee shoved into his stomach. The man started to dry hive to be kicked in the face. The man was on the ground holding his face in pain of having his nose being broken. Then feel the back of his head being grabbed and shoved down into the pavement below bring sweet unconscious. The girl was wide eye at the boy who had saved her as he was tying up the group of rapists. Who is this guy he beat them all without breaking a sweat. She was sniped out of her thinking when she heard a voice. I'm as sorry what did you say? In a caring voice with the softest eye that made her melt he said. Are you okay miss? Why yes d thank you for your help, she said as a full body blush took over. She found him to be really cute with the whiskers marks. You're welcome I'm just glad you're okay. I called for police to pick them up, he said with a bright fox-like smile. That smile made her body heat up. D the G good W what's your end name if I am may ask? My name is Naruto, what's yours beautiful? She felt her heart skip a beat. Ino my name is Ino Naruto. How about I walk you home Ino? His soft blue eyes made it impossible for her to say no. But why would she say no in the first place? That sounds nice. A cute smile came to her face that made Naruto blush. Okay let's go then. Ino grappled his arm as they walked and hugged it close to her. The walk was nice but it was to quit for Ino. So are you from Naruto I don't think I have seen you around before. I was on a training trip for three years with my father, we just got back today, Naruto said looking her straight in her eyes. Wow that's so cool I have to bug my dad in order to get any training. So does that mean you're going to be a ninja? She said with a smile. Eno welcome home sweetie who's your friend? Said a much older woman who appeared to be 30 or so waving at them from a flower store window. Is this where you live Eno? Asked Naruto. Yes I do. 
Thank you for walking me home Naruto. It was my honor to walk you home Ino. I'll see you another day. With that he left leaving Ino standing there dreamily until something hit her. Damn it he never answered my question about him being a ninja. Ino screamed at the top of her lungs. Ino come in already. I'm coming mom, said a defeated blonde female ninja. A woman with soft, short, pale blonde hair looking like an older Ino huff blowing some strand hair out of her face. What was keeping you so long dear? She said as she went back to cooking launch. I was talking to a boy who saved me from being the entertainment of six assholes. Oh my dear god Eno are you okay? Did they thout you? I'm fine mom as I said this boy came out of nowhere and saved me. Over the course of several minutes Eno explained what had happened. Oh well maybe you should invite him over so we can give him a proper thank you, said the blonde mother. With Naruto. Naruto walked until he got to the Hokage tower to meet up with Itachi as he came out of said tower. Without saying anything Naruto blended in with Itachi and Kisame. How was your day Naruto do anything interesting? Itachi asked. Not really, at some food, saved a blonde girl from some rapists, Naruto said in a nonchalant meter. Would have been easier if I was used to the new gravity seals you put on me. What are you at now anyway? Asked the shark like man. Eleven times normal gravity now, dame kid you don't take anything at a slow pace do you? Kisame grow a shark like grin. Did you coop a feel on her player? In an instant Naruto was sporting a full body blush. W what or why you saying you perverted fish? Itachi and Kisame laughed at poor Naruto. Shut up. It's not funny. Naruto pleaded not it only increased their laughter. Father may I make a request of you? He said without a hint of humor. What is it Naruto? Itachi said with a raised eyebrow. I wish to live outside of the compound for as long as I'm in the academy, and for you to not tell anyone who doesn't know that I'm your son. Itachi's eyes widen from shock for a moment. His eyes soften as he looked at his son's face. I will allow you to do this but I must ask why do you want this? I must gain the people's respect before I become clan head. A look of confidence made it seem that nothing could stop him. I will make people see me for who I am. I am Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha, Naruto said in his fox-like grin shown in full blast. Kisame's and Itachi's eyes widen as the wind blow shifting Naruto golden hair, and his coat flapped around his body as the sun hit him in a way his body seemed to glow making him look like a hero from a story. Very well you have school tomorrow don't be late. Itachi threw envelope filled wish cash to Naruto as he started to walk away. Do well and make me proud son. Five hours later, Naruto ended up buying Itachi's old apartment before him and Itachi left to go training. The paint was slightly faded but overall looks the same. The living room had a new black leather couch with a black cafe table with a blue spiral in the middle. Bookshelves covered the walls, history, non-fiction, fiction, mythology, Clans of the World, and Theory Volumes of Nin, Tai, Gen, and Chakra filled the shelves. The kitchen got the top of the line stove, refrigerator, and dishwasher with silver chrome. Black garnet counter polished to a shine, new cooking weir lined the counter from the refrigerator to the stove but in a way it wasn't cluttered and plenty of room to make a meal. Clear red and blue glass dishes filled the cabinets. The refrigerator and pantry were stocked full of foods. Naruto took Itachi's old room, with a queen-size bed covered in a light red sheets and dark blue conferred, on an oak bed frame and two cherry night stands makes it a nice sleeping area. A dark oak dresser six long and three tall sat across from the bed with a 32-inch plasma screen TV on top. The last thing Naruto did was turn his old room into a study for ninjutsu, daijutsu, and genjutsu scrolls. The room itself has a security seal on it to prevent anyone but himself from opening the door. An iron oak desk lay against the northern wall and bookshelves filled with scrolls from D to A rank of every element and many non-elements filled the room. Well that's a hard day's work done, Naruto said as he yawned. What time is it? Asked the shirtless Naruto. Man it's 11 o'clock already better get to bed. He put his arms over his head and stretched showing his hard abs and pecs but not bulky to get in the way that is only horned over years of training. After a hot shower and brushed teeth he was ready for a bed. Getting under his covers Naruto thinks back on all the days he spent to get where he is now. To be this strong and how hard it was to get here, how many bones his broken and tears he shed, and what the future would hold. How would the people of Konoha treat him, would they still see him as a monster? How good were the other kids of his generation? Were any of them going to be a challenge? These were just a few that flew across his mind as he drifted to sleep. Beep. 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 The alarm went off strewing blonde hair within the red sheets. Shut up you stupid alarm clock, said a groggy Naruto but it kept beeping. Wham! The clock busted into an unfixable miss on the nightstand and floor. Naruto pulled his fist back to his body. As he was about to fall back to sleep a second muffled alarm started to make a noise. Fine I'm up, 
Naruto yelled at no one as he swung his legs over the side and opening the nightstand to find the devil's machine going off. I hate your kind so much. Naruto sent her at it as he turned it off to replace the one he destroyed. Once the miss was cleaned up and a new backup in the nightstand from the closet. 5.30 Oh well school starts at 8 o'clock so I have time for my light training exercises. 200 laps around Konoha 1000 push-ups and set up with a 250 pounds boulder on my back, Naruto said with a smile. On the other side of Konoha, my guy felt a chilly go up his spine. Some young ninja is going through the power of youth. To keep up with him slash her I well do 2000 speed push-ups per arm with a 500 pounds boulder. With Naruto. An hour and 30 minutes later Naruto was finished with his exercises and returned home. After a quick shower and breakfast Naruto set out to start his first day of school. Naruto walked through the village with a slow stride as if he owned the place and had nowhere to be. It didn't matter Naruto would still be early. 20 minutes later Naruto showed at the academy to see a mass of people outside of door that lead into the academy. As Naruto looked around at the young ninja hopefuls he was reminded how he used to dream about becoming a powerful ninja, and having his name go down in history without knowing what it was like to fight just to survive and to protect. Flashback no jutsu dash. Naruto 9 years old now was jumping from branch to tree branch as he and his father moved through the thick swamplands of water country home of the Mist Village far away from the war going on in the Mist Village. Today was a big day for Naruto he would finally get to go on a mission with his father. They weren't really mission more like bounty hunting. Itachi would come across a village and hear about bandits attacking the town in order to get as much money as possible during the bloodline war going on in the Mist Village making outlying villages easy prey for them as they had no one to call for help. Needless to say once Itachi was on the mission they didn't last long. The pay was not much but was still plenty for such a war-torn country. After a year of training here Naruto had grown dramatically during his time with his father. With his teachings and the secret of the shadow clone jutsu made learning anything easy for the blonde mastering many jutsu in a day. But Naruto also used this method in his studies while having only one copy of a book Naruto with his clones were reading over 20 different subjects at the same time. His control over his chakra was almost perfect and chakra level was of a high jonin. Naruto was able to learn every fire jutsu Itachi knew, which was every fire jutsu in the Uchiha vault and some he made, and from D to mid B rank water jutsu that they could get their hands on. His taijutsu could still use some work but that was not Itachi's area of expertise. However Naruto's genjutsu exploded in growth from no talent whatsoever to being near Itachi's equal in the area. And that was Itachi's area of expertise, the one thing Itachi used in battle more than anything. Though however good Naruto was he still preferred ninjutsu and taijutsu over genjutsu but never disregarded its usefulness. In fact Naruto would often start a fight and end it with genjutsu. Itachi couldn't have been prouder of his son's growth. Naruto's looks only changed a little as he let his hair grow so he could put it into a messy but straight ponytail as the rest was still a spiky golden mass. He still worn the very same outfit that he left his village in only now his dark blue jacket was buckled up to help protect him from the damp weather that this land was known for. Swamp, swamp, tree, rock, tree, swamp. Naruto thought out of boredom as he and his father traveled to a bandit camp a few miles out of town. Lesson up Naruto we're getting near our objective, once we reach there you are to scout out the camp before you destroy it. You are doing this on your own as you should be more than skilled enough to handle this, Itachi said as a leader ninja than a father. I understand father I will not mess up and complete the task at hand, Naruto said as a solider in a monotone voice just as his father taught him to. Good now here we go the mission is now underway. After Itachi said his piece both of them disappeared. Naruto hid in the shadow of the weeping willow as he watched the bandits go through their daily routine of going through the small deserted town they took as their own. Which to Naruto was, boring just plain boring, it was like watching people from a normal town do nothing. He didn't expect much but not this. No one was even standing guard around the camp. Maybe they got lazy because of the war. I mean it's not like they can expect any ninja to come after them. Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Then something happened that grabbed Naruto's undivided attention. A young boy who looked no older than five was brought into the camp kicking and screaming. He was a small little boy with white hair and red eyes. His skin was lightly tanned from hours out in the sun most likely from working through the day. He was wearing a bright blue shirt with green overalls and brown shoes. His arms were tied behind his back to prevent him from escaping. The man who had been holding the kid was tall muscular man that looked like he used to be a lumberjack with a big bushy beard. He had a black rain jacket on that was zipped up, with grey cargo pants and black work boots. But what stood out was the claymore on his back. The blade was a little shorter than himself and was made of grey iron. Okay you lot put this kid in one of the rooms he is now under our care, said the lumberjack looking man. No one said anything and just did as told. 
That confused Naruto a little bit. Hum why would he say under our care bandits don't care how they treat people? But the kid make implicit things, from our intel they haven't really done anything that bad. They have yet to kill and haven't wrapped anyone. They have kidnapped people but they were always returned in no worse condition than before they were taking. They probably got desperate from the lack of jobs and started robbing people. Naruto thought sadly. After a couple of hours the sun started to set and it was time to make his move. Creeping his way into the camp looked for the room where they put the kid. As he traveled through the small encamped town he saw many of the bandits rebuilding the houses making them suitable for living in. Naruto worked his eyebrows at seeing them do this but moved on. As he went through the village he saw bandits doing other odd things from painting houses to planting flower beds around the houses. Coming up to a small house with a warm glow peering out of the window just above his head Naruto's has had enough of not knowing what going on through this village pecked into the window. What he saw next shocked him to his core, dozens of kids and young to old women through the window. All of them were fully clothed and, happy? From the smile on their faces happy with the right word. Then a lumberjack from earlier walked into the room and the room got quiet for a second before the kids busted into cheers and the women laughed at the kids. All of a sudden a little girl ran up to the man and jumped only to be caught and spun around. She was wearing a red dress and had black hair tied into pigtails. Naruto lessened closer to what was being said and said, Daddy did you have an okay trip? The chuckled yes it went well sweetheart thank you for asking. I saved a kid today from his oppressed lifestyle. Really what happened? She asked in innocence. Well he was working ungodly hours for an adult and paid next to nothing for it. But that was the only job he could get so he worked it. I found him and when I tried to talk to him about his bloodline he panicked and tried to run but I was able to get him but the town's people showed up and thought I was going to kill him. The man said as the whole room's lesson to him tell the story. What happened next father? Well they were every determined to capture so I ran with him in tow out of the town and lead them to the swamps and lost them. He said with a smile as the children had stars in their eyes. Naruto left after the story came to an end and looked around for the kid he took to see if what he said had any merit. He found the white haired boy quickly and hedged into an unassuming child. Naruto started running up to him in a childlike fashion. Hi are you the boy that was brought here? The boy turned around to see a small boy in a brown shirt and shorts looking at him with big brown eyes. Yes I am why do you ask? Well that's cool so what's your story mister? Well I was born with a bloodline limit like you I imagine. My parents was killed a year ago and I have had the hunters after me ever since. Then that big guy found me and brought me here. At first I thought he was another thug looking for an easy payday. The odd haired boy smiled. Then I come to find out that he brought me to a place filled with bloodline families and that I'm safe here. So that's what is happening around here. Naruto narrowed his eyes. Something is going on and I don't like it. All of a sudden a house exploded tore through the ground, shrapnel flow in the air hitting the works embedding deep into their flesh with a spray of blood as their bodies were tossed like ragdolls by the force of the explosion. The smell of scorched skin filled the air as some bodies were impaled by large chunks of wood. Out from the smoking wreckage of the house clammed out six men all wearing masks each different from each other. The only one that stood out clothing-wise was the lead in an ocean blue tank top and grey sweatpants with black shoes. His hair short and brown. It looked like he just got out of bed. Hump we only got a few of them. Sham I was hoping to get at least a dozen. The man said with sick joy displayed in his voice. Breaking the illusion Naruto yelled. What the hell do you think you're doing? Lazily turning his head the man got a good look at Naruto. Oh it's the mercenary we hired to find this little hideout. Reaching behind his back Naruto got into a protective stance. My, my, a jumpy one aren't we? He said with a small chuckle and his men following in his humor. Pulling his arm from behind his back he held up a scroll. Here's your bounty. You earned a child. He toasts the scroll in the air. Catching the scroll Naruto just looked at it. After what seemed like forever Naruto put the scroll inside his coat and looked at the man in his eyes. Naruto's eyes looked as cold as a pool of ice as he asked. What are you going to do with them? What do you mean? We're going to kill them of course, he said with his head titled to the side and confusing, and a tone of voice like it was the most known thing in the world. Naruto's face took on a look of horror. What? How could you do that? We can because we can. We'll kill them because it's our job as Hunter Ninja. The man voice went from passive to a sickening voice of joy and pleasure. And we'll kill them because it's fun, they're nothing but freaks of nature and don't get to live. Ecstasy filled his voice as stopped talking. Then a large fountain of water shot out from right side of them taking two of the men, screaming in pain, out of picture. They were dead if their skeleton showing through their muscle and flesh says anything. Walking out from behind the house was the lumberjack with his clamor resting in his hand as it leaned on his shoulder. Well what do we have here boil release? Well I haven't seen that in a while. The hunter turned to face the man who had killed two of his subordinates. 
Well this is a surprise nice to see you again Dargan. It will be once I remove your head from your shoulders. The newly named Dargan said in a calm voice. The hunter removed his mask to show purple eyes and black lipstick and eyeliner. Charming as ever. But can you put your life where your mouth is? We'll see won't we? Don't you boys move this one is my fight. Hum now that I think about it why don't you move back some you wouldn't want to get caught in the middle would you? In response the last of the men scattered. They stood their ground staring at each other trying to intimidate the other. Then they sprang into action Dragon jumped and swung his sword at the hunter only for him to dive to side and throw a couple of shuriken just to come up empty handed when Dargan pulled his sword out of the ground to use as a shield. Using Dargan's shield as a blind the mist hunter snuck around with kunai in hand and jabbed it into Dargan's kidney. Only for it to turn into water showing the usefulness of water clones. Dargan puffed into existence behind the hunter kicking his back with a heavy blow that sent him flying. Not wasting a step Dargan grabbed his sword ripping it from the ground. Jumping into the air Dargan throw his claymore at the hunter ninja like a javelin, to his surprise the nin turned and grabbed the handle mid-flight turning around from the momentum to impale him through the stomach. Blood spilled from Dargan's body going all over the ground in the hunter nin's arm. With an insane grin on his face the purple-eyed man shoved the sword up in the air droving it deeper into the poor man's body and out the other sided. Then turned the blade downward into the ground nailing the lumberjack of a man to the spot. I have to say that was fun thanks for that. He said licking Dargan's blood off his arm then stopped and looked at his victim. Oh I'm sorry did you want some? Leaning in closer with a smirk on his face. Dargan hand shot up grabbing the man's neck and squeezed with a vice grip with all his might. The nin thrashed around trying to get free to no anvil so out of desperation he took out a kunai and stabbed the breaded man's wrist getting his freedom. You bastard, I'll kill you. Just as the hunter for the mist was about to give the last blow he sees something yellow and blue out of the corner of his eye. Acting out of reflex he put his arms for defense but it was for nothing as from the blow itself was more than his quick defense could handle and went flying into an empty house. He busted through the wall like if it was made of paper and with a dust cloud and splinters went up. Naruto looked down at the would-be hero and gave a small smile. Sorry about to barge in on your fight but I can't let you die. Naruto looked over at the Miss Nin who was pulling himself out of the chunks of wood. Don't worry old man I'll take it from here you just worry about yourself. Naruto said with an impassive look and ice cold blue eyes as he stared at the enemies. When the hunter Nin got out he was seeing red. First the freak tries to strangle me to death and now this, this brat has the balls to challenge me, me. Getting up and pointing at our blonde hero. Get him I want that blonde dead. The one that do it well get all the money on him. Without a single word the three henchmen Nin attacked one with twin scythes, another with a machete, and the last had a long sword. Quickly drawing his sword Naruto meet them head on parrying and blocking their strikes. No matter how hard they pressed they couldn't get past Naruto's defense, until as one swung a slash with his long sword to be blocked that the one with the scythes got him in his spine. Then a puff of smoke reviled it was a piece of lumber. The two men eyes widen as a blade slide in between the ribs of scythe guy with blood spewing from the wound, as long sword wielded man head was separated from his shoulders with a large spray of blood. When the two bodies hit the ground Naruto found two shuriken lugged in his throat. As the hunter Nin was about to do his happy dance they both dissolved into water as if felt a lot of pain in the back of his head before he was airborne. He flipped in the air before following the pattern on the ground skipping like a rock on the water. Dargan kept watching couldn't believe his eyes, a child had not only killed without filching and doing so without breaking a sweat. Naruto stood there waiting for one of the two to make his move. Then both broke into action the makeup wearing Nin worked his way through hand sign as the other threw a handful of shuriken at Naruto as he ran forward. The blonde jumped over the flying stars of death had made the tiger sign to his lips and used fire style grand fireball jutsu. A giant fireball easily three times the man's size came rushing at him with no time to doge he was burned to death leaving nothing but ash. Just then the leader of the now deceased Miss Ninja finished the last hand sign. Illusion art shark hunting ground. The ground around Naruto became flooded quickly overtaking area. Naruto opened his eyes to see he was surrounded by five giant great white sharks circulating around him. On the outside the hunter ninja smirked seeing his genjutsu worked as Naruto's head fall down like a drunk. Slowly walking over to the boy he pulled out his last kunai to stop in front of the blonde's body. Well I have to say kid you would have made one hell of a miss ninja. If you only would have picked the right sided. Without delay he plugged the knife handle deep into the blonde hair and blood came out of the wound. As Naruto's body started to fall it slowed down to the point it just hung there in the air. Even the droplets were frozen in time. The blood vanished in the air soon after Naruto's body busted into a flock of crows. A then line appeared on the man's face as the pain flashed and blood trickled down his cheek. Did you really think you would get me with a side genjutsu like that? Whispered Naruto in his ear in a monotone voice. He found himself surrounded by four blondes all with an impassive face and cold blue eyes staring at him. 
jumping in a twist as he threw four shuriken dead center of their chest. Only they stopped midair and broke apart into crows as well. Now eight stood around them all with the same look and another cut appeared on his face. Panicking he unsealed a short sword trying to cut a path through them only to get sixteen and another shallow cut this time on his arm. This went on for over an hour, an hour of fear and slicing through the blondes only for more to appear and for him to get another cut. Soon a sea of blondes kids stood waiting, watching, and taunting the man with their mere presence. Falling to his knees the hunter ninja couldn't take the pain anymore. Small, shallow cuts were all over his body, his skin stained with his blood. W.A.H., what are you? The purple eye man asked in a pained voice. I'm a son to a bloodline clan that I didn't use to defeat you, Naruto said as the man passed out from the pain. Breaking the genjutsu the sea of clones faded into nothingness as did the cuts on the man's body. What J, just happened? D.H., the hunter ninja called out a jutsu T.H., then three seconds later he on the ground pa, passed out? Asked Dargan still in pain and nailed to the ground. Simple. He wanted to test genjutsu and lost. Naruto turned to the impaled man and smiled the biggest fox smile. Now let's get you fixed up. After an hour over get Dargan fixed up and the bombardment of thank you from every person in the village Itachi decided to revile himself. Naruto report what happened. After it telling his father the mission from start to finish Itachi face showed a look disappointment. So not only did you stay far after the mission was done you stayed and got involved in something that has nothing to do with us, am I to understand that right Naruto? Yes father and I'm not going to regret doing what I did. I saved this people because it was the right thing to do, Naruto said with a heated passion. And if I was to order you to kill each and every one of this people starting with the kids? Itachi said in a dangerous warning tone. I wouldn't do that and I would even fight you to protect them. Naruto screamed at his father on the verge of tears. The thought of killing the one person who loved and took care of him all this time. Then Naruto felt something on top of his head slowly rubbing it. Looking up to see Itachi's hand patting his head. I'm so proud of you son. Doing what's right no matter the cost, even going against me to do it. Itachi had on his largest smile, happiness and pride in his son shone through. That's my son Naruto. End of flashback jutsu. Naruto was broken from his memory as the instructors opened the doors to allow the students in the building. They shuffled in to learn how to kill the fellow man. Well they didn't think of it that way but whatever. Time to see who is in my class. Naruto started his new school year with a strong step. As Naruto walked the halls he memorized the layout of the building for future use. Then he came to his distension. So this is it? Pulling out a piece of paper from his pants pocket. Yup this is it room 102 with Iruga. Putting chakra into his ears to increase his hearing, he could hear the students making idle chatting as they waited for their teacher. Inside the class, the room was filled with students learning to become ninja talking to their friends in small groups. A tanned man walked into the room with a scar going across his nose. He had brown hair pulled into a spiky ponytail. He wore a green military vest showing his rack of chunin over his blue long slaved shirt. He leased in on the students banter one group at a time to see if they knew anything about the new student joining their class. So far nothing more than the everyday stuff. That is until he got to Ino Yamanaka with her hair in her ponytail today as to the norm. She was talking to a group of girls with her well-known rival Sakura Haruno. Sakura was a little shorter than Ino with long pink hair and a beautiful shade of green eyes. She wore a red battle dress with black shorts underneath. Man I was so scared there were six guys surrounding wanting me to, shudder, do things with them. I thought I was going to get gang raped. So what happened then Ino? One of the girls asked. Well just when they were about to pounce a guy around our age came out of nowhere I kicked them all away like they were nothing. I didn't even see him until he stopped moving. Wow he must be really fast then. Is he a ninja? Another asked. Not officially he was being trained outside of the village for three years but come back for graduation next year, Ino said. What does he look like? Asked Sakura this time. He's a little taller than me with blonde hair and has bright blue eyes, but what stuck out the most was the whiskers makers on his cheek, she said with a finger on her chin as she recalled the boy's looks. What whiskers? Did he draw the on? The pink haired girl asked. I don't think so. She said as she shakes her head. They seemed more like birthmarks. I wonder if he's from a clan? That would make sense. I mean look at the Inuzuka clan with the K9 teeth or Hyuga with their eyes. A random girl said. What is his name Ino? Sakura asked with a raised eyebrow. I don't remember the whole thing happened so fast. Ino sank into her arms and pouted. Iruka knew that was all the information he was going to get out of his students. Alright clam down everyone I have important information for you all. The students went dead silence at this. Okay, that was fast, maybe we should get new students more often. 
Iruka sweat dropped. Anyways we have a new student joining us today please show respect and good manners this is his first time ever stepping foot into a classroom and we don't want to leave a bad inspiration. Naruto took this as his time to knock on the door. Oh that must be him now. Every eye in the room shifted to the door. Please come in and introduce yourself to your classmates. After he said the door slowly opened and a blonde haired boy walked in. Eyes bulged at seeing what he was wearing. Naruto wore a black male tank top with a red Uzumaki spiral that showed his very toned muscle that wasn't too bulky as to get in their way, it was something he gained in his years of training. The shirt was over a steel fishnet shirt to help his overall protection. His black cargo pants had a sliver chain buckled to the first hoop of his pants to the third. The black ninja sandals he wore had his pants ducked into it and wrapped around his ankles in white bandages. He didn't want his jacket as it may let now to who he was. His blonde hair was wild and untamed in the front expect two strained bangs framing his face perfectly. His whisker marks gave him a feral look that made many girls blush. His brilliant blue eyes were soft and warm but had a look that demanded respect adding to the blush of the girls already had. Hello my name is Naruto and I'll be in your class until we graduate. His said with a foxy smile and wave showing his bandaged hand. Sakura saw his hand with her curiosity get the better of her asked. Why is your hand bandaged? Did you hurt it or something? Or something, I really don't like tell people about it if I don't know them well. Anyways I hope we can get along, Naruto said with a large grin. So what were you doing all this time? An unimportant boy asked. Naruto closed his eyes as if thinking about how to answer. Slowly opening his eyes Naruto mouth pulled upward into a confident smirk. I have been training to be a strong ninja to protect the people who matters more to me than my own life. Everyone was so quit a pin dropping could be heard from down the hall. WH, what is this really the QB brat? Iruka thought eyes as large as dinner plates. A small smile came to his face as Iruka closed his eyes. Maybe I was wrong after all. He has a good sprit and strong heart. This is the boy who saved me slash Eno were the thought of Eno and Sakura both with small blushes. Alright then Naruto you may choose any open set for the day. I'll assign you a permanent set tomorrow, oh and I'll be asking you a lot of questions today to see how far you are in your studies. Naruto just nodded his head as he started walking up the rows trying to find a set when a flash of blonde caught his eye. With a quick double take Naruto stopped mid stride blue eyes meeting together. With a quick turn Naruto looked at the platinum blonde girl. I know you. Flexing the muscle in his legs Naruto gave what looked like a weak hop that shouldn't even get an inch off the ground, only to appear a foot higher than the desk and onto it. In front of Eno in a crouching position their faces only inches away from each other. You're Eno right, how are you doing? Sporting a deep scarlet face blush, that would be challenged to even Hinata. I, I'm fine th, thank you. That's good make sure you take care of yourself ok Eno-chan. A fox-like grin spread across his face. After getting an odd from Eno Naruto simply walked off the desk to the back of the room and grabbed an empty set at a desk by himself. Iruka started his lesson for the day as soon as Naruto's ass hit the chair. Over three hours of mind-numbing lectures and answering questions by Naruto later it was time for lunch much to Naruto's happiness. As the students started to try to get through the door Naruto just opened a window next to his desk and jumped out of it into the courtyard much to his teacher's displeasure. He walked around the small training ground of the academy to find a large tree and a small meadow its leaves shadow from the hot afternoon sun perfect for taking a nap. As Naruto lays down under the shifting leaves with a light and soft breeze passing through. The sky above was clear and seemed the brightest blue the sky could ever give. Such a nice day I don't get many days like this. The blonde Uchiha thought. I wonder what Q-chan is doing. Ah uh, it's nice to know you think about me Naruto-kun. Makes a girl want to blush. The QB said sarcastically in Naruto's mind. Q-chan? Hey you're talking to me again. Naruto couldn't stop the small smile on his face. It turned into a frown as he asked. Are you still mad at me it's been over two weeks? I don't care. What you did was stupid. I'm sorry I didn't think it would turn out like that. A foxy grin spread across Naruto's face. If you forgave me I'll do that special thing you like so much later tonight. Naruto could feel the blush coming from the QB. That's me Naruto-kun. You can't use that against me. So you don't want it? Naruto teased knowing it would drive her mad. Naruto you're so mean. You can't do this to me. The fox steam and said in the cutie's way she could. Well I gauss since you don't want it or forgive me I'll just go and find something to do tonight. I, if I forgive you will you really do it for me? She said shyly. Naruto smirked in victory yes I will, hum if you forgive me now I might throw in something a little extra. Okay I forgive you Naruto-kun. Naruto could feel the heat coming from his vixen in waves. You better have not said that just to get out of trouble Naruto or I'll be three times as mad. I wouldn't think about it Q-chan. Said a now slightly nerves Naruto. Hey your name's Naruto right? Said a lazy sounding voice from behind. 
Get this right and you get a cookie. Yes it is and you are, Naruto said as he turned to see a boy around his age with a bored expression on his face. He looked to be a little shorter than himself, his hair pulled back into a short spiky pineapple-like tail. His brown eyes looked calculating as he stared at Naruto. He is wearing a light gray jacket with a binge outline and fishnet undershirt. Dark brown pants with bandage wrapped around his right leg with his shrunken pouch over top of it and navy blue sandals. Shikamaru Nara nice to meet you, he said unmoving and motived. Hey Shika so this is where you took off to should have known it's the shadiest place at the academy, said Afa. Death glare from the boy, um, plump young man in a dark green waist length coat with a tan shirt and brown shorts. Bandages wrapped around his legs and arms showed. Red swirls present on his cheeks. And he, was eating a large bag of chips, that's Choji Akimichi, I'm sure is happy to meet you as well. Muttered the bored Nara as the Akimichi nodded. Nice to meet you both, Naruto said with a smile. Can we set with you? Asked Choji. Sure I don't see why not it's not like I own it. Naruto shrugged giving his response. Taking a set the three sat in silence enjoying the afternoon sun. The piece was a nice change for the blonde, all the fighting and blood had been all is known for three years. This place was peaceful and so calming. Naruto's eyes started to close slowly drifting to sleep. I may like it here after all. He thought as sleep overcame him. Three months later, school for him was slow. Everything Iruka was teaching was just review for our hero. Naruto became the top student getting A's on everything thing they did. Slowly a fan club formed for the blonde although small they made their self known. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji became friends over the days. Came to find out Naruto and Shikamaru are equal in Shogi. Well at least Naruto thought so, Shikamaru was sure the blonde was holding back. As it stood the score was Naruto 3 wins, Shikamaru 3 wins, and 250 ties. Ino has been getting closer to Naruto to be on friendly terms but not really friends as she's still a Sasuke fangirl with no real feeling for her fellow blonde. Ha 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 man is she in denial. Man Naruto you need to stop holding back, said the annoyed Nara. Jesse Shika I keep telling you I'm not said a grumpy Naruto. Why won't you believe I'm taxed as it is? Because, you're not even looking at the fucking board and still tied with me. The almost always clam gifted young man shouted causing everyone in the schoolyard to look at them. Naruto pulled down his book that his face was in until now to look at his friend with a quirked eyebrow. Looking down at the board Naruto's face took a look of amazement. I thought we stopped playing some time ago. Shikamaru's eyebrow twitched as a tick mark appeared on his head. He was playing me to a standstill without knowing he was playing the game. What the hell is with this guy? Naruto looked at the board for a second before moving a piece. Checkmate. Was all he said before going back to book. Looking over the board looking for any way out but couldn't find any. Damn it. The shadow user said then laid down closing his eyes. Hey Shikamaru, grunt from said boy, do you think you'll ever really beat Naruto? Asked our hefty friend. If Naruto was to try I don't think I would even stand a chance. Mama. You're thinking too highly of my ability Shika and underestimating yourself, said the bored blonde. In any case we better get to class guys, said the Akimichi as his opened a bag of chips. As they took off to class a pair of onyx eyes looked though the bushes. Standing up we see a boy with dark hair in the shape of a duck's ass come out. He was wearing a dark blue shirt with a high collar and tan shorts with white armbands. His shirt had the Uchiha fan on the back showing him to be Sasuke Uchiha the second highest student in the academy and class heartthrob with Naruto only second by a few girls. How strong are you really Naruto? The boy thought to himself. And who in the world are you? After the class got assembled most of the class talked to each other except Sasuke who was trying to find out who Naruto was, Shikamaru who slept with Choji eating beside him and Naruto who had his legs up on his disc thinking about a new jutsu he wanted to try out. Okay class clam down we got important stuff to go over. The class seemed to get even louder pissing Iruka off. Shut the hell up you brats. He yelled at the top of his voice with his famed demon enlarged head jutsu. As I was saying in a few months we'll be have full contact spearing next month as to get back into the grove of fight has its put off for half a year in order to help perfect your styles of fighting on your own. This got the student exited to prove themselves and to see what the new blonde kid could really do. Well that all on that matter, now we'll be going over the theory of Nin, Jen, and Taijutsu for the rest of today followed by a test on what we learned about politics outside of the village. One month later on the spearing ground, Naruto watched as many of the no-name students what he could say for academy students they were good and had potential but would get splattered on any field mission above C ranked, but that's what Jonin Sansai's are for. 
he couldn't get a good read off of Shikamaru and Choji because they got paired and both quit not wanting to fight their friend. But Naruto knew that Shika would be able to think his way out of most problems, and if Choji was on his team it'd be even easier due to the Akimichi fighting style. Ino and Sakura were above the other students but would die like them if they didn't have good backup. A boy in a tan high collar coat with spiky brown hair and black shads fight poorly. However if Naruto was right he was an Aburame so without the use of his chakra eating bugs his style was pointless to begin with. The fertile Inuzuka in a grey jacket with fur lining, he had enlarged canine teeth with red fang marks on his cheeks. His dog Akamaru was a white half-wolf pup with spots on his ears that stood off to the side. He was properly one of the best Taijutsu user he had seen so far, most likely because his family fighting mostly with fits to begin with. He not a Hyuga there was something that caught his eye. The girl was beautiful in her own right. Her perfectly heart-shaped face and lavender hair was a whining combo on their own. Her eyes didn't seem to have a pupil if you didn't look close enough. Her larger baggy coat made it hard to tell her cup size put he put it low to mid D's. Anyways for getting the pervert and onto her fighting style. Thought the blushing blonde, hey what did you think at me? You heard me you pervert, Uro writer. Shut up or I'll turn this in a boy on boy story with you and Sasuke as lovers. I'll be good. Thought a defeated blonde. The girl was far more skilled than she let on. Is she misleading people or is it because of low self esteem? Seeing the girl's sad look on her face he believed the second thought was the correct one. Naruto Uzumaki vs Sasuke Uchiha Iruka yelled snapping Naruto out of his thoughts. As the two warriors made their way to ring hushed whispers rang thought out the ninja in training. In the audiences, who do you think will win? My money is on Sasuke he is the strongest out of our class, said one nameless student to another said student. Hmm I think the new kid will win as strong as Sasuke as we don't know how strong this Naruto guy is. You're crazy no can beat Sasuke-kun says a fangirl with several other nodding in agreement with her. Don't count him out yet we know next to nothing about him, he's a wild card in this whole deck. The gifted Nara said, Shut up Shikamaru you're just a lazy bum so no one cares what you say. A devoted fangirl said with passion. That doesn't change the fact that Shikamaru right, he's a wild card. Anything could happen with this fight. Thought a pale boy with black hair and eye in a black long sleeve shirt with the right arm cut off. He wearing black pants and sandals with bandages wrapped around his left leg. He is known as Cyan Agent of Donzo. With the fighters, once the young ninja got into the arena they stared into each other's eye in a battle of wells. Well at least he knows the importance of controlling his enemy mentally. An arrogant smirk spread across Sasuke's face as he said. Just give up now and save yourself from looking like the baka you are. Or not. Naruto thought with a sweat drop. Tempting but I'll pass see how you won't even land a hit on me. Sasuke got pissed instantly. Alright you two get ready. Sasuke shifted into interceptor fist. Get set, Naruto yet to move from his lizzy standing position he had in the first place, doing his best to copy a statue. Go, Iruka said as he jumped out of the way. As soon as Iruka was out of the way Sasuke charged determined to show our blonde not to mess with a Nuchiha. LOL the fool, running at speeds the other students had a hard time keeping up with, running at blonde Uchiha with his fist cocked back ready to cause damage. But to Naruto he was painfully slow, just as Sasuke's fist about to make contact it was stopped by Naruto's open palm. Sasuke then felt a massive amount of pain in his stomach as he was sent airborne from a palm strike from Naruto. Forcing away the pain for now Sasuke flipped in the air landing just a few inches from the boundary. What the hell was that? Sasuke wondered. Doesn't matter he won't get me this time. Sasuke ran as fast as his legs would carry him then jumping into a flying kick aimed at the blonde's ribcage that Naruto caught with one hand. Sasuke the jerked his body to send another at Naruto's head, so our hero let go of Sasuke's leg and crouched down sending the kick over his head. Adjusting his legs Sasuke landed on it and used his body's momentum for a spin kick only for it to be caught like if it was just hanging there. Not giving a second to breath Naruto pushed Sasuke's standing leg giving the raven-haired Uchiha charlie horse but that was not the end of his pain. Standing as soon as pushed the leg making it buckle, with a tight grip, lifted Sasuke of the ground to slam him back into it making spider web creaks. Before Sasuke could slip into unconsciousness Naruto kicked him in his chest making him fly across the field into a tree making said tree nearly give way under that amount of force. W winner by ass kick, I mean knock out Naruto Uzumaki, said a god smack Tiruga. With the students, W what the hell just happened? Asked Sakura. Naruto just kicked the shit out of Sasuke. A male student said scared of the blonde boy. That's not the only thing, said Shikamaru looking at the whiskered boy. What do you mean Shika? Choji asked for once not eating anything being too shocked to think about food. What I mean is Naruto didn't move from his spot, not once. 
That made everyone deathly quiet. Gradation day. The whole year went by with Naruto at the head of the class and Sasuke close second. No one wanted to fight the blonde for fear of getting hurt but Sasuke, who seen Naruto as an obstacle to overcome so he could be in honor to the Uchiha name. But he always got his ass handed to him. Sasuke was still the favored one out of the two from the female population but either really cared. Naruto, Shikamaru, and Choji became closer in their friendship and trained together every now and again. They even managed to get Hinata into their little gang slowly bring her confidence to new highs. Is she still a shy girl? Yes but she started to show real promise that even her father stopped belittling her. Naruto showed them how to do the shadow shuriken jutsu that made solid copies for a short time. Everyone was waiting for Iruka to come in and give the last test to see if they were ready to be ninja everybody was fully of confidence but Naruto's gang. They were watching Naruto and Shikamaru play another game of shogi, Naruto making Shikamaru rethink his strategies three times now. Ok class time for testing I'll call your names one by one to see if you're ready to be ninja. As you know Hokage-sama has sent a Jonin to help with the test as Mizuki was caught trying to alter test scores a month ago and is now away for 30 years getting a daily colonoscopy. Hate that guy and I don't want to do the whole forbidden scroll thing. Iruka handed out the writing and all got to work on the papers in front of them. Naruto's eyes scanned the room as he wrote down answers. Shikawi most likely only do enough to pass God is he lazy. Choji well second guess himself and get most of them wrong due to his poor self-esteem poor guy. He should make it through. Shifting his eye they land on the two top Sasuke fangirls. Ino should pass above average but it should be higher. I really wish she take being a ninja more seriously I hope that will change soon. Sakura will most likely have the second highest score next to me after all she is a bookworm. Naruto shifted his eye over to Kiba, Shino, and Sai. Kiba will pass, Barley. Shino should score pretty high as almost a genius. And then there's Sai whom I can't get a reading off of, what is he playing at? I can tell he shouldn't be in the academe because he's holding back. Is he trying to give himself an edge out on the field by making people underestimating him? Shifting his eyes to the last two students of interest the young Uchiha and Hyudga. Hinata should do just fine thanks to her boost in confidence. Then there's Sasuke, number 3 in this test easy. I wonder what he's thinking right now? Must beat him must beat him I must beat him. Sasuke thought as he scribbled down answers, hmm most likely thinking about how great he is. One hour and twenty minutes later, after the writing test came the physical test. The name of the game lasted as long as you could against your tuning teacher. Most of the students lasted around three minutes Shika included because that was the all you needed to pass. Lazy sob Naruto thought with good humor. Choji lasted 3 minutes and 45 seconds mostly because he didn't want to accidentally hurt Iruka. Shina last just over 3 minutes with his poor taijutsu. Ino and Sakura didn't fare much better than the Aburame. Kiba lasted around 4 minutes and 30 seconds no real shock there. Sai made it so he lasted 4 minutes flat. Hinata lasted as long as Sai did but with more grace. Sasuke lasted 5 minutes and 30 seconds with impressive skill and stamina. Well for an academe student anyways. Naruto played with Iruka for 6 minutes and 45 seconds before he took a dive and everyone knew. But the Jonin and Sasuke's pride. He did as well not that anyone said anything with the Jonin there. Now they were at the last test the ninjutsu portion of the graduation test and no surprise that everyone so far passed. Naruto walked up to Iruka and the Jonin that was behind desk. Okay Naruto you just need to use transformation jutsu, substitution with something, and use the simple clone jutsu. Maybe I should have some fun with this Naruto thought with a smile. In a plume of smoke Naruto transformed into the Jonin and looked around. Impressive Naruto now substitute with something. The Jonin beside Iruka smiled at Iruka. I already did Iruka sansei. A puff of smoke later Naruto fox grin was in full blast. Iruka head turned so fast you would have thought his neck broke. Well okay then Naruto now make at least three working clones before I substitute you with a corpse. Iruka said with a tick mark at Naruto antics. Replacing himself with the poor Jonin Naruto stood where they at the start. Naruto without movement or saying a word created 20 perfect illusionary clones. Throwing his voice so it appeared to come from everywhere Naruto asked. Well do I pass Iruka sansei? Hey, hey you pass you little show off, Iruka said with a warm smile. Iruka didn't know when but at some point Naruto managed to warm his way into a special place in his heart. Naruto went from the QB brat to his favorite student and now his little brother. Okay Naruto I got something for you. My headband? Yes but I went and got a special order for you to match your style of clothing. Iruka walked from behind his desk to in front of Naruto and handed him a headband that was scuffed and had nicks in it. It looked like it been in many battles. It was on a black cloth and engraved with an arrow like leaf cravings into a spiral like the Uzumaki clan crest. Naruto took into his hands, 
His finger ran over the headband that was my headband and now it's yours. Thank you Iruka sensei I will always keep it close to me. Naruto said in his most respectful voice and bowed. Okay will you go out and show the class one of the newest ninjas to the leaf village. In the classroom when Naruto was taking his test. Many kids talked to one another about how they were so excited about being a ninja and wonder who was going to be on their team. Up in high corner of the room you see Naruto's small group of friends talking amongst themselves. So Shikamaru who do you think will be on teams? Asked our potato chip loving friend. Choji why are you asking such a troublesome question? The lazy Nara replied, Oh come on Shikamaru you think that way about everything. And besides you're the only one out of us who could get it as close as possible with the team placement. What about Naruto why can't you ask him? Simple who's not here right now. A tick mark appeared on the genus Nara's head. So I'm just the fallback guy when Naruto isn't around. Whatever it doesn't matter at this point, but I will say this. I have no idea what they're going to do with Naruto. What do you mean Shikamaru? The Hyuga Princess asked. I mean Naruto is stronger than any of us and the most well-rounded ninja out of anyone in our class. He could be paired with any team a person could imagine. Man I didn't even think about that. We could never see Naruto again. The sad Akimichi said with a downcast look and Hinata following his lead. Don't be stupid. We'll see him again after all we're all ninja in the same village, we're bound to cross paths again. Said Shikamaru with a surprising amount of passion in his voice and the same hard determined look that Naruto would give in order to lift their spirits. Seeing the look in Shikamaru's eyes that reminded them of their unofficial leader and made Choji and Hinata smile. I think you've been hanging around Naruto too long because you look just like him, said Choji with a smile across his face. Shikamaru blinked with a blank look on his face. Then slowly a small smile broke as he began to chuckle. I think you're right Choji, the dang troublesome blonde has infected me. It was Choji and Hinata's turn to laugh until they all broke out into uncontrollable laughed. What you guys laughing at? Asked the newly minted blonde ninja. Oh nothing Naruto-kun. The quiet voice of Hinata rang out with joy. Okay if you say so. So it looks like we all became ninja after all. Ah like you could be ninja. You most likely stole your headband you troublesome blonde. Shikamaru sarcastically replied. Hmm did you say some Shika? Naruto said as he looked up from his book. Where did that book even come from? Shikamaru screamed. What are you talking about? Came Naruto's monotone voice making him sound bored. I had it on me the whole time you just need to pay closer attention to things. You're doing this to mess with me aren't you? A bright smile came across Naruto's face. Yup. Was Naruto's simple happy chirp. I hate you. You love me. You're too troublesome. I keep you on your toes. Everyone around them in earshot was trying their hardest not to laugh and failing until they busted into hysterical laughter. After all only Naruto could get a real reaction from Shikamaru and get him flustered. Iruka walked into the room and saw every person around Naruto dying from laughter and couldn't help the smirk from forming on his face. Okay everyone that clammed down I don't know what Naruto did, insert a complaint from Naruto, but you need to know you have come back here for team placement in today. See you then. Iruka waved and out like a hurricane the class went. After the students left Iruka started to work on making the teams but after counting them up he makes a troubling discovery. There one more student than needed to make even teams. Putting down his pen Iruka took a deep breath. What am I going to do? Is something troubling you Iruka? Quickly standing Iruka gave a deep bow. Hokage Sama, standing back up, what are you doing here? I'm here to see how the team placement is going. The aged cage said, not good Hokage Sama. Oh having trouble coming up with teams are you? He said as he took out his corn pipe and started to light it. No that's not at Hokage Sama I have most of them done but we have a spare student that I don't know what to do with. After breathing out a puff of smoke he spoke. Let me see what you have so fair. Taking a set Iruka give him the list. As the old cage shifted through the list and writing some stuff down the Hokage handed the papers back. They're all done. Now you are to present this to your class Tomero as it is and that's an order. After he finished Sarutobi disappeared in a small whirlwind of leaves leaving a confused Iruka. With Naruto. After saying goodbye to his friends he went off to train in order to keep his skills sharp as always. Soon his six hours were spent and he headed home. Naruto opened the door to his apartment and found it perfectly clean just like he left it and he smiled at that. It was nice to come back to a place he could call home after three years never staying in one place for more than a week and the year of coming back to one place was a more than welcome change. Closing his door Naruto started on his dinner and had some shadow clones write some jutsu ideas he had. Even the four months in sauna didn't give many wind types jutsu so coming up with his own would be nice and a must. But the problem is he he can't get them as strong as he needed them. I need to find a teacher who knows more about wind chakra. After dinner and a quick shower thought he would visit his favorite fox so he meditated in the middle of his living room. Feeling a familiar pull Naruto opened up his eyes to see the dark fox caged and walked through. 
As soon as Naruto's head passed through the cage it transformed into a large house. Oak wooden floors were throughout the house. Red painted walls with some pictures hung on them. A large fireplace sat at one corner of the room that never went out with white coaches and chairs around it making it the living room. Walking through the house to find his little fox Naruto passed a fully stocked kitchen and went straight to the many bedrooms the house held. Naruto changed this part of his mind form the QB but she designed it. Checking room after room Naruto started to become nerves. I hope she's not in that one. Hope Naruto but at same time hoping she was. And as luck would, depending on how you see it, his vixen was sitting on a bed in the very middle of the room, and was exposed with only a black lacy bra that was barely holding her bust and panties that helped to show her perfectly shaped hips and long legs. Her long, smooth crimson hair went halfway down her back to show off her toned stomach. Around her neck was a black collar with a blue circle with seal writing in the middle of it. Lemon, hello Naruto-kun it's so nice of you to drop by. The QB gave a very sexy smile. I have been so lonely without you here to keep me company, she said as she played with a pair of handcuffs. Naruto walked into the room. It had chains with cuffs bolted to the wall and the ceiling that was used to keep people there. There were several love seats in the room and a contraption that was used to hang a person in midair and restrain them. Of course you can't forget the cabinet filled with toys and other items. If you can't guess what she's into I feel sorry for you. Naruto pants felt very small and the QB noticed it as well. Oh and you brought me a gift too that's so sweet of you, she said in a very sexy way that sent shivers of excitement up Naruto's spine. Hmm is my Naruto-kun lusting after me? She asked with a bed of sarcasm as her hand was going down her toned stomach into her panties. She shifted her body so she was lying down with her legs open so Naruto could see her start to play with herself. Yeah that's it watch me play with myself like a slut for your entertainment. The QB demanded as her finger moved in and out of her wet womanhood fast as looked into Naruto lustful eyes. Yes keep watching your slut finger herself. Her voice was a sexy husky as light wet slapping sound echoed in the room after she added another finger. As a wet patch showed through her damp panties. Dame she's so fucking hot. Naruto thought as he was barely able to keep from reliving himself from the presser building inside of himself. Her and her dame games but I'll get her back. Naruto promised himself. Naruto I'm about to come. She screamed in pleasure as her blonde lover watched. Ah. Naruto walked up to the bed with each step a piece of clothing fall off until he reached the bed clad only in his boxers. That was very hot, but look at what you did to me, Naruto said pointing at the ten on his waist. He grabbed a fistful of her crimson hair and pulled her to his face and gave her a lustful kiss. Their tongs danced in her mouth as she gave a moan of pleasure then he pulled her to his tent. She let out a yelp from the small amount of pain the hair pulling but found enjoyment in it. You're going to fix this aren't you fox slut? The tone in his voice sounded more like a demand than a question. Of course Naruto-kun I'm your personal slut after all, she said in a sheepish voice that Naruto groaned in anticipation. Putting her hands on the side of his boxer she grabbed the fabric and pulled down freeing his throbbing manhood that stood at 9 inches. Naruto's scent hit her full blast making her mouth water and wrapped her hand around it. Oh your cock smells so good Naruto-kun, she said as she started to stroke it a little before giving the tip a kiss. Then another as she starts to put more into her mouth taking inch by inch until she was halfway. She stopped stroking it in favor over bobbing her head up and down his manhood taking more in with every thrust of her head. Her tongue danced inside her mouth messaging the underside as she deep-throated Naruto's cock. Fuck that feels so good. Look up at me as you suck on my dick like a good whore, Naruto said knowing she loves being talked to like that, and without a second delay her ruby red eyes looked up into Naruto's turning him on even more. Then an idea hit him. Since you're being such a good girl why don't you play with yourself as you suck me off? The QB nodded a little and started to bob her head faster as she put two fingers inside her womanhood matching the speed of her head bobbing. Seeing the mighty demon finger herself as she got him off drove Naruto craze as he watched her work for a few minutes then grabbing a hold of her head Naruto started to thrust forward matching the QB's bobbing speed. Soon after Naruto felt a pressure building inside his balls. I'm go wanna come, swallow it my slut swallow all of it, Naruto said as his kept thrusting down her throat. Ah, Naruto cried out as he came and QB greedily took it all. As she removed her mouth a trial of saliva went from her mouth to his dick. That tasted really good. She licked her lips for effect. Hmm what do you want to do now Naruto-kun? She asked as she played with her breast. Turn around and get on your knees and bend over and stick your ass in the air. She did as told into her surprise Naruto handcuffed her behind her back stopping her from keeping herself upright easier. Naruto didn't wait as he tore off her panties and shoved all 9 inches inside in wet pussy as fast and hard as he could. Ahhh fuck. She screamed at the sudden wave of pleasure hitting her. Yes fuck me like the whore I am Naruto-kun. 
she said in enthusiasm as Naruto continued his assault on her what snack. Oh h god that feels so good, she exclaimed in pure pleasure. Fuck your pussies so tight and warm. Naruto then noticed her bra was still on and undid it never slowing down his thrusting. The bra fell allowing her breast to bounce around freely with every hard thrust. Oh fuck I'm going to come again Naruto-kun. And that she did as her pussy clamped around Naruto's dick as her womanly juices flowed down it and her leg. Naruto was having a hard time not coming right then and there but he pulled through. Naruto kept thrusting in and out of wet beautiful pussy every now and again switching passion to keep as much enjoyment as possible. Naruto had one of the QB legs over his shoulder as he fucked her relentlessly. Oh fuck I'm going to come. Yes, yes come insist of me. Come inside your slut sturdy little pussy Naruto-kun, she cried in pleasure as her tits bounced around in the beat of Naruto's wild thrusting. Rah. An animalistic roar ripped its way through Naruto's throat as he filled her side with a hot sticky substance that made her climax once more. This went on for several hours of non-stop of lovemaking filled with lust and love. Lemon end. After taking off the handcuffs the two laid into each other's arms as they snuggled closer together. I love you Naruto-kun, said a sleepy QB as she yawned. I love you too Q-chan. Naruto didn't know how long they sat there in each other's embrace the scent of sex in the air. He still couldn't believe that she loved him so and still couldn't figure out how or when it happened. But that was a thought for another day. Naruto sat up on the bed waking the half-asleep redhead beside him. Mm, where are you going Naruto-kun? Asked the groggy demon. I'm sorry Kuchan, but I have to go, Naruto said as he pulled her in to kiss. Not a lust-filled one like he did when they began, but filled with loving, tender kiss. It was soft, sweet and poured every bed of love he could muster. I'll talk to you later okay? Okay Naruto-kun talk to you later, bye I love you. He exclaimed as he faded out. Real world. Naruto awake to a stiff body but the sum starches unlock all the muscles. After taking a shower to clean up the mess, again Naruto claimed into bed. It's really annoying that happens out here but there's no one to clean it up. With a huff Naruto drifted off to sleep the next two days would be spent on training and his, for now, one girlfriend. Two days later, at the academy the students were all in their homeroom waiting to find out who would be on their team. While very one was talking now was in the back paying close attention to his, desk, as he snored. Hey should we walk him up? Asked on student to another. He he totally it not every day someone gets the drop on Uzumaki, said the other. And it not today either, said Naruto in an evil manner scaring the hell out of the two boys. Okay class that's enough of that as we have important things to go through, Iruka exclaimed first I want to. He went on about what it means to be ninja now and that they're adults and to show the village pride in a very long winded speech. Ok now to the teams. Skipping the 1 to 6 because they suck, Team 7 will be Sasuke Uchiha, Sakura Haru no Yestake the Dino Pig, Rived and Sai, your team leader Kakashi Hitake. Team 8 will be Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hyuga, and Shinobarame with Kuranai. Team 9 is still active so Team 10 will be Ino Yamanka, Shikamaru Nara, and Choji Akimichi lead by Asuma. The kids started to talk thinking that was everyone until Iruka started talking again. And the newly made Team Squid number, Team Zero is made of Naruto Uzumaki and, that's it? Well I guess it is good luck to you all. Iruka had a really big sweat drop. The class was like a beehive with the one-man team now in circulation. And because of it Naruto fangirl's popularity skyrocketed so the poor blonde Uchiha did the only thing he could, he whimpered. Naruto woke up to the sounds of leaves swaying in the wind and the sun beating down on his face. Naruto eyes peered open and looked around with his blurry vision to make out the fuzz surrounding of green everywhere he looked. As his vision cleared he made out branches and the ocean of leaves that gave Kanahagakur its name. Looking down he was at least 15 feet in the air setting upright. His clothes were ripped and torn in veering places but that was normal for the blonde thanks to his training. Tailors make a lot of money off of Naruto. How did I get up here? Thought the confused blonde. Hmm I remember leaving the academy and... Oh that's right I remember now. Flashback. Naruto just left the academy after team announcements and was on his way to get ramen for lunch as is his custom. Naruto for all his skills didn't notice the slowly growing crowd in the dark shadowing their faces. There his is on his way to get ramen again, said one of the shadowy figures in a hushed whisper that couldn't be heard expect by the group. Another's eye gleamed. Let's get him as he eats his ramen. He'll let his guard down then and we'll be able to get him. The other nodded and slowly they disappeared into the shadows. As Naruto walked a cold chill ran down his spine. Shaking it off Naruto continued to follow his stomach to Ichiraku's ramen. After getting to Ichiraku's Naruto quickly inhaled eight bowls of ramen when a small army of kunoichi appear around corners and rooftop in the middle of the street. 
Naruto's danger sense kicked in as the females lust poured from their teenage bodies. Turning over so slowly Naruto eyes landed apron the army of hormone driving fangirls. Swallowing the lump in his throat Naruto started to sweat profusely. What did I do now? The Konoika's eyes shadow over as an evil smile spread across any of their faces. Oh god what the hell did I do now? Naruto tensed as he sweated bullets at this point. So Naruto did the only thing a guy fearing for his life from women could do. He ran as fast as he could. Naruto-kun come back here and give me your child. One of the fangirls screamed as she ran after the blonde with the others hot on her heels saying similar things. And they were closing in fast. God why did I choose today of all days to increase my weights? Naruto yelled at the top of his lungs hoping to get an answer from some deity only to get the excited squeals from his fan club. Oh God's Naruto-kun so strong to outrun us with new weights. Please give me your child Foxy-kun. One of the girls looked confused as she asked. How would a few weights change anything? The older members, note ages and how long they've been fangirls not their real age, got a smug look on their faces. Well as long as we have known Foxy Kun he never did the easy way of anything and often puts another 100 pounds every time his increases his weights. After a few seconds it clicked inside the minds of the younger members. Give me two hours Naruto. Just two hours in bed with you. They ran after him with newfound energy. This is getting ridicules. Naruto shouted in his mind. I have to lose them somehow. It was then Naruto saw his exit as he was quickly coming on an alleyway. Naruto made a sharp turn into it but he knew it was a dead end. Without stopping he jumped onto the wall to his left and springboarded onto a fire escape on the opposite side with a graceful flip. This left many fangirls crying out his name at how cool he was, and Naruto drank it all in loving the attain he received from the female population. I thank you ladies for your affection but I have to go now, Naruto said with a bow and a shit-eating grin. With a strong leap Naruto landed on the rooftop and took off as fast as he could. He could hear the cries of the girl and almost felt bad, almost. But it wasn't to last as they caught back up to the blonde hero in a horde of hormonal teenage girls. Why does this keep happening to me? By now his cloths had many rips from the girls trying to pin Naruto down. It was kind of scary to Naruto as he thought about how good they would be as ninja if they applied their skills to their training. Because we love you Naruto-kun. Was the response from his stack. Or I mean his fans. Please go train. I don't want any of you to get hurt because you went after me by putting off your training. He screamed hopping it would stop them from casing him. Too bad it had the opposite effect by driving the girls even wilder saying how their Naruto-kun cared for them. It wasn't wrong he did care what happened to them just not the way they thought he did. After three hours Naruto finally lost them in the forests of Kanahagakura as he hid in a tree far above their heads. Naruto liked two things about fangirls. One he loved the attain they throw at him. Naruto would always be nice to them with a wave, a smile and occasional good morning. Maybe that was one of the reason they liked him over the icy Sasuke who never said anything and glared at most people. The second reason was they help with his escaping skills and his physical endurance from running away from them so they didn't wrap him and he in turn became a father of 20 or so children. Flashback end. The search for the blonde Uchiha lasted until dusk as the fangirls looked for said blonde and he fell asleep in the leafy haven. Now Naruto had to change and go out get a mission or several. After a long and shadow, avoid the fangirls, filled walk home. A quick shower and breakfast Naruto was off to his first official mission. Minus 20 minutes later, Naruto arrived at a tall red building with a large wall going around it. It was around three stories in height and had a symbol meaning fire and black in a red circle in the front. On the roof was six, 20 feet high white pillars that circle around the roof which was the same shape as the whole tower. The Nujinan walked right into the tower and straight into the mission hall. It is a fairly large room that was able to hold the large tables and many chairs inside of it. To Naruto's great surprise there sat in the middle was his grandfather figure wearing the Hokage robes and hat. Quickly walking up to the desk Naruto waved at the aged Hokage. Hey Oji-sen how are you? You ready to hand over that hat yet? Naruto yelled with his foxy smile shocking all but the third in the room. More than you know, as soon as I find someone capable I'll throw it at them. The old cage said poking at Naruto. Hey someone has to be prepared to take over when you finally kick the bucket you old monkey, Naruto said with a victory smirk. Hmm that may be true but the people well want to be able to see their leader and you don't fit the height requirement, he said as the man filled his tobacco pipe. Sure but people want to be able to talk to their Hokage without him turning up his hearing aid. Oh Hodoshi Naruto-kun, okay you win this round but the next one will be harder I assure you. Sarutobi lit his pipe as he went back to shuffling papers seemingly ignoring the god-smacked expression on their faces. So what can I do for you today Naruto-kun? Well I'm looking for missions but I know as a Janan I have to do a number of D-rank missions before I move on to higher ones. I'm question is how many? Naruto. 
You not only do you charge in here but you openly mock the Hokage. Your Hokage. And then you have the nerve to ask for a mission? Iruka asked. Yep that's pretty much it. Naruto deadpan causing all but two occupants of the room to face fault. So about the missions Oji-san, you need at least 25 D rank missions then improvement from your squad leader in order to get 1 C rank, he said as he took a puff. So how many will you be taking today Naruto-kun? How many do you have available today? 127. How many do your Jinan teams finishes in a day? Around 49 mission per day including low Chunin. The Hokage said, I'll take 75 right now and have them in by the end of the day. Okay here you go Naruto. The aged Hokage said as he handed over a basket full of missions. See you soon Oji-san Naruto said as he ran downstairs. In front of the tower. Naruto sat in front of the tower and looked over the scrolls to sort them into groups. When Naruto finished he stood up and crossed his fingers for his favorite jutsu. Massive shadow clone jutsu. Teams of three clones puffed out nothing and looked at their creator. Okay each team's well take one scroll and finish by 7pm and return here with the mission report and I want each one to be a success got it. As one the army of blonde shinobi pushes their feet together and saluted shouting sir yes sir. Before doing their appointed task. Okay 222 clone for 74 missions was a little harder than I thought it was going to be. But I got my own mission to do. With that Naruto took off. Naruto doesn't use such large numbers as often. The Yamanaka flower shop. Ino sat behind the counter of her flower shop in deep thought. Today she had her first team meeting only to find out that she was even a real ninja yet. Hearing the doorbells chime she pushed her personal problems aside. Hello welcome to the Yamanaka family flower shop how may I help you? Ino said with her eyes closed and a cute smile across her face. Yes I'm here for a mission assigned to me. Ino opened her eyes at the sound of her ex. Classmate and fellow blonde. Naruto? She walked out from around the counter. You came for a mission? Yep I have the scroll right here, he said handing Ino the scroll. Okay I guess I'll lead you to my mother as she's the one who put in the request. Naruto simply nodded and followed Ino into the garden. So we haven't talked much during the academy, I'm sorry about that it's not like I didn't want to. It's okay Ino we were both busy with your own lives. It's not like we were best friends we knew each other for a day before I started. Naruto said with a soft caring smile that made Ino blush and turned her head away. Ino who's your friend? Said Ino's mother as she stood up from her flower bed. This is Naruto mom and is here for the mission you put in. That's right Miss Yamanaka here's the scroll as proof. Naruto stated as he handed the scroll over. Giving a quick check over the blonde woman nodded. Okay that's great news as you came at the perfect time. I need flowers delivered today at this address she said as she handed him a slip of paper. It was meant for two days from now but it got pushed up to today. You got it, I'll have it done before you know it, he said with a goofy but charming grin. The flowers are in these six boxes. Eno's mother said as she pointed to the wooden boxes on the other side of the garden. Two shadow clones puffed into existence without Naruto making a move or saying anything. With one hand picked up two of the large boxes and applied chakra to keep them from slipping. Be back in a few seconds please fill out the form Miss Yamanka. With that he left with his clones close behind. So Ino was that the boy who saved you all so long ago from the rapists? The blonde hair mother asked. Tilting her head to one side Ino looked confused at her mother. Yeah that was him why? All of a sudden Ino's mother smile curled upward with a gleam in her eye. It was making Ino very nerves. You never invited him over for dinner like I asked. Ino started to sweat profusely. Um, I forgot to. Well then I guess I'll just do it myself. She said as she walked into the house to tell her husband about their appended dinner guest. Wonder what that face was about? Minus 10 minutes later, Naruto returned to find Ino and her parents out front of their shop waiting for him. Ino looked passive and her mother was smiling softly, but Ino's father looked a little mad or maybe wary of him. Mission is complete within time limit and to the letter, Naruto said in a very businesslike manner. Very good here is the form and thank you for help. The Yamanaka matriarch said as she handed over the form. We like to invite you to dinner with us tonight. Oh thank you but I have to hand in my mission reports. That shouldn't take more than a few seconds. I have done a lot of missions today it take me a while to do them all. Then that's all the more reason to eat dinner with us. You'll be hungry from all of your hard work. She tries to persuade. Then I guess I have to if you insist. Perfect. When do you think you'll be done? She asked as she clapped her hands together. An hour or so I would think, Naruto said with a smile. See you then Naruto. Ino chirped with a small wave. Yeah see you then. Naruto exclaimed as he walked away. 7 colon 00 outside of the Hokage Tower. All of the clones and Naruto appeared at the same time at the very second it hit. Then in an orderly fashion the clones handed in the forms one at a time until all 75 forms were in his hands. Good work I expected nothing less from. Well me, he declared with a smug smirk. That's because we're the best believe it. 
a clone said with a thump up, damn right we are, another said, true, very true, another said with a nod, okay this is getting weird, Naruto said as all the clones went up in smoke, walking into the mission hall Naruto entered with swagger and right up to Iruka as the Hokage had other business to take care of, too many mission at once Naruto? He asked with a small smile thinking Naruto was here to turn in the ones he couldn't get to. No I'm here to turn in the entire set of completed missions, he said making every person other than him a god smack look for the second time that day. Looking over the list Iruka saw each one is signed with happy responses. Well okay then Naruto if you would please wait so we can tally the total of your missions. Naruto just nodded and found a chair and sat down. Minus 45 minutes later. Okay Naruto take this to the clerk outside and she'll transfer your pay to your account. Irka said with a proud smile. Hey maybe you could treat me to ramen this time hum. I love to sansei but I can't tonight maybe tomorrow. Sure and then you can tell me how you managed to do all of those missions at once. Sounds like a plane. How about launch at noon? Getting a nod from his brother figure Naruto walks out of the room. How long do you think it will be until he finds out how much is getting paid Iruka? A random man asked. Iruka held up three fingers slowly pulled one and going from three, two, one. Holy hell. That's a lot of zeros. He yelled right on time. Every in the hall started laughing their asses off at the blonde ninja. Minus 25 minutes later. After putting on new cloths Naruto headed to the Yamanka flower shop slash home for the dinner he agreed to. He still could figure out why he said yes but it was too late to say no now. Knocking on the door Naruto stood in a simply black shirt and pants. He sat there playing with one of his bangs until the door opened to show the blonde matriarch in the same outfit as earlier. Welcome Naruto how are you? Said the beautiful woman. Thank you for inviting me. And I'm doing well, he said in a happy tone and his smile proved it. Stepping aside to allow the young man inside she asked. Why do you feel about pot roast? I like it, he said as she closed the door and started to walk to the kitchen with him close behind. Oh that's good I was worried that you wouldn't like it, she said with a sigh of relief. Naruto simply smiled. You don't have to worry about me I'm just happy to not have to cook. Oh you cook? Ino asked as her mother and Naruto walked into the room. Ino's father looked right at Naruto and eyed him closely as his served dinner his wife made. The look said do anything to my daughter and I'll hurt you. A little, to be honest I'm not the best but I'm not the worst either. Well your mother must be proud, you can cook, you're a polite young man, and a strong ninja to be on your own, said the mother of Ino as she sat down. I hope so but I wouldn't know. What do you mean Naruto? Ino asked with a raised eyebrow. My parents died the day I was born. I don't even have a clue as to who they were or if they loved me. I was on my own until my 8th birthday when my adoptive father found me, Naruto said with a small sad smile. That made everyone look a little sad at the blonde. I'm sorry I didn't Ino started to say but was interrupted by Naruto. It's okay you didn't know. Naruto offered a kind smile. Come on let's eat. Naruto cheerfully dug in but at dignified pace. Everyone smiled at his upbeat attitude. Yes let's eat we don't want this food to go to waste now do we? The older blonde man said as his started eat. Over dinner the four shared stories, some about missions, some about friends or their childhood. Not Naruto, but to Ino's horror her mother told every story she could about Ino that should not be told to a boy. Overall Naruto had a lovely dinner with them. Man that was a good dinner thank you for the meal, Naruto said as he headed to the door with the family of blondes close behind. You're welcome please come again sometime we would love to have you over. The blonde father said shocking the two females there. Well do thanks again. Good night. Naruto said as he disappeared into the night with the family say goodnight back. I'm surprised honey I never thought you would say that to any male around Eno's age at any point. Hey dad are you okay? What the boy grows on you? The man said in his defense making two women smile at him. With Naruto. Naruto smiled a big toothy grin. He was scared that they would reject him like so many people of the village had done before. He was glad that they didn't. He was also happy that he learned more about Eno and her family who knew she used to wet her bed until she was 7 years old. Those stories made him laugh and laugh even harder when Eno exploded at her mother, and that wasn't even the worst of the stories. Well I'll get my first C-rank mission as a ninja of Kanahaga clear tomorrow. It should be fun. One week later, out in the forest close to midnight, four days away from Konoha sat a large camp of 15 tents of different sizes and varying shapes were scattered around and surrounded by a wall of sharpened logs. In the middle of the camp was the largest tent out of all of them by far being held up by long sticks and metal poles. Several bonfires were going though out the camp as the source of heat for the people there. The people looked rough with scars here and there, some had tattoos, and some had weird haircuts as others didn't have any hair. Their cloths varied from rags to normal framer wear, some had rusted samurai armor pieces on. Six of this people in pairs moved around the camp checking the security of the camp. 
but none of them noticed a pair of blue eyes watching them from the leaves in the trees line not more than 12 feet away. Well that makes 22 bandits in all. Hmm I could finish this in one, maybe two jutsu but where's the fun in that right? Thought the shadowy person. Well time to get started then. He chirped inside his head. With unnatural stealth disappeared without making a sound or moving anything, it was as if he wasn't even there. One of the bandits stopped to rest his feet by squatting down making another look back at him. Hey what's the matter? One bandit in a blue jacket and brown pants with a mop of black hair asked. Just resting my feet they're tired from the long patrol. Replied the other bandit, he was wearing a green bandana on his head and a black jacket and pants. I just need a few minutes and I'll be fine. Sounds good I had to take a piss anyways, he said as he walked away. I'll be back in a few. He waved as he went behind some crates. Yeah okay. The man sat down on the ground and sighed in relief. Man that's what the doctor ordered, he said happily. Hey you doing okay over there? Yeah I'm doing fine he never finished he just went silent. Hey you better not be messing around with me man or I swear I'll kill you. The blue jacket bandit said angrily as he walked back from the crates only to find nothing. Hey where did you go? He said getting louder. He was about to call out louder but a hand shot out of the ground underneath him and grabbed his ankle, dragging him underground before he could scream with the ground closing after his head disappeared. After a few seconds the ground began to crack as a human figure came from the ground. It took shape showing the blonde hair and blue eye of Naruto Uzumaki Uchiha. With a few hand seals a thick fag started to roll over the camp covering it in a thick layer of fog. Slowly Naruto's form disappeared as the fog got thicker. Time to compete my mission. Naruto thought as he vanished in the fog. Hey has anyone seen Tinky or Jogi? Shouted a bandit as he searched for the missing men with the camp. No. How can anyone find jack shit in this fog? Screamed another bandit. As the man walked along he heard a thud sound from behind him. What the hell was that? Walking over to the sound the bandit found the lifeless body of one members of the search party. Wow the bandit was going to say before a kunai found its way into his throat making him drown in his own blood. Hey did you hear that? Another man nearby said to the group of three behind him at the sound of a body hitting the ground. When he got no response he turned around to find all of the men in a pool of their own red life liquid. W what did did th this? Asked the scared man. I did. That was the last thing they heard before his head was removed from his body. All over the camp they bandits died one by one. After about 70% of them were confirmed dead the remaining ones huddled in front of the main tent. What kind of demon could this to so many of us? Asked a bandit who was freaked out. Luckily, for him anyways, he wasn't the only one. I don't know but keep your guard up he has to be around here somewhere. The fog started to lift showing a blurred view of the shinobi as he slowly walked towards them. When the fog was completely gone the bandits saw what they thought was just a blonde haired kid covered in blood. Their brains started to contact the pieces between the mass murder of bandits and the so-called child. N no w way h he did a l t h this, he said in a frightened voice. M my god h e re really i is a a demon. One started screaming as he held up his makeshift spear shakily. From behind the bandits came the sound of slow clapping and fast as the seconds passed with increased chucking until it was full-blown laughter. Brilliant, purely brilliant. Come from the large tent with small torches giving only enough light to show the man's lower half shadowing his face. For one so young to be able kill so many men and not even flinch is truly something to behold, he said making a grand gesture with his arms. But when he said this it only scared his man more. Please do me the favor of telling me your name child. My name's Naruto Uzumaki, who are you? The blonde asked as he pointed his bloody sword at the man. He chuckled a little bit. They call me Twin Blade. The man got up and walked out of the tent showing his black skin and black beard that went from his ears down to his chin. His upper lip was shaved and had a scar from his lip to his forehead at an angle barely missing his right eye. His hair was black and in a mohawk. He had many piercings in his ears. His eyes were a pale yellow in color. He was wearing red armor that covered his upper chest in an X fashion with red shoulder and arm guards. He had black fingerless studded leather gloves on with metal plates on the back of them. His was also wearing black shinobi pants with the trims tucked and taped into his black boots. On twin blade back were two broad swords with small figure skulls where the blade and hilt meet, that made the swords to look like winds. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he pulled out a bingo book and flipped thought the pages. Seeing the blonde Uzumaki does this made twin blade smile grow wilder. I thought I heard your name before. Twin blade a high B rack missing ninja from the village hidden in clouds, Chunin level when you left your village and country. Said to have been a raising swordsman. Naruto said as he put the book away. I'm going to enjoy killing you Twin Blade. The claim only made Twin Blade's excitement climb high at the thought of a fight. Come on then and fight me. I want to feel the rush of fighting a strong opponent in a battle to the death. 
Without waiting Twinblade drew his swords and charged at the blonde shinobi with a powerful downward slash at the blonde's head. Naruto jumped to the left causing the sword to slam into the ground. You're not getting away that easily, he exclaimed swinging his twin swords horizontally only to be blocked by Naruto's sword who held it with two hands leaning into the blade to add leverage. In a monotone voice Naruto said. You talk too much. Then Naruto kicked Twin Blade's legs out from underneath him. As the bandit fell Naruto readjusted himself and put his sword above his head to jab it down at his opponent's head. Twin Blade rolled to the side with the sword stabbing the ground besides his head. Getting a tight grip on his sword swung it up at the blonde hoping to take out one of his legs. But his hopes were dashed as Naruto in a feat of dexterity moved into handstand perfectly balanced on the handle of his blade that was jammed into the ground. The broadsword barely missing the young Uchiha's leg is pasted a centimeter away from it. Naruto let his body fall backwards and used the momentum to pull his sword out of the ground and swung it at the bandit who was still on the ground. Twin Blade brought his sword up to block the deadly blade coming for his head as he swung the other one to disembowel the blonde. Naruto jumped back to avoid the blade, giving the bandit enough time to get up on his feet. Hee hee you're good kid you almost got me a couple of times there. But what do you say we stop with the foreplay and get to the goods, he said as he slid into a stance with both his swords in front of him in an X pattern. Fine I was getting bored anyways, he said in the same voice with a blank look on his face. The two combatants charged at each other full speed with twin blades slashing his swords at the blonde who block or doge them. It was a deadly dance of blades of swordsmanship. Each time the blades contacted a spark would fly into the air. The bandit smiled like a crazed madman until the blonde throw his sword into the air with a spin. Angered by this thinking Naruto give up swung his blades inward only to have them grabbed and pushed away by the blonde shinobi. In a split second Naruto was now in twin blades face with an elbow into his noise breaking it followed by a backhand knocking his head back. Reaching up Naruto cashed his sword swinging it down cutting into the bandit's shoulder and smashing the shoulder plate apart. The only thing stopping Naruto from cutting it off was twin blades quick reaction bring one of his twin swords up to block the blade from sinking in any deeper. It saved his arm and kept it working but with a lot of pain. He was hunched over holding his bloody arm. The remaining bandits saw their leader in trouble and started to move to help when twin blade seen them. Stay there this is my fight, he yelled shocking them. This is what I have been waiting for my whole life. That got Naruto attain. To fight such a strong opponent and die by the blade, I wouldn't have it any other way. Standing to his full height and pointed one sword at the blonde. I want to know why you even came here in the first place Shinobi of Kanoha? That's easy, it was my mission. Naruto brought his sword to his side. You are far more entertaining than my last C rank mission, he sighed. I had to deliver a stupid ladder to a farmer. I'm insulted, hunting me down has been brought down to a mere C rank. Twin Blade said with a throbbing tick mark on his forehead. Well my mission was to destroy the bandit camp no one even knew you were even here. Naruto scratched the back of his head. He had a goofy smile as he felt they weren't fighting right now. Right anyways I'm going to kill you now. Twin Blade said brings his arms up with blade of his swords crossing each other. In response the whiskered shinobi turned his body sideways bringing his sword in front of him tilted slightly upward. Taking his emotionless tone of voice Naruto eyes harden. You can try, just don't cry when I defeat you. A fury of blades soon clashed against another as sparks flew in the air. Stabbing, slashing, and hacking. Twin Blade threw everything at the blonde but nothing hit. He seemed to flow around his swords or blocked them. Twin Blade swung his swords downward at Naruto's head for said blonde to block them and lock them in place. The two swordsmen fought in a battle of wills as they pushed against one another fighting for dominance. With a swift motion Naruto broke apart from the battle ducking under the deadly edge of his opponent's sword taking a lock of hair. Not wasting a second Naruto kicked the bandit in the stomach sending him flying into the air. Hitting the ground with a thud twin blade quickly picked himself up in time to get a roundhouse kick to the face sending him flying into a tree busting straight though. Coughing up blood twin blade covered his mouth with his hand dying it red. Dame, I can't keep this up. Between the pain and blood loss I'm about to pass out. Looking up twin blades blurred vision could make out the blonde figure running at him with a shimmer he could only guess was his sword reflating the mooring sun. Re he gave a battle cry as he brought up his swords only to feel the cold metal cutting into his already wounded shoulder cutting it off. This is the end. He thought with a smile as his arm flew through the air. His body hit the ground with a thud the smile still on his face. Goodbye twin blade, rest in peace. Naruto turned around towards the scared bandits. So what's it going to be guys? Surrender or die, he said with an empty voice sending a ghostly chill down the spines of the bandits. Looking at each other the bandits the bandits nodded to each other. One by one they put down their weapons. A few days later at the Hokage Tower, the last of the Uzumaki clan stood in front of the third Hokage with his hands in his pockets. 
His expression was unable to read to even a seasoned ninja. He just finished his report and was about to leave when shouting from the hallway gained the occupants of the room attain. The muffled voices made their way through the hall to the door. In the hall, Team 10 made their way down the hall after a mission. Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji were walking in a triangle pattern with Ino at the front with the boys to the sided. Amazingly Ino could still fight with the pineapple-haired youth without missing a beat. Asuma was behind them trying to get rid of the headache he developed from listening to his subordinates. He was around 6 feet in height and muscular in build. His spiky black hair and goatee worked well with his brown eyes. He wears a dark navy blue pants and shirt that was cover in the standard Jonin dark green flat jacket. Gauze was on both of his biceps and a pair knives that looked like a mix between brass knuckles and a trench knife hanging off his belt. The man was smoking a cigarette, it hung loosely from his lips as he walked down the hallway. Shut it. You don't know anything. The loud famine voice of Eno yelled out. Whatever I'm just stating the truth you troublesome blonde, Shikamaru said in a bored voice. Oh yeah if Sasuke isn't the best. Then who is? You? Eno's voice grew as she got closer to the door. Hell no. It's too troublesome to be the best. The Nujanon said with his face taking a frown. Looking back Eno had spiteful look on her face. Then who is Mr. Know-it-all? She said with squinted eyes as she reached for the door handle. Shikamaru looked at her in the eyes with a bored look he always wears. Naruto. Was his simple reply. Eno froze in place. She looked away with a small blush that they couldn't see. What did you say? She said quietly getting Shikan to raise his eyebrow. What is going on? All the time I have known her I have never heard her this quiet. Hum. He thought with calculating eyes. It's nice that I don't have to listen to her for once. Why is he dragging this out? Eno's plums were getting sweater every second that pasted by. Well what did you say, she said as her face got redder. Well nothing lasts forever. Shikamaru sighed to himself. I said Sasuke isn't the best, Naruto is. SH shut you up. Ino stuttered as she opened the door with shut eyes. Walking in the room trying to hide her blush and ended up running into something solid. Falling on her eyes ungracefully Ino rubbed her behind. Hey watch out where you're going, she yelled in anger never looking up. Why does this stuff happen to me? I'm sorry but I think you bumped into me Ino-chan. Ino I opened wide as fear sat in. Slowly looking up Ino sees the face of the blonde male she has been trying so hard to get out of her head for the past week. Here let me help you. Naruto said with a foxy smile holding out his hand that Ino took. Trying to fight down the blush on her face Ino decided to deflect a tame by asking a question. What are you doing here Naruto? She asked looking away from the blonde hair. Me? Not much, just handing in a mission report, Naruto said nonchalantly. Oh really your team must be something, 75 D rank in a day is nothing to sniff at, Asuma said as he entered with the boys. The members of his team jaws were on the ground as a winter winds blow past them covering them in snow. Is that true Asuma sensei? A zombie fed Ino asked as she slowly turned her head towards her teacher. Asuma took a step back as a cold sweat ran down his face. Well that's what I heard anyways. Man I never have seen them like this. The god of shinobi chuckled as he smoked his pipe shuffling through the paperwork on his desk. I'm pleased to tell you that rumor is true. I know because I personally handed the missions to Team Zero. Not only that but every one of them had a happy report from the clients. Shikamaru was the first to break out of his zombie state. Wait does that mean Naruto got new teammates? That got Asuma to raise an eyebrow. No the team remains the same as the day you graduated from the academe. The third said not looking up from his paperwork. B but th that means not Naruto completed those entire missions himself. Ino said in a state of shock. Asuma cigarette fall onto the floor as he did his best impression of a fish. What? You mean Team Zero is just one person? Asuma yelled loudly in surprise. Rubbing his ears in pain the old cage nodded. Yes that's correct Asuma. Ignoring his son stuttering the third went about his business. Anyways we're done here Naruto you can go now. And take your friends with you I'm sure Asuma and I can take it from here. Naruto nodded and lead all the other teens out of the office shutting the door behind them. Dad what the hell wrong with you? Asuma shouted as he slammed a fist down on the desk. Just because he's a Jinchuriki doesn't mean he can take on the world alone. Hitting the desk again he continued. If he goes on anything higher than a D rank mission he'll die. How can you let the village Jin Shuriki go off without protection? Don't you care about him at all? The third Hokage's face grew dark and angered. Asuma shut the hell up. The Hokage punched Asuma in the face faster than one would think he could move. Asuma flew across the room and hit the wall causing spider web creaks. How dare you claim that I don't care when you only see him as a weapon. Naruto is a young man. And he's so skilled that if he didn't request to be put into the academy I would have made him a Jonin or Anbu the moment he entered my office. You're the one who doesn't care about him Asuma. You don't see him for who he truly is. 
He is Naruto Uzumaki of the village hidden in the leaves. Asuma sat on the ground in shock that his father punched him in the way he did. Sure they spared once in a while as family time but that was in anger. Setting back behind his desk fixed the paperwork. In a much calmer tone the third spoke. Asuma you don't know the first thing about Naruto so don't pretend to. He's right I was just thinking about a weapon and not the person he is, and I don't know anything about him. Putting his head in his hand in shame Asuma felt so stupid. How could I be such a fool? Looking at his father Asuma felt he had to apologize. I'm sorry father, you're right I don't know anything about him. You don't have to apologize to me Asuma. It's Naruto who you have to get forgiveness from. The old cage said with a small smile. I hear his looking for someone to teach him about Winchurka, which may be a good place to start Asuma. Asuma got to his feet and took a deep bow to his father slash Hokage. Thank you I'll do just that. With that Asuma left to find the group of Janan. Asuma my son your heart is in the right place, just a little misguided is all. Sarutobi said with a small chuckle. And good luck keeping up with his training you may run out of things to teach him before you know it. With Naruto and the others. Naruto and the others were sitting at restaurant that Choji picked out. So the BBQ restaurant that Team Asuma often went to after training or a mission. Shikamaru and Choji sat on one side leaving Naruto and Dino on the other much to her embarrassment. Her embarrassment came from the fact that she was trapped next to the wall that their sat was attached to with Naruto was close that leaning a little bet she could kiss him. The boys have been talking for past few minutes and Ino been quite something that didn't escape the notice of the other occupants. Hey Ino-chan are you okay? Asked Naruto with a concerned look on his face making him look cuter to Ino, whose blush took over her face. I'm fine, she said meekly. What's wrong with me? Why is my heart beating so fast? It feels like it's going to explode. Naruto put his hand to her forehead making go stiff as a board. Her body started to feel hotter as a fuzz feeling filled the pit of her stomach. Hum you don't seem to have a fever Ino-chan. Are you sure you're okay? Pushing his hand off her forehead Ino nodded as fast her head allowed. Why is this happening to me? Naruto leaned in closer to the blonde female. Their faces just inches apart, causing Ino's whole body to feel like it was on fire. Are you sure Ino-chan? Naruto asked clueless to what he was doing. Please someone save me. Ino thought as she tried to fight off the weird feeling swarming around inside her. As if to save the day Asuma chose this moment to appear. Hey guys what's up? He said with a smile on his face and waving at his Janan. Naruto sat straight up to greet the teacher much to Ino's relief. Well I thought it would be a good idea to have some training today. Ino just nodded with a smile but she was cheering on the inside. Yes now I can forget about that weird stuff. Hey Naruto I hear you're looking for someone to teach you how to use wind nature. How about you join us and I'll teach you a thing or two. Really? Well that sound great thank you. A goofy smile was plastered on the blonde ninja's face. Ino was pulling out her hair and crying in her corner. Why do you do this to me Asuma sensei? Alright I'll pay for this and we can get going. Asuma said as he started to pull out his wallet. There's no need Asuma sensei Naruto already covered it. Choji said as he started to pack the rest of the food. Asuma blinked a couple of times and looked at Naruto. Um how did you pay for it all? A blush spread across Naruto's face as he rubbed the back of his head. Well I had a lot of cash from the missions and had nothing to spend it on. So I treated my old friends to launch. Asuma smirked at the blonde. I like you already kid. Ino couldn't believe her luck. First Naruto was in the Hokage office, then Shikamaru and Choji dragged me to launch with the guy. And to top it off Asuma now wants to teach him jutsu. Man why does God do this to me? Come on team we got a lot of work ahead of us. Asuma said as he exited the restraint. I blame you for this, Shikamaru said looking like he just woke up. Shut up you lazy bum. If you got more exercise you'll have more energy, Naruto said bumping into him. You know Naruto you're right. I should exercise less so I have a real excuse not to do anything, he said in a smug voice. Well that's one way to go about it, Naruto said sweat dropping as the Janan left out the door. Uchiha compound. Sasuke Uchiha walked into the compound after a day of training with his team and was on his way for further training. Sasuke liked his team as far as they went he knew it could be worse, having a pink haired girl named Sakura was a fangirl and one was bad enough he would lose his mind if they were two. His other teammate Sai was fairly quit but when he did speak it was usually to insult someone or question their sexuality, however was very skilled so he didn't hold him back any. His sensei Kakashi was strong but lazy so he really didn't have a good or bad opinion about him yet but he was teaching them so things so that gave him a couple of points in his book. Sasuke was wearing his blue long collar t-shirt with a Uchiha clan symbol on his back and white shorts alone with his blue sandals. Walking up to a large house Sasuke takes a deep breath as he opens up the door of his home. Traveling farther into the house he hears the sounds of soft humming coming from the kitchen, 
without thinking his feet guided him towards the soft music. Stopping at the doorway Sasuke stops to see his mother in the kitchen cooking lunch probably for him and Itachi after their days of training and work as head of the clan respectfully. A soft smile spread across his face as he looked one of his last family members. I'm home mother, he said softly but happily. Turning around Mikado saw her son standing in the doorway. Welcome home son launch will be ready in a few minutes. Where's brother at? I wanted to ask him to train me today. The young raven-haired Uchiha asked. He is in his study doing paperwork, she said going back to cooking the food. Your brother has been doing very well for the past few years as head of the clan. Thanks mom, Sasuke said as he walked through the hall to Itachi's study. The halls were filled with pictures of the family and friends, Sasuke's life hung up on the walls from him being a baby with Itachi holding him to his must resent of him graduating from the academy and the party of him, his mother, and his brother Itachi, and the last of the Uchiha, excluding Naruto, having a homemade barbecue thanks to Itachi who cooked. Getting to the oak door he stopped just in front of the door and knocked sternly. After get a come in from the dull tone of his brother's voice Sasuke entered to see Itachi writing down information into scrolls. Looking up Itachi peered into the eyes of his little brother and gained a smile few get to see. Hello foolish little brother. Getting a tick mark on his forehead Sasuke's eyes seemed to go completely white. Are you ever going to stop calling me that? He shouted in frustration. No. Was Itachi's simple response making Sasuke hump and turn to the side. Itachi chuckled at his brother's childlike attitude. What can I do for you today Sasuke? Snapping out of his act Sasuke faced his brother. Well I wanted you to train me today so I could get stronger. Itachi's smile disappeared and a small frown took its place. I'm sorry Sasuke I can't today. Sasuke's face married his own. I have a meeting today so I can't train you. I understand big brother. The Uchiha said feeling a little sad. Getting an idea Itachi pulled out a scroll from his desk and sat on top of his writing space. Here Sasuke since I can't train you I'll give you this scroll to learn from. It has some chakra control exercises and fire jutsu and should keep you plenty busy and when I return I'll help you from where you're at. Gladly taking the scroll Sasuke scanned the content and smirked. This well differently put me above the blonde dope. Rolling up the scroll Sasuke smiled at his brother and gave a small bow. Thank you brother. Then he left to train out in the courtyard of the compound. Sasuke I know who you want to surpass but I don't think you know just how much a task that really is. After all he surpassed me long ago and is still growing, so you will have a lot of cashing up to do my foolish little brother. Itachi thought with a smile. With Naruto. Naruto was standing at the edge of a field with his hands clasped together and consternating on whatever it was he was doing. Ino, Shikamaru and Choji were working on their teamwork by fighting Asuma and trapping him but it was far easier said than done for the Janan. The three ninja in training was scuffed up with dirt and cuts all over their body but had Asuma surrounded and in a pinch after what seemed like forever and was closing in fast thanks to the brilliant mind of the lazy genus. Human Boulder Jutsu. The Kabiaki Michi cried as his arms and legs tucked into his inflated body and spun around at fast speeds as he charged at his teacher with the intent to flatten him. Asuma jumped over the rolling Shinan with ease but had to jump to the side to dodge the kunai that Ino threw. Nice try but you'll have to do better than that. Choji turned around for a seconded round and not wanting to take on a tank of meat the bread to Jonin was forced on the run. Dogging the cubby boy again he ducked under shrunk and thrown by the pineapple haired genus failing to notice the shadow slowly growing on his back. His danger sense kicked in telling him to get the hell out of doge and he obeyed by jumping to the left like an animal would just in time as Eno hit the ground where he was a second at a go kunai and hand stabbing it into the ground where his head was. Getting up Asuma tried to move but his body suddenly stopped moving. What the? Shadow possession jutsu, complete. Shikamaru said with a smug smirk and released the jutsu as the exercise is now over. The Jonin smiled at his team impressed with their progress. Good work you guys you're all getting better and your teamwork was flawless, he said as he starched his macules. Looking over towards the blonde student has picked up to see him with hands together. Hey Naruto how far are you along with the technique? Naruto turned his head and smiled his goofy, fox-like smile. That good uh, well come over here and let's see it. The blonde shinobi nodded his head as he picked some leaves from the tree above his head. Hamasuma sensei what is Naruto doing anyways? The curious female of team Asuma asked. The teacher looked over at his students as they looked at him with confused eyes. Well Naruto right now is tempting to gain mastery over his wind element by cutting a leaf with just his chakra. Opening a bag of chips as it was a free moment the rounded boy asked his teacher. Hamasuma sensei how would cutting a leaf help? It doesn't sound ever hard, I mean it sound like something I could do it. He finished as he started to stuff his face with chips. Well I thought the same when I started to train with my wind nature. But just like tree or water walking the concept is far easier to understand than to put into practice. 
As an example of how hard this really is, I would say trying to do this is kind of like taking your bare finger and try to cut a steel sheet in half in one try. He said getting bugged eyes from the Janan under his command as Naruto ran up with a fistful of leaves. The idea behind it is simple really, the ninja would mold his chakra into two blades and grind them together making them as thin and sharp as possible in order to cut the leaf. If one could do this then they could apply it to their jutsu making them stronger and able to cut through anything depending how in tone to the element you were. Hey Asuma sensei I think I have this down. Smiling brightly at the blonde he chuckled at the thought of him getting this down in only a couple of hours when it took even gifted weeks to complete it. Okay let's see what you got and if you did it I'll tell the second step. Getting a nod from the blonde he placed four leaves in the palm of his hand making Asuma raise an eyebrow. After putting his hands even on top of each other he closed his to focus turning his chakra to wind affinity. The three Janan leaned in to see if there was some trick to what his was doing. What is he doing? One alone he hard enough but he just put four down there's no way he can do this. To do so would take unbelievable amount of focus and control along with the natural talent that would put genus of the likes of Itachi to shame. Naruto opened his eyes and removed his upper hand showing Leafs with a smirk on his face. The Jonin looked at Leafs with a sweat drop. It doesn't look like he even touched them. Naruto brought his flat palm to his face and blew causing the Leafs to fly off as they split apart straight down the middle causing Asuma to freeze in place as he watched them fly away. Ina looked on in amazement with a light pink dusting her cheeks. Wow, Naruto how are you able to do these things? She thought as her body started to heat up. Naruto just how strong are you going to get? Every time I think I can see the end of your potential I then see a whole new level that even deeper than before. The lazy genus thought with a cold sweat tricking down his face. Please Kami don't let us ever be on opposite side of battle. Choji just stared on blankly as he dropped the bag of chips in shock. Naruto flashed them his fox-like smile, right then the few clouds that was in the sky moved out of the sun's way letting the light shine through lighten up his golden hair. What's next? Asuma broke out of his trance. Right sorry the next step is hard but we can't do right now because we need a waterfall. Reaching into his pouch Asuma pulled out a scroll. I don't know of any so here's a scroll in case you find one, he said as he tossed it at the blonde who caught it with ease. Thanks Asuma sensei. You're welcome. When you get that part mastered come find me and I'll show you some useful jutsu. Anyways that's it for today so you're free to go Naruto. Team stay behind there's something I want to talk to you about. Naruto nodded and said his goodbyes to his friends in the left. Okay team I wanted to say good work on your teamwork and that I'm impressed. So much so I think I'll give you guys a couple days to relax but after that we'll do a C rank mission. I don't know how but this is somehow your fault Naruto. The Nara hair thought with a twitching eyebrow. The next day was at the Hokage Tower. Team 7 made their way through the Hokage Tower at noon after morning training on their way to the mission hall with Kakashi behind a Janan reading his smut. Sasuke, Sakura. And Sai walked side by side down the hall with Sakura try to get the Uchiha to agree to a date with Sasuke shooting her and every time, and every time he did Sai commented about Sasuke either being gay or asked if he had a small dick and was scared to let others know. Of course this pissed off both the Uchiha and his fangirl. The team walked into the with Sai sporting new bumps thanks to the wreath of a pink haired Kunoichi and that pleased Sasuke judging by the smirk on his face. Their Jonin instructor shook his head in amusement and followed his team through the door to the mission hall. Team 7 Reporting in for a mission, Kakashi said without ever removing his face from his book. The third Hokage looked up from desk and nodded towards and picked up a list of D-ranked missions. Okay let's see what we have. We have walking dogs for the Inuzukas, painting a soon-to-be restaurant, weeding a garden for an elderly woman, catching the Domino's wife's pet cat Tora. Every shinobi in the room shuddered at the thought of the cat that has become known as a demon in feline form. Hokage-sama enough with this BS mission we want something worthy of our skill. Sasuke yelled getting nods from his teammates as they too were tiered of the lame missions. Iruka shot up from his set slamming his hands down onto the table. Show some respect you brat you're just Janan, the lowest level of ninja and so you get missions as such. Iruka thing went into teacher mode and went on a boring speech about ninja and how the missions are sorted out based on rank. Looking back at the Janan he saw them listening to a story on how Sakura compared different types of hair products had the best effect and in combination. The real icing on the cake was that even the third was over near the Janan lesson as well. Hokage-sama what are you doing? Everyone in the group looked back at the Chunin with wide eyes because they forgot where it is they were. Hum, getting hair advice from my grandson. The old cage said in a questioning tone. Appearing back near his set the god of shinobi coughed into his hand with a small blush on his face. Anyways before you can get a mission you must get approval from your Jonin sensei first. So Kakashi do you think your team is ready for a C rank mission? The man in question looked at his team for a minute before turning back to his cage and nodded. 
Yes I think they have the skill and teamwork for a simple C rank mission Hokage Sama. Very well I have just the mission for but first someone must be present for this. Anbu. An Anbu ninja fell from seemly nowhere before the aged cage in a kneeling position get Naruto Uzumaki and bring him here. Tell him it an emergence. The Anbu nodded before disappeared for the assigned task. After amends the Anbu appeared in the room with the blonde, who was dressed in black Anbu sandals and pants but with no top and soaking wet showing off his muscular body and seal that looked like a tattoo which was on his abdomen making every woman in the room blush. This counts Sakura, and the two female Anbu in the room. Sai notices Sakura's blush as her whole body becomes stiff with blood slowly tricking out of her noises thought about the man in front of her. What's the matter old man? Naruto asked in full battle mode only to find the area void of danger. Well Naruto Team 7 is going out on a C-rank mission and I think this is the perfect time for you to get some much needed experience. The Hokage said signaling that there was much more going on than there appeared to be. Reaching into his bag Sai pulls out a book and flipped through the pages until he found the page he was looking for. Sakura my books say that when a female is blushing and blood leaking from her noise that most likely means that she is expressing an intense desire to mate with said object she looked at when the symptoms started. He said as is read the book. Also it says that when numerous female express the same thing towards a man it means that there's a chance that he is a large male reproductive organ. Everyone in the room get unbelievable quiet as a weird crow and stupid looking started to crow just outside the window. Sai not noticing the tension thought everyone was waiting for an answer to the question as he has read in another book. So not wanting to upset his teammates Sai walked over to the shell-shocked blonde whose mind stopped working and pulled down his pants in one swift movement and let it drop to his ankles. Naruto turned to stone as his manhood stood out for all to see making every woman in room blast back via noise bleed at seeing Naruto 7 inches limp cock hanging out. Several minutes later in one bloody sigh, fixing his pants Naruto had his eyes closed with a deep blush on his face. Anyways who is that emergence? Well I wanted to get you here as soon as possible but it's now apparent I had made an error in judgment. In any case Naruto go get your things because I don't want to see my grandson's junk again. The aged of Cage said getting nods from the other males in the room expect Sai who didn't understand what he did. After a few moments Naruto walked through the door in his full gear and even had his sword out and hooked into place on the blonde's back. His midnight back coat opened showing his fishnet steel shirt with nothing over top of it exposing his chest to the world. Overall he gave the mix of a killer shinobi and sex appeal. Ok now what the mission Oji-san, Naruto said in a monotone voice making Sasuke look at the blonde in surprise. He sounded just like Itachi. But how is that possible, could it be a coincidence or is he really? The grandfatherly Hokage broke Sasuke out of thoughts. Yes your mission is to escort a master bridge builder to his home country of wave and protect him from bandits and highwaymen until its completion. Please bring in the client now. Soon the door opened to show a man in his late forties with grey hair and goatee, he was around the same height as Kakashi with a whiskey bottle in hand as he leaned on the door frame. The man had glasses that hung down on his noise and wore a brown sleeveless vest with tan shorts that went past his knees and a pair of sandals that were meant to be walked on for many hour out of the day. I am Tazana and you expect me to believe these brats are the ninja I hired to protect me. Most of them look like they wouldn't be able to protect themselves let alone me. Taking a gulp of the bottle he sighed in satisfaction. The only one out of this lot that looks like is worth anything is the kid in black with the sword and he looks like he would rather fuck my daughter than protect us if the time came. He stated with dissatisfaction. Sai simply gave a small fake smile before he responded. Well from what I read Naruto-san would have the necessary amount to please about any woman, and if that wasn't enough then his stamina would surely do the job as he is able to outrun all of the Jonin within Konoha for days at a time. Everyone just ignored the pale boy and went on with the conversation. Well my team may not like much but each one has the strength to protect you. Even if they can't I'm a Jonin of the highest skill and then there the blonde here is backup and is skilled enough to this kind of mission on his own, so you'll be pliantly safe, Kakashi said trying to reinsure the man but questing his own statement about Naruto's skills having not seen them himself, but if the third thought he was strong enough to be in a team by himself then he would trust his cage. Ok so we'll meet in front of the gates tomorrow at 9 o'clock have your stuff packed and ready to go. Getting a nod from everyone they left expect Naruto as the old Hokage wished to talk with him farther. The next day, Naruto arrived at the specified location on time to see the members of Team 7 arrive without their sensei and their client waiting half asleep. After 10 or so minutes, Kakashi appeared in a plume of smoke and gave a weak wave. Yo, he said getting a shout of you're late. From the pink haired Kunoichi. Well you see a black cat crossed my path. He saw they weren't buying it so he settled for coughing in his hands. Anyways let's get on with the mission. Naruto I know you have got used to working on your own but you're on a team now, 
and I'm in charge as your commanding officer for the duration of this mission do you understand? He asked in a serious tone here only a few times from his Jinan team. Yes Kakashi and just so you know I have worked in teams before so don't worry about me being unable to corporate. Good now let's go team. The sliver-haired Jonin said as he started to walk with the client close behind. A little time later, the team walked down the dirt road from Konoha to Wave Country with Sakura asking Tazana about the country's history and what it was like there. Kakashi stepped in to talk about how Wave doesn't have ninja and the element country's hidden villages worked and the various cage that ruled over them. Sasuke listened in hoping to hear about some powerful shinobi and Sai pertained to out of curiosity, or so he read. They learned that Wave was a small country of islands that largely depended on fishing and their carpenters for business. As they walked down the path Naruto saw a puddle on the edge of the road. Eyeing it for only a second Naruto put his hands in his coat pockets in a causally manner. The puddles rise up and took the shape of two human figures wearing identical outfits. They wore grey and white cameo jumpsuits with raincoats over them and breathers over their mouths used for underwater. One man had spiky black hair and a forehead protector that had two horns on it to help him look more intimidating. The other ninja also had black hair but was combed down with his forehead proctor having a horn going straight up the middle of his head where his hair parted. Both had a clawed gauntlet on opposite arms, one per person, that had a chain of shrunkens contacting them. Let's kill them brother. They rushed forward at the unexpected group of ninjas wrapping the jonin up in their chains tightly preventing escape as the sharp edge dug into Kakashi's flesh. One down, said the spiky haired brother. They gave a swift pull with their gauntlets ripping the man to shreds making the Team 7 freeze in place. As they went to move they felt a another pull on their chain causing them to stop and look back, seeing the blonde sword stuck through holes of the chain where the line would converge stopping them from moving as it was pegged to the ground. The blonde himself was standing on the hilt of it, Naruto quickly spun around throwing two kunais at the base of their spine forcing them to detach chain or be crippled for the rest of their, no doubt short lives. Making a quick dash one of shinobi went towards the old drunk as the other one went for the black haired Uchiha. Sakura in amazing amount of braveness stepped in front of Tazuna who was terrified with kunai in hand to protect him. Naruto reached down and garbed hold of his sword's hilt and seemed to vanish and reappear in front of Sakura to stab the spiky hair shinobi in the knee forcing him to the ground in a sudden halt. In movement faster than anyone besides Kakashi could see Naruto threw a couple more kunais at the other brother's feet with enough force to sink halfway. This caused him a moment pause of pain allowing Sasuke to punch him in his face before grabbing the front of his raincoat to use the momentum to jump up and knee him in his stomach making him lose the air in his lung. Quickly Sai brought out ninja wire and restrained the two ninja. Appearing out of thin air Kakashi stood in front of his team. Good work team impressive work. Sakura face lit up with untold happiness that her sensei wasn't killed. Kakashi sensei you're alive. Oh come on now you didn't really think I would go down that easily did you? He asked with a nice smile. In any case Sakura you did well jumping in front of Tezuna to save him, you showed impressive courage and I'm proud of you. That got a happy blush from the girl. Sasuke good work on hitting the enemy hard so he'll stay down and Sayu did well restraining them so quickly, every smooth work guys. Sasuke gave a cocky smirk and Sai looked the same as always with his fake smile. And we can't forget the bread and butter of this fiasco Naruto, who was able to disable two Chunin veterans in a matter of moments. You showed amazing skill and executed them perfectly, Kakashi said as he gazed at the blonde. He is strong, too strong to be a Jinan even if he's on his own. Besides I could see it in his eyes, the claim, the claim that only comes from being in life and death battles countless times. He didn't flinch or hesitate, like he knew the outcome of the battle before it even began. Naruto rubbed the back of his head bashfully. Oh thanks, but I really didn't do much. Sakura couldn't believe what she was hearing. He single-handedly gave us victory and he acting like he just sat there and did nothing. Everyone I have ever met would have boosted about it, but not Naruto is too humble for such things. Sakura thought as a small blush worked its way to her face in admiration of the blonde shinobi. Dazuna looked a little freaked out. He was so fast I couldn't even see him, but with him guarding me I won't have much to worry about him so far. Naruto looked over at the Chunin that was tied to a nearby tree. Looks like you were right Oji-san. Flashback. Naruto just walked into the Hokage's office with a third and shut the door behind him. With a couple of hand signs a faint blue overtook the office keeping those from outside the room from hearing inside. Turning around Sarutobi walked to his desk and sat down. Naruto I suspect that the mission that you're going on is far more dangerous than it appears. Naruto's face looked like it was made from stone as he didn't react. You think Tazana lied? Nodding slowly his old face was completely serious. Yes I do, but I think he did it out of fear. That's why I'm sending you on this mission Naruto, you'll be able to protect him and Kakashi's team. 
Do not be mistaking Naruto this is undercover mission to weed out what has Tazuna so scared and cut the beast's head off. Naruto nodded respectfully. Here take this in case Kakashi ends the mission. He handed Naruto a scroll, taking a quick scan his eyes widen, and flash back. These are Kirigakura Chunin, they're famous for their wellness to fight to complete a mission until death. Not only that they were waiting and watching for us. The sun was out and it's been days since it last rained so there was no way for there to be a puddle so it was obvious against Yutsu. Naruto here picked up on it right away but didn't act because like me he wanted to find something out. Spoke the Jonin in a lecturing tone as the bridge builder started to sweat. What would that be? He said worriedly. What they were really after. Were they after us, ninja attacking ninja? But they weren't they were after you the bridge builder. In any case it's clear that this is more than a mere C rank mission. If so protecting you until the bridge would be a simple thing. But if you're expecting to be target of a ninja assault then it is beyond question that this would be ranked higher for elite ninja. This is far beyond the scope of the mission. My question is why did you lie? Dazuna teeth clenched in frustration and tightened his fist until his knuckles turned white. With a deep sigh he unclenched his hands knowing that if he wanted help he would have to tell the truth. There's a real scary man out for my life. Kakashi eyed him letting him know to continue. You have probably heard of him. He's a billionaire in the field of marine transportation, his name is Gato. Kakashi's eye widens. You mean Gato of shipping and transport? They say his is the richest man in the world. The old man nods. That's the one. On the surface he looks like a legitimate businessman. But in truth his is a murdering criminal who employs gangs and bandits to do his dirty work, and traffics in drugs and contraband including humans. Sakura paled at the thought knowing he meant sex slaves. It was a year ago that he showed up under the banner of good business but he soon overtook all of Wave's shipping industries. Then he started using violence to keep us under his thump. After all the man who rules the sea rules the country. And the only thing he fears is the completion of the bridge, for with its completion his hold over the land will be broken. So being the architect and overseer of the bridge construction you are much in his way Mr. Tazana, Sakura said as she rubbed her chin and thought. Why didn't you just say you needed help? My country is very poor our lords are poor. And I have no money at all, an elite B rank was more than I could afford. Adopting a seldom look Tazana gave off a depressing air about him. Naruto's blue eyes softened in sympathy for the bridge builder and his people. Walking over to the man he placed a hand on his shoulder sportively. Don't worry I'll help you and your country. Naruto that's not really your call, but what do the rest of you think? Asked Kakashi with a half-lidded eye. Sasuke was the first to respond. I say we go we can handle it. Sai just nodded, yeah with us acting as a team nothing can stop us, Sakura exclaimed happily and full of confidence. Somewhere deep in the woods of Wave, a building that looked like some kind of insect hive with three openings sat, two were rope bridges and the last was a spiral staircase leading up from the ground floor. Wooden planks covered it as it hung onto a tree. Failed? What the hell do you mean you failed? A four-foot man screamed. He wore a black business suit and tie with dark and sunglasses, his spiky graying hair was up with it flatting downwards. If you weren't the best I wouldn't be paying top dollar. But all his yelling got him was a large sword to his throat. Shut up you ungrateful runt, said a chillingly clam voice that sounded like death. Following the sword you saw it was six feet in length and a foot wide. A small opening the size of a hand near the top and a crescent moon shape was built into the cutting edge of the blade making a pocket big enough of a person's head. Holding onto the two foot handle was a six two inches man with short and shaggy brown hair. He had no shirt but a brown lather sword holder. He wears a white and dark grey cameo arm and leg wormers. The demon brothers failed Gato. I well now take care of this myself. Taking a gulp the midget of a man knew one wrong move would mean his life. Yes sir but are you really sure you want to? The enemy has hired his hired ninja of tremendous skill, besides after the last attempt they will be on guard now. The sword wielded ninja's face scrunched up in contempt. Just who do you think you're talking to? I am Zabu Zamamochi, the demon hidden in the mist. And none shall escape my blade. Last chapter. Failed? What the hell do you mean you failed? A four foot man screamed. He wore a black business suit and tie with dark and sunglasses, his spiky graying hair was up with it flatting downwards. If you weren't the best, I wouldn't be paying top dollar. But all his yelling got him was a large sword to his throat. Shut up, you ungrateful runt, said a chillingly clam voice that sounded like death. Following the sword, you saw it was six feet in length and a foot wide. A small opening the size of a hand near the top and a crescent moon shape was built into the cutting edge of the blade making a pocket big enough of a person's head. Holding onto the two foot handle was a six two inches man with short and shaggy brown hair. He had no shirt but a brown lather sword holder, he wears a white and dark grey cameo arm and leg wormers. The demon brothers failed Gato. 
I will now take care of this myself. Taking a gulp the midget of a man knew one wrong move would mean his life. Yes sir but are you really sure you want to? The enemy has hired his hired ninja of tremendous skill, besides after the last attempt they will be on guard now. The sword wielded ninja's face scrunched up in contempt. Just who do you think you're talking to? I am Zabu Zamamochi, the demon hidden in the mist. And none shall escape my blade. And now, we find our heroes in a small fishing boat going across the large body of water at the crake of dawn under the cover of the thick morning fog. The team of ninja had been talking about Tazana's bridge to pass the time but did so quietly with the Janan of Team 7 being absent mind of their surrounding but Naruto was alert as ever. Kakashi's lone eye unnoticeably pecked over the orange adult novel he was reading to glance at Naruto who was reading a book about the theory of advanced sealing in a similar manner as himself. Hum sealing is one of the hardest skills to master, it takes years of practice to master even the basics of the art. Yet here he is reading advanced level stuff. Maybe I'm overthinking it, after all reading about ninjutsu and such could just be a hobby of his. With that thought he buried his face back into his smut. Sakura looked over at the two deadly ninja reading their respective books and sweat dropped. She leaned in closer to her teammates to whisper. Hey, have you guys noticed how similar Naruto and Kakashi Sensei are? Sasuke opened his eye and glanced at the pink haired Kunoichi and then at the two reading ninja. They like to read I don't see what the big deal is, Sasuke said in an equally quick tone. No she right dickless Naruto and Kakashi Sensei share a lot of similar traits outside of reading. Sai commented. Like what you pale dope? The young Uchiha said with a tick mark on top of his head. Sai made no visible reaction to Sasuke name calling and went on. Well for one both of them are acting like they're in a tea house instead of on a high risk mission. Another is that Naruto has almost identical body long to Kakashi. Sasuke humped. So what they're both trained as ninja by the same village they're bound to have identical body long. Sakura sighed. He has a point Sai maybe I'm just imaging things. A grin scratched across his face and descended to mess with his fellow Janan. Bringing the book down to the bridge of his noise Naruto gave an eye smile at whispering Janan. You know we can hear you right. The trio heads turned so fast that it looked like they would have whiplash and widened eyes. A ghostly masked face of their teacher seemed to overlap Naruto as he looked just like him with the eye smile. Sakura slowly turned her head around with Sasuke and Sai doing the same. Okay maybe there's something to it after all, she said as if she seen the devil and getting a nod out of her teammates. Kakashi and Tezuna were laughing lightly at the young ninja antics. Several minutes later, Kakashi and team were walking down a dirt road as they surrounded Tazuna and on higher alert than before. Naruto looked side to side as they made their way to Tazuna's house with a foreboding feeling in the pit of his stomach. The blonde's eyes darted to some bushes and watched them move for a split second. Naruto turned his head as if he saw nothing but inwardly smirked about the sure-to-be incoming fight. A swishing sound filled the air and was getting louder quickly. Get down. Kakashi screamed as he tackled Sasuke and sighted the ground with Naruto getting Sakura and the old bridge builder down and out of the way. The massive sword of Zabuza stuck into the tree not too far from where Team 7 took a dive. The figure of the swordsman stood on top of the sword's handle as the team and Tazana got back up onto their feet. Well it's no wonder why the demon brothers failed, with the shinobi leader as the infamy's ninja Kakashi Hatake. The man somehow said with bandages around his as he stood with his back turned to people on the ground. Kakashi is the only one out of the group who looks like he could put up a challenge. His eye drifted over to the group until his eye landed on Naruto. Hum he looks familiar, but where have I seen him before? Now's my chance to show that blonde dope who's the best and I'm not going to miss it. Sasuke thought as he started going for his kunai pouch. Well if it isn't Zabu Zamamochi the kid who ran off from Karagakura and became a missing ninja. Sasuke started to run at the dangerous ninja but was cut off by Kakashi holding his arm out. Don't interfere and give me room. This one is different from the previous opponents. Reaching up to his headband, this covered his left eye, and grabbed a hold of it of the metal. For an opponent of this caliber I'll need to use this. All of you assume battle positions and protect Mr. Tazna. He pulled the headband up to revile his red eye of the Sharingan. Ah the Sharingan so quickly in battle, this is an honor, Zabuza said now facing Kakashi. Sakura looked at Kakashi. I have heard about the Sharingan but what does it do? The Sharingan is a visual jutsu that enables the user to penetrate and see the reality behind any genjutsu, daijutsu, or ninjutsu and reflect them back at the one who cast them. And there's more to them. Sasuke answered the pink-haired Kunoichi. That's right brat the Sharingan is the most formidable as it also allows the user to discern and the duplicate any jutsu it sees turning the opponent's own jutsu against them. When I was assassin for Karagakura I possessed a bingo book a kind of who's who of your greatest enemy list. It had quite the extensive write-up on you including a mention on your impressive record. Kakashi Hitake the man who had seen through and copied over a thousand jutsu nicknamed, 
Kakashi the copycat ninja, wow I didn't know Kakashi sensei was such a big deal. The one female of the group thought in amazement, the demon of the hidden mist crouched down and grabbed a hold of the handle. Enough with the pleasantries, I'm on a tight schedule to kill the old man. The Zhenan got into a proactive circle around Tazna. But it looks like I'll kill you first Kakashi. With a strong kick Zabuza freed his blade from the trunk of tree and landed on the surface of the water and stood there as if was land with little waves going outward from his feet. One of his hands was in front of his chest and the other was scratched far above his head. Hidden Mist Jutsu A thick fog quickly overtook the land and making hard to see two feet in front of your face. Everyone stay on your toes I haven't mastered very aspect of the Sharingan yet. There are eight targets. Came Zabuza's disembodied voice from the thick mist as he filled the air with killer intent. Throat, spinal column, lungs, liver, the jugular vein, the subclavian artery, kidney, heart, he said in attempt to scare his opponents and succeeding in scaring the old man and the Janan of Team 7 but not Naruto or Kakashi. Sasuke was trembling in fear of the Jonin out for his blood. This bloodlust that fills the air, is this really what it's like when two Jonin fight? It's unbearable, I feel like I'm going to choke to death. To know my life is in the hands of my enemy, that even blinking could decide if I live or die. I hate it, I rather kill myself. He thought grabbing a hold of a kunai ready to stab it into his gut and spill it all over the ground. Sasuke, Kakashi yelled out in the mist. Don't worry I'll protect all of you, I won't allow my comrades to die, he said calming the collative group down. I wouldn't bet on that, Zabuza said loudly as he appeared in the middle of Janan forcing them and Tazana to fall to the side in fright. Before he could react Zabuza found a sword piercing his back and through the other side hitting his kidneys. Shock overtook his face as he looked over his shoulder and followed the blade back to its owner to find Naruto looking in the opposite direction into the mist. Zabuza turned into water and splashed on the ground. Kakashi was as shocked as Zabuza at the quick dispatch of the water clone that he didn't notice the missing ninja behind him. You let your guard down, Zabuza said as he swung his clever like sword cutting the Jonin in half. But like Zabuza Kakashi turned into water midair and reappeared behind him with kunai to his neck. Game over. The Cyclops ninja said. Well would you look at that. You were able to copy me in the cover of the mist. But don't you think for a moment that one because it will take more to defeat me than mimicking me like an ape. But you are good. In the time you gave your little speech you duplicated my water clone technique and replaced yourself with it so my attention would be on it. Bravo. Another Zabuza faced behind Kakashi. But I'm not that easy to fool. Taking a strong sweep with his bladed Zabuza swung it at Kakashi who ducked under the razor sharp edge making the blade dug into the ground. Zabuza used the momentum to his advantage and kicked the teacher into the air and fly across the field and into the river. The x Miss ninja gave hast after Kakashi but his path was blocked Caltrop's traps but he wasn't detoured and jumped onto the river as Kakashi came up for air. Water style water prison jutsu. A sphere of water trapped him inside. You fall right into my trap. The prison may be made of water but it's stronger than steel. Having you running around is too much trouble, I'll finish you off later I have dealt with your brats. Damn it I knew he was strong but I didn't think he was this strong. Kakashi thought to himself as a water clone of Zabuza raised from river. You brats think having headband makes you a ninja but you're wrong, a true ninja is one who has been between life and death so many times the lines blur. Clothes don't make you a shinobi but skill dedicated to kill your opponents from years of training to be a ninja. When you killed enough people to make a listing in my in my bingo book of enemies then you may call yourself a ninja. So until then. Zabuza vanished and reappeared in front of Sasuke and kicked him the stomach sending him skidding and skipping across the ground. You're nothing but brats. Sasuke, Sakura yelled out as she caught the flying boy. Everyone listen. Take Tazana and go. It's a fight you can't win. Well his has me in this water prison he can't leave and his water clone can't go far from his real body. Kakashi screamed. Naruto stood in the back of the group and did a few hand sighs making a soft blue light glow under his jacket before it faded but not before Zabuza and Kakashi caught it. What was that? Naruto what are you planning? The blonde Uchiha stepped forward as he drew sword form his sheath. Sakura can you do me a favor? He asked with an aura that screamed power, looking at her from the corner of his eye. The Kunoichi in question nodded her head. Watch over Tazana and your teammates while I get your sensei. Not even waiting for a response Naruto blurred from existence as the ground under Naruto kicked up dust. Naruto's image cleared as he slashed down on the clone splitting in half. Zabuza looked Naruto in the eye and what he saw sent a chill down his spine for what he saw was the ice cold pools that looked like they belonged to the Shinigami himself. As soon as Naruto's feet touched the ground he was off like a rocket towards the mist ninja. In mid swung the blonde's blade meet with Zabuza's and soon became a struggle between strength between the two as Zabuza tried with all his might to keep Kakashi in his prison. 
ducking low Naruto kicked his opponent's stomach sending him flying as it ripped his arm out of the jutsu. Zabuza hit the water with a loud smack as he sunk into the water deeps as Naruto throw his sword into the air and run through a long chain of 23 hand size in a blink of an eye and slam them onto the water. Water style 5 hungry sharks, Naruto yelled out push a large amount of chakra into the water. What's going on? Naruto's chakra was only tuning level a few minutes ago and now it's above my own. Kakashi thought as he dragged himself out of the water. It must have something to do with that blue light I saw in the river with Zabuza just before Naruto's jutsu. What the hell was that? That brat just sent me flying like I was nothing. He thought as he started to swim back to the surface. Why do I get this feeling like I have seen him before? Then figures started to form in the water of sharks and soon swam after him at and seemed to fly through water like a bird in the open sky. Zabuza barely had enough time to bring his sword up the block the punishing blow delivered. Another came from the side but he was prepared this time and gave a sluggish but powerful swing cutting it in half. Another and then another came, each time one got damage it would heal and attack again and soon the attacks became relentless in their endeavors. They soon broke through his defenses and started to pummel him over and over again with him defending off a few of them at a time. The five sharks came from below Zabuza and slammed into his back rocketing him through the water and out with enough force to send him in the air. Swinging his large sword he used the momentum to correct himself and landed on the water. Despite the beating he just endured Zabuza was pretty much unharmed. Dame I still don't have very good control of the jutsu, Naruto said as he stood up and faced Zabuza who was coughing trying to clear his airway. I have been so preoccupied with the new jutsu I have been trying to learn that I have neglected my other jutsu. Dame you. Quit mocking me you little fucker, Zabuza yelled out a battle cry as he charged while holding his sword to the side, he ran across the surface of the water with rage shown by his veins popping out. He came in with a big slash only for Naruto to parried with a downward strike, they found themselves in a dance of death between two master swordsmen as the sparks flew off the blades as they skated across the water. To Zabuza's irritation he couldn't land a one blow on the elusive blonde but the same could be said for Naruto as Zabuza's superior experience with his sword keep the blonde Uchiha at bay. They clashed blades again and again and each time the water under them blow back by the force of them. He's better with his swordsmanship than imagined, this is going to be harder than I thought. On the shoreline, Kakashi was back with his Janan and Tazuna and all of them were awe stricken at the display of Naruto and Zabuza trying to kill each other. This is unbelievable, Naruto is going toe to toe with Zabuza. Sakura and Sasuke were shaking in place at the level of killing intent Naruto was pouring out. His killing intent made Zabuza's early display looks like a child's first attempt by comparison. Kakashi sensei just what is Naruto? The terrified Kunoichi asked feeling like she was going to pee herself and Tazuna already beating her to the punch, but despite the fear she couldn't help but feel warmth come from Naruto, like he would never hurt his comrades and loved ones. His strong Sakura, far stronger than I ever thought he could be at this point. The two battling shinobi clashed against sending a powerful gust of wind over area. Kakashi watched the whole thing not blinking as he didn't want to miss a thing and recorded it with his Sharingan so it would forever be burned into his memory. Naruto doesn't leave any openings and strikes at the moment Zabuza's does. It's only due to Zabuza's experience that's saving him from being gutted like a fish. How is he this strong? To fight a Jonin level ninja to a standstill and keep it that way at our age is inconceivable. Were you always this strong Naruto? Sasuke though as he tightened his hand into a fist, digging his nails into his palms until they started to bleed. Have you been toying with me all this time? Sasuke thought back to the academy wherever they faced off he would get a couple of good punches in before he was ultimately defeated. A darkened figure of Naruto towered over Sasuke in his mind making a cold sweat run down his face. How am I supposed to surpass him at this rate? Back with Naruto and Zabuza. Naruto and Zabuza had locked blades and pushed against one another for dominance over the other both gritting their teeth. At the same time both of them kicked each other's side sending them skating across the water as both of them sheathed their swords. Running thought a quick line of hand size Zabuza finished his jutsu. Water style water dragon missile. The water beside Zabuza rose up and formed into a water serpent and gave a screeching sound before barreling after Naruto. Being forced to abandon his jutsu Naruto did three quick hand size. Water style imperial water wall. A circular wall of water shot up into the air in time to block the dangerous body of water and destroy both jutsu. As the water came down you saw Naruto hands in the sigh of the snake obviously finishing a jutsu. Water style 8000 needles of death. 1000 droplets of water stopped falling in the air to lengthen and sharpen then sent after Zabuza faster than a normal person's eye could follow. The needles impaled Zabuza only to find out he was a clone and turned into water. The real Zabuza appeared behind Naruto seemingly out of nowhere. This is the end little ninja, Zabuza yelled out as he cut Naruto in half with his sword. 
As the two halves of the blonde ninja flew into the air he too turned into water much to Zabuza's shock. Zabuza felt something grab onto his feet and looked down to see the hands of his opponent. Reacting quickly Zabuza slashed into the water cutting the blonde's hands off as he once again turned into water. Damn it where is he? Water style shark bomb jutsu. In an instant a shark the size of Zabuza jumped out of the water and crashed into Zabuza exploding on impact sending him and hundreds of gallons of water into the air. Fuck that was close, if I hadn't summoned that water clone at the last second that would have killed me. Despite getting out without too much damage the force of the explosion was enough to hurt him more superficially but the pain was still there. As he started to fall back down he chooses this moment to start a long chain of hand seals with Naruto doing the same. His feet touched the water both him and Naruto finished the justice. Water style giant waterfall. Zabuza slash Naruto screamed out at the same time creating the giant funnels of water of the same size and charged at one another and collided with a big explosion that flooded the shoreline. The two just as push against one another and attempt to kill the other. Naruto screamed out as he pushed more chakra into his jutsu making fiercer and started to overpower Zabuza's, until it broke through and swallowed the missing ninja in the jutsu and battered him around like a rag doll in a tornado. At the end of the jutsu Zabuza crashed into a tree allowing air to finally enter his lugs after what seemed like hours to him. Zabuza looked up to see Naruto slowly walking over holding his sword at his side. Who, who are you? The pro ninja asked loudly. Naruto stopped in his tracks and looked Zabuza in the eye with the same emotionless face he had at the start of the fight. Where the fate of many lay, I am there to protect the innocent, and destroy the corrupt. The members of Team 7 and Tazuna looked confused but Zabuza's eyes widened in absolute shock. I'm sorry Zabuza but I must protect the innocent. As Naruto raised his sword to cut off Zabuza's head a pair of needles stuck into the mist ninja's neck killing him. Shifting his eyes Naruto and the group saw a ninja in a dark navy blue battle kimono with black hair in a bun and a white mask covering his face with the engraving of the mist village. What is a mist hunter ninja all the way out here? The ninja in question stood up showing his full height. I was tracking Zabuzamamochi and my search laid me here. Thank you for your assistance in this matter but I will handle it from here leaf ninja san. The ninja appeared beside Zabuza's body and was about to pick him up until he found a blade to his throat. And what if I want the bounty on his head for myself? Naruto asked with a dangerous tone in his voice that said if he was to be denied, he would kill the mist ninja. The hunter ninja started to sweat but the mask hid that and he spoke as clam as ever. If you allow me to bring in Zabuza's body I will be sure to have the Mizukage informed and he will be happy to talk about trade options with the Hokage. Naruto seemed to agree with the terms as he gently removed the blade from his neck. Without a moment to lose the ninja disappeared in a swirl of leaves. Kakashi pulled his headband down to cover his eye as walked over to Naruto. Good work Naruto you earned your pay for this mission that for sure. Come on let's get Tazuna home team, Kakashi said as he started to walk with his team until they heard a loud thud sound. They turned around to find Naruto lying on the ground not moving. Dame I hope the kid's not died, he was useful, Tazuna joked but is really worried. Naruto. Sakura screamed out of worry as she rushed over to the blonde with the other close behind. Sakura grabbed a hold of Naruto and sat him up leaned him against her chest. Kakashi sensei what's wrong with Naruto? She asked holding up Naruto's heavy body. Kakashi kneeled down and took a closer look at Naruto seeing his eyes clinched shut and his hands and legs were twitching wildly. It seems Naruto's body isn't used to moving at such high speeds yet. No big deal and nothing dangerous to his health, a few days rest and he'll be as right as rain. I could use a rest myself as most of my chakra is depleted. Then we should hurry to my house it's not too far from here, Tazuna said getting a nod from Kakashi as he picked up Naruto and followed him down the dirt road. An hour later, Tazuna's house was built out in the water a little ways off the shore but close enough where water wasn't really deep. It was two stories tall in a pyramid-like fashion with the second story was a few feet smaller making it look like two boxes stack on top of another. The pier was beautifully made and the waters were crystal clear. Overall it was a house any small family would love to live in. Naruto was lying on a bed sleeping soundly looking as if he was died with the occasional soft snore as everyone was around him making plans for the future. Is he going to be okay? Asked a woman in her late twenties but looked like she was just exited her teens. She had raven black hair that went down to her mid back. She wore a white t-shirt with black trim and a black dress skirt. She was a tsunami, Tazuna's 28 year old daughter. Oh he'll be fine just needs some rest. Kakashi said from his own bed next to Naruto's as he rested. So what's the next course of action Kakashi sensei? Sai asked as he was reading a book about intimate relationships volume 2. My concern is that missed shinobi hunter. Something didn't seem right about him, some detail I'm missing. Kakashi absently said as he started at the ceiling. Why would a hunter ninja use senbo needles to kill? You have to be very accurate for it to do damage let alone kill. 
and the place where he hit, the neck could he have just went for the most open spot. Maybe but why did he take the body hunter ninja are supposed to depose of the body on site? Sasuke looked up from his spot and at Kakashi. If that's true why did he take the body and not just destroy it? Maybe he just did want to do it in front of genins like us, Sakura said throwing in her two cents. Kakashi got a hard look on his face, well what of his face you could see of it anyways. That's a possibility but I doubt it. Most likely Zabuzai is still alive and that ninja is his partner. The room went deadly silent, but how do you know he's alive and not died you could be wrong, Tazuna said. Kakashi nodded at the bridge builder. That's true I could be wrong but I honestly think he's still alive. Think about where the needle struck it was in his neck, it would be easy to put someone into a death state with the right knowledge. If he was put into a near death state I judge we have a week or so before he is ready for another round. Kakashi sat up and looked at his students, but that also means we have a week to train you guys for another fight. Get ready because tomorrow you guys are going into intensive training to get you into shape. All three Shinan nodded at their teacher. Out in the middle of the woods, the masked ninja kneeled down to the body of Zabuzai and placed a large roll on the ground. Undoing the clips that held it together it unfurled to show many different types of scissors, scapulas, and knives all looking sharp and deadly. Okay first I'll remove the wrapping around the mouth so the blood can drain out and then. The ninja said as that he moved the scissors he chose ever closer but was brought to a halt when Zabuza's hand shot out and grabbed the ninja's hand stopping it from moving farther. Pulling down the bandages around his mouth Zabuza showed his shark-like teeth. Enough. I can do it myself. Zabuza sat up and grabbed a hold off one of the needles stuck in his neck. You know you have all finesse, of a butcher, Zabuza yelled as he ripped out the needle. Carful Zabuza sir. If you pull them out any which way you really will kill yourself. Zabuza pulled the last needle out with a grunt and fixed his wrappings. How long are you going to keep that ghoulish mask on? Take it off already. Old habits die hard. The person said as he reached up to the mask and took it off showing famine face with bright red lips. It was very useful for my monkey pantomime routine. Her smile fell into a frown. Next time will you be ready? Zabuza's face gained an angry scowl. Next time I'll be ready. I won't underestimate that boy again. I hope not Zabuza Sama he is very formidable opponent, if you're not careful you could be killed. Standing up Zabuza weakly grabbed his sword and put it on his back. Next time we face someone we'll be leaving in a body bag and it won't be me. Because this time I know who I'm dealing with. Back at Tazuna's house, Sakura sat beside Naruto as Kakashi ordered her to while he slept. She looked at Naruto and saw he was overheating by the sweat pouring down his face. Taking off the blanket she saw he was still in his heavy jacket which was buckled closed. How come Kakashi sensei didn't think to take off his jacket that thing is like an oven. Looking over she saw Kakashi passed out, right anyways I better take it off. Her hand reached out and grabbed a hold of the buckle and undid them opening it and took it off to show his muscles under his black t-shirt. Before for she realized it she was leering over his body for several minutes when she caught herself, she developed a full body blushed as she hung her head low. When did I become a pervert? Who cares just rip open his shirt and take a long look at his sexy body. Screamed inner Sakura as she gave two thumbs up. I can't do that. She thought as she looked to the side and saw bandages sticking out of his sleeve. Was he hurt? I need to take a look and make sure it's nothing serious. Her shaky hand gently removed his shirt slowly with closed eyes and a deep crimson blush. After getting his shirt off Sakura cracked open an eye for it to drift down Naruto's chisel chest and abes. Cha. His body is top grade. You could cut a diamond on that. Sakura felt her body heat up as she closed her legs tighter than they were. SH shut up. I can't think things like that. Looking back at his abess she noticed a black comma tattoo. She wondered but got away she took off his shirt to begin with. She gently looked at his arm to see the bandages covered most of his shoulder and down his arm to the middle of his bicep. The weird writing is what really drew her attain as it was in a circle surrounding a symbol meaning level 8. What could that mean? She reached for the bandage and pick up a stranded only to find out she couldn't lift it and every time she tried the writing would glow a little. After several tries she gave and settled for just watching the blonde sleep. Man why can't I get those stupid bandages off? Better yet why are trying to take those off when you know what is packing underneath those pants? Blood started to drip out of her noise at the memory of when Sai pulled of Naruto's pants. Shut up you perverted baka. Deciding to cover Naruto back up with the blanket much to inner Sakura's disappointment and went to get some sleep yourself and ask Kakashi about the bandages later. After all everyone else was asleep and it was size shift anyways. Man a good night's sleep will clear my head. Unknown to her inner Sakura had other plans for Sakura's dream tonight. Last time, Zabuza pulled the last needle out with a grunt and fixed his wrappings. How long are you going to keep that ghoulish mask on? Take it off already. Old habits die hard. 
the person said as he reached up to the mask and took it off showing famine face with bright red lips. It was very useful for my monkey pantomime routine. Her smile fell into a frown. Next time will you be ready? Zabuza's face gained an angry scowl. Next time I'll be ready, I won't underestimate that boy again. I hope not Zabuza-sama he is very formidable opponent, if you're not careful you could be killed. Standing up Zabuza weakly grabbed his sword and put it on his back. Next time we face someone well be leaving in a body bag and it won't be me. Because this time I know who I'm dealing with. On to the chapter. It was early morning with the sun peeking into Naruto's room as he slept with Team 7 sitting around waiting for Naruto to wake up. The Janan in the room looked like they were about to fall asleep except Sai who was working on a drawing and every now and again looked at the sleeping blonde. Sakura looked at her teacher and voiced the question that been bugging her since last night, Kakashi sensei what are we going to do about Zabuza and the fake hunter ninja? Putting his smut away in his kunai pouch the silver haired Jonin looked at his students. I'll let you know right now because you need to hear it. None of you are ready to fight them. The Janan in the room, except the sleeping blonde, looked shocked that their sensei said that but knew he was telling them the truth. However that just means I have a week to train you to be ready for Zabuza and his accomplice. Those words made them brighten up a bit with Sasuke and Sai at the thought of getting stronger and Sakura feel safer. That's a nice little speech Kakashi sensei but don't you think you better get to the training and not talk about it. The blonde said as he sat up and starched his muscles getting the kinks out. Naruto you're awake, Sakura exclaimed happily. Dazuna and Tsunami walked into the room filled with ninja with several plates of food for the ninja. Well it's good to see the little sociopath is awake and ready to fight. Tazuna said with a smug look on his face. Naruto's eyes started to twitch repeatedly. Shut up before you have a heart attack old man. The bridge builder eyes became white orbs as a tick mark appeared on his head. Why you little runt that's all the thanks I get from bring you food, he yelled as Naruto hopped up from his spot and butted heads with Tazuna and they started pushing back and forth. And that all the thanks I get from saving your sorry ass yesterday, Naruto yelled through gritted teeth with a shaking a fist at the bridge builder. Shut up both of you. Tsunami punched Tazanai as Sakura hit Naruto upside the head sending them down to the ground with steaming lumps on their heads. The two females smiled as they high-fived each other. Now Naruto-san please eat so you can get your strength back, and father leave Naruto-san alone. Naruto and Tazana nodded as they sat up with Naruto taking the plate the raven-haired woman gave him. Not wasting any time Naruto inhaled his food but in a dignified manner. Thank you for the food Ms. Naruto fished for a name out of the woman. Tsunami. And you're welcome Naruto-san, she said as she took back the plate back with a blank look as she eyed the plate. How can anyone one person eat that fast? Naruto stood up and walked over to his coat that lied by his bed and put it on but leaving it opened and forsaking his shirt. So what's the plan Kakashi? You go train your team and I watch over the old man? Kakashi nodded his head. That sounds like a solid plan but don't overdo it Naruto you just recovered after all. Kakashi got up and walked out of the room with Naruto following behind. After you guys are done with breakfast meet me at the door. After leaving the room Kakashi led Naruto into kitchen. Okay Naruto today you'll watch over Tazuna because it's obvious you know how to water walk. But tomorrow I want you to train your body so it can move at high speeds. Naruto nodded in agreement. The Janan walked into the room all in a row and gathered around their teacher with Tazuna and Tsunami joining them. They started to talk about the training schedule and guard duty when a small boy around 6 years of age walked into room from outside. He was around 3 feet in height with chocolate colored hair and eyes wearing a white bucket hat with two blue stripes around the middle of the hat. He had a fluffy short sleeve sweater under a dark brown overalls and blue ninja sandals with bandages around his ankles and elbows. He ran up to Tazana and gave him a hug. Glad you're home grandpa. The boy said as Tazana put his arm around him and held him close. Guys this is my grandson Inari. Inari these are the shinobi that kept me safe. They're going to help save our country. The brown haired boy narrowed his eyes at the deadly shinobi. But grandpa they're going to die. Naruto raised an eyebrow. No one can beat Gato and his men. Inari said as a shadow covered his face. Sasuke was about to speak in protest but Naruto interrupted him in a clam and collated tone. That's the talk of a coward. You can sit there and cry if you want but I'm going to help this country and its people. Come on Tazuna you have a bridge to build. Without saying another word Naruto walked out of the house with the bridge builder right behind. Team 7 followed in their footsteps to start the training that will hopefully give them the much needed edge and headed out into the woods near the house. Inari stood there on the brink of crying as he shook in anger at the blonde. With Naruto and Tazna on the bridge of stone and steel the blonde Janan sat over at the side with his senses starched out as far as he could to look out for danger. To most it looked like Naruto was sleeping but the master of the bridge knew better than to question him. 
Dazana and his crew have been working for hours making the bridge grow inch by every precious inch. An older crew man walked up to Tazana taking off his hard hat. Hey Tazana I need to talk to you. Naruto opened one of his eyes and looked at the worker in case he was up to any trickery. Yeah what is it Jaiichi? He asked as he wiped sweat off the side of his face. The now identified Jaiichi fidgeted. I have been thinking it over and I want off the job. Tazana spun around so fast Naruto thought Tazana might have had ninja training for a second. What why? Out of nowhere like this, and you of all people. Tazana we go a long way back and I want to help you, but we can't take the risk. Gato will take a contract on us if we don't stop. And if you die it just won't be this one project. We all could lose everything. The man tried to reason with his lifelong friend. Please Tazana just give it up the bridge isn't worth it. The man said as he started to walk away. Naruto's lip turned downward into a frown. You're a coward and a broken man, go flee into your hovel and hide. Everyone stopped working and looked at the talking blonde with Tazuna looking at the blonde with widened eyes and Jaiichi stopped in his tracks. Jaiichi turned around and looked at the blonde in the eyes with anger in his eyes. What did you say to me brat? Naruto got off the card he was setting on and looked at the former worker with hard cold eyes. Did you not hear me? I said go ahead and hide like the coward you are. Go and pray that Gato will be merciful towards you when you can afford the next payment and won't take your life then. Beg to your god he won't take your wife or daughter as payment and violate them with his flunkies until you can. And when your praise fall on deaf ears just remember you're the one who has failed to act and not anyone else, you did. I for one want this bridge to be completed for every inch is an inch closer to breaking his control over you. Naruto spoke with total conviction in his voice in a way that seemed if a hero from a storybook came to life. His speech inspired the workers who thought of quitting and steeled their resolve even Tazana conviction got stronger in completing the bridge. What would you know? You haven't lifted a finger into this bridge you brat. Jaiichi that's over the line, Tazana yelled. No his right I haven't lifted a finger. Naruto took off his jacket showing his naked chest as he picked up a steel beam that took normally two or three men to carry with one arm. Just tell me where to put it Tazna. He nodded and gestured for Naruto to follow. At the forest hideout, Zabuza lay in his bed as his accomplice took care of him as he healed from his injuries. The door opened as Gato and two wannabe samurais accompanied him with their hands on the hilt of the blade and walked inside. One of the wannabe swordsmen wore a heavy grey jacket that had many pockets and pants that ended just above his ankles. A beanie hat was on his head with his brown hair pocking out from brim of the hat and had makeup around his eyes giving the impression of a clown. The other guy didn't have on a shirt showing off his tattoos on his arm and chest. His lower half was covered by a kimono and had an eye patch over his right eye. You have a lot of guts showing up here after taking that beating like a mutt. Ninja from the mist would appear to be vastly overrated. You can't even clean up after your own subordinate steam and yeah right. The samurai started to draw their swords before Gato raised his hand singling for them to stop. Gato walked over to the prone Zabuza with an outstarched hand. What got nothing to say for yourself Zabuza, no last words. Before Gato's hand could touch Zabuza neck the fake hinter ninja grabbed a hold of Gato's wrist and broke the bones. Don't you dare touch Zabuza sama with your filthy hands. The ninja said as the two lackeys of Gato drew their swords only to find them pointed at their necks with the ninja in between them holding the blades. You don't want to do that I'm in a very rotten mood right now so don't test me. The three men had beads of sweat run down their face. Th there had better be no more mistakes. If you fail again don't think you can come back here, Gato yelled as he and he flunkies left the building. There was no need for that Haku, Zabuza said lifting up the covers to show a kunai in hand. Haku sat down next to her master. I know but it's too soon to finish Gato off. If we cause a commotion where we are, we could find ourselves on the run from them again. For now it's be patient. With Nardo, we find our favorite blonde and Tazana walking through the locale town filled with starving men, women, and even children running around looking for food and work. Most walked around in rags and the buildings weren't in any better shape as most were falling apart at the seams. My daughter asked that we pick up some supplies at the market for dinner. The old bridge builder said. They walked into the locale grocery store that had next to nothing in it and what food it did have was dangerously close to its expression date. Man this reminds me of my childhood. Naruto thought as Tazana bought what he could. The ninja and client walked down the street back to his home Naruto felt something pull at his jacket. Turning around Naruto saw it was a child around Inari's age in rags and in need of a bath. It was hard to tell the child's gender but Naruto would guess it was a girl. She had brown hair and eyes like most people and she wore a white shirt and blue shorts which both had holes in them. Can I have some food please? She asked with her hands cupped and out in a begging manner with a sweet smile on her face. It's been like this since Gato has moved in. Children forced to beg and the grown men and women to scare to do anything about it, Tazuna said with a frown. 
the child's face started to fall as time went on thinking she would have to go hungry again tonight. Naruto kneed down to the child's eye level with a bright smile on his face. Hey would you like to see a cool trick? The girl smiled brightly and nodded her head. Naruto reached into his coat pocket and pulled out a green scroll. Now would you like to eat little girl? She crossed her arms and thought before a bright smile came to her face. I want chicken roman with extra fish cakes. Naruto blinked a couple of times before laughing lightly. You got it. Naruto opened his scroll and laid it on the ground, he put his hand on the seal matrix then pushed a little chakra into it. In a puff of smoke an extra lager bowl of the girl's request appeared with steam rolling off of it. Reaching back into his coat Naruto pulled out a pair of chopsticks and broke them, giving the girl both the food and utensils need to eat. There you go that should fill you up. The girl had a bright smile on her face and stars in her eyes as she carefully took the bowl. Thank you mister, she yelled happily before sitting down and started eating like Naruto does. Dazuna got a smile on his face watching Naruto interact with the child. Naruto stood up and four puffs of smoke reviled four other Narutos all around Tazuna in a box formation. Dazuna I'm staying here for a while I'll meet up with you later. The clones will keep you safe. Dazuna nodded before disappearing into the crowd. The girl drank down the last of the broth with a happy sigh as Naruto put away his scroll. The girl handed over the bowl to the blonde. Thank you so much for the food. Naruto just smiled at the girl and quickly sealed away the bowl in a different scroll. You are welcome. Are there others like you miss? The girl nodded with a small smile. Can you show me where? The girl nodded and got up to her feet and grabbed Naruto's hand. She dragged Naruto down a series of alleyways to an empty lot converted into a camp set. A bunch of makeshift tents was scattered around the dirty lot made from old blankets and shirts that could no longer be used. Children from all ages were scattered from tent to tent from infants to 15-year-old kids often taking care of the younger ones. A girl around Naruto's age looked up from the children she was watching and saw a blonde boy with whisker marks on his cheek being escorted by the young girl. Hi Saiki-chan who is that with you? The girl was as tall as Naruto with a high C-cup bust and brown hair with green eyes, her skin was a beautiful tan and unblemished. She wore blue butte shorts and red tank top with red beach sandals. The young girl let go of Naruto's hand and ran over to the older girl and enveloped her in a hug. Hi Nichan. This guy gave me food for free, Saiki exclaimed with a smile. It tasted really good. That nice sweetheart. The older girl said as she patted her head in a loving manner. She looked up at Naruto and noticed how he wasn't wearing a shirt under his jacket and blushed lightly. Thank you for being so kind to Saiki. She said as her eyes lingered on Naruto's toned chest as sweat trickled down giving a tempting glassing shine. Oh it was no trouble I'm just glad she enjoyed the Roman. The blonde said as scratched the back of his head. I'm so this is where the kids go because of Gato huh? The brown haired girl walking around the camp with Naruto following behind. Yeah we have been taking care of each other but most of the time it's not enough. What food we find we share between all of us and the shelters are, less than helpful. But we do what we can. Saiki ran off to talk to play with some of the younger kids. Hum let's see, there's about 25 kids in total and about 100 square feet in the lot and I need at least 20 feet of spare space. Hum I could work with that. Naruto followed the girl around the premises as he eyed the area. Hello my sweet Naruto-kun helping some poor lady in jeopardy? The nine-tailed demon cued. Frisk that's not how that saying goes. Second if the lady is an entire country then yes. Yeah baby why are you up so early anyway? You usually don't get up until I visit you at night. Well you haven't visited me in a while and I wanted to talk to you sweetie. He he love you to baby. Anyways maybe one could help me with some design ideas? What did you have in mind Naruto-kun? The next morning. It's 7am when Naruto walked into the kitchen with a yawn as he starched working out the stiffness of his muscles. Naruto sat down at table with a glazed look in his eye as he rubbed into crust out of them in only a pair of black shorts. Tsunami walked into the dining room with plates of food on the table and one in front of the blonde. The steam raised and filled his nostrils with the smell Naruto lifted his groggy head over the plate with a small welcoming smile. Hmm thanks for the food, Naruto said and he ate his food slowly in his dreamlike state. Soon the rest of the house inhabitants joined for breakfast and ate in silence enjoying the tasty food that was before them. So Naruto I'll watch over Tazuna today and you can train with my team if you wish. The one Jonin in the room said somehow still eating with his mask on. Naruto shook his head. No it would be better if I trained by myself, I intend to get destructive when I train. He then left out the house into the woods. Several hours later, Team 7 sat around the bed of forest they have been using for their tree calming exercise huffing and exertion from trying to complete it. Sakura could do it without a problem but not for very long because of her small chakra pools so she kept going in order to increase the size of her revisors. 
Sasuke had a large revisor but less control of it and Sai was so were in the middle of them. Sakura lay down on the ground to rest as Sasuke chose to rest his back against the tree he was practicing on. Man, who would have thought, it would be this hard, Sakura said with her chest heaving up and down. The black-haired Uchiha grunted in response to tired to voice his response. I wonder what kind of training Naruto is doing right now. The girl thought out loud getting Sasuke's head to perk up and an idea to pop into his head. Why don't we find out? What do you mean Sasuke-kun? We need a break right now anyway so why not use it to see what kind of training that dope's doing? Sakura got up from her position with a sly smile liking the thought of spying on their temporary teammate. Okay I'm in. I always wonder what kind of training he did anyways. And if we're lucky we'll get to see him all sweaty without cloths on CHA. The pink-haired girl's face got a light blush on her face as blood leaked out of her noise. Sai walked over to his teammate and poked her in her forehead. Hey ugly are you thinking about matting with Naruto-san again? The comment got Sai hit to his face breaking his noise and throwing him flat onto his ass, again. Shut up Sai or I'll kill you. In the village hidden in the mist, a woman around six feet in height sat a desk sorting through a stake of paperwork that was as tall as she was. She had long bright red hair that covered one side of her face. She was wearing a blue battle dress and black high-held shinobi sandals with blue lipstick. Man why is there so much paperwork? She asked no one and then sneezed lava of all things onto the paperwork and desk destroying them both. She blinked in surprise only to smile brightly after a few seconds. Thank you whoever is talking about me. The door to the room opened to reveal a blue-haired man with an eye patch and talisman earring walked in. My lady what happened to your desk and paperwork? The blue-haired man asked seemly unfazed. I sneezed. The man gave a deadpan look but not at all the same. No worries my lady I took the liberty to make copies of your desk and today's paperwork, he said as the woman sunk into depression. Damn it, and just when I thought I was free, back in the land of waves, Sasuke sweat dropped at the scene. Let's go already. After 10 minutes of walking the trio found Naruto standing on a flowing river surrounded by hundreds of clones and all of the in swimming shorts and sword drew and ready to kill. Jackpot cried inner Sakura with two thumbs up and a perverted smile on her face and even Sakura had to agree with her inner self there. As if an alarm went off several clones charged kicking up water leaving a trail of their path to the blonde shinobi. As soon as a clone got within staking distance it swung its blade in untempt to remove the original's kidney but was denied as Naruto's sword blocked the blow with the flat side of his blade. Naruto counter with backhanded with enough force that the clone's neck snapped in two before it disappeared in a puff of smoke. Two clones appeared at Naruto's side and with a thrust the two swords and impelled him. Naruto spat blood into the river. The clones smirk in victory until Naruto exploded into a flat crow's and they got their neck sliced open resulting into poof sending their short existence. The crows flew back together and formed into Naruto who was kneeling down on the surface of the river. A sharp blade of his clone's sword shot out of the water underneath of him getting Naruto's eyes to widen in surprise but still reacted quickly and moved his head to the side barely missing the cutting edge as it took a couple strands of his golden hair. Another clone phased into existence above Naruto with an axe kick aimed at his head only for Naruto to grab his ankle and twist around and slam him into the clone that surfaced from the water destroying them both. Naruto gave a sigh of relief for the breathing room. Too bad Naruto had to dive to the side as six clones landed where Naruto was with their swords where his body would have been an undoubtable, would have killed him. Before he could react Naruto found a fist in his stomach launching him into the air as two more clone followed behind. Recovering quickly Naruto blocked one clone's sword with his own and griped the wrist stopping the other from moving. With one swift movement Naruto broke his wrist and kicked the side of the remaining clone as he started falling down towards the horde of clones. Preparing for the worst Naruto landed on the surface of the water with the column shooting high into the sky from the force of the harsh landing. Four Naruto busted through the wall of water from the side with four more bursting in from above as they all aimed to run the creator through. The swords bisected each other with four through his midsection and four through his shoulders piercing his heart and lungs, to their great surprise proofed out of existence in a wisp of smoke. Naruto's image appeared above their heads and with a strong swung Naruto sliced through three of the blonde's clones. The others reacted quickly and attacked Naruto in a fury of blades as sparks flew into the air as the blades clashed against one another with Naruto trying his hardest not to get hit but the increasing difficulty as the clone kept adding on as time seemed to drag along and he was, becoming overwhelmed. Stab, block, strike, parry, punch, block, kick, counterattack. All of this were happening so fast that it was like it was choreographed by a beautiful mind of an artist mixed with a murderous madman. Naruto's sword clashed with another clone's as the locked blades together and without a second to spare Naruto pushed forward scraping the two folded deadly sheets of metal against one another Naruto punched his clone in the face before rushing on the offensive. 
Naruto slowly but surely was begin to tear his way through the army of clones. The Jinan watch on once again in shock at the display of skill Naruto showed but Sasuke couldn't help but feel happy about finding out more of what his rival could do so he could one day beat him. Sakura looked on in unblinking as she watched his every move, mostly because she had a hard time seeing the blonde move at all. The golden-haired Jinan was a little more than a blur to Kakashi's students as a streak of golden sparks flew through the air. Show what you can do dope so I'll surpass you and put you into your rightful place. The dark-haired teen thought with a smirk. The roseate ninja look on with her heart fluttered every time Naruto almost stabbed or punched. She got so into the instant's fighting that she started to punch the air while cheering Naruto on. Go Naruto! Give them left, a right. She punched Sai in the face in her excitement oblivious fact that she did it. Why is it she hit me this time? What did the book say about a woman who hit other men around her chosen mate? Sai wonder as he sat up nursing his bruised cheek only to get elbowed in the face by the female sending him the ground again with a broken noise. I think I'll just stay down here. He thought with the same fake smile he always had but was straining to maintain the facade by the witching lip. Come on we need to get back to our own training, Sasuke said to his teammates but only Sai responded as Sakura was still in a trance by Naruto's spar. As the boys started to walk away Sasuke grabbed the back of Sakura dress attempted to drag her as she tried to stay and watch the show struggling as hard as she could. Naruto finished off the last of his clones as he huffed lightly as his body was covered in small cuts that were quickly healing. He wiped away a bit of sweat from his forehead as he walked back to the shore to find his neatly folded cloths and found the sheath and quickly put his sword away. Now that my audience is gone I can work on my wind justice. Naruto walked back out the middle of the river with his cross-shaped hand Sai conjuring shadow clones across the river. Putting their plums on the surface of the water and pushed sharpened wind chakra into the river making small amount water fly into the air but not the desired effect he was looking for. I'll be at this for a while. Naruto deadpanned as he kept pushing chakra into the river. Last time, Naruto finished off the last of his clones as he huffed lightly as his body was covered in small cuts that were quickly healing. He wiped away a bit of sweat from his forehead as he walked back to the shore to find his neatly folded cloths and found the sheath and quickly put his sword away. Now that my audience is gone I can work on my wind justice. Naruto walked back out the middle of the river, with his cross-shaped hand Sai conjuring shadow clones across the river. Putting their plums on the surface of the water and pushed sharpened wind chakra into the river making small amount water fly into the air but not the desired effect he was looking for. I'll be at this for a while. Naruto deadpanned as he kept pushing chakra into the river. Now, tell us. Why have you come here? What do you want? A fat bandit yelled as he hit Naruto upside his head with a lead pipe getting a loud thwack. The hollow pipe vibrated in his hands from the force used in the swing. Talk damn IT. With another swing smacking he prisoner across the face. Another Skinner bandit watched as this went on as he leaned against the wall with a toothpick in his mouth. Amazing, we have been beating the living shit out of this guy for over an hour and he still hasn't said a word. A chuckle actually escaped his throat at the thought. I'll say it, this kid tough. The fat bandit was starting to get pissed. You think you can walk in here and kill 20 of our guys and get away with it you little bastard? Well too bad, now you're going to tell us who sent you or I'll kill you myself. Once again only silence was heard from their captive. Enraged the man started hitting him repeatedly in the face and chest. Damn it. What the hell is with this guy? He doesn't respond to anything. The man huffed breathing hard from the exertion. Come let's leave him here I need the break. With that the two bandits left shutting the metal door and locking it behind them. The prisoner was a blonde wearing only black cargo pants and no shirt showing his muscular body have arms were chained to the wall by his sides. In the dark his hands chained and bonded to the wall the blonde occupant smirked. All is going according to plan. The prisoner thought happily as dark tan skin of the kid started to lighten into a healthy one. I swear Naruto you and your crazy ass plans are going to be the death of me. The nine-tailed demon thought in irritation. Oh you know you love my plans Q-chan. He said sweetly. Not when they involve you get the living hell kicked out of you I don't. Oh come on baby they always work. Okay they work most of the time. Besides with the earth style iron skin you know they have no chance of hurting me. He exclaimed in complete conference. That's not the point Naruto and you know it. How did you even get in this mess to begin with? You know that's a good question. Oh wait I remember. Naruto though sweat dropping. Flashback. Naruto just walked into Tezuna's house sweat dripping from his brow just getting back from another intense workout. Kakashi just finishing telling the story of Zabuza and how he passed the mist's twisted final exam. Naruto just shrugged it aside and thought one of the Jinan asked about him or maybe Tezuna. Naruto didn't really care as he heard it before. The woman of the household walked out with dinner and most of the people were all smiles, Sasuke and Inari, at the hot meal they were about to eat. Naruto sat next to Tezuna and started talking with the man as they ate. Naruto told a joke that got everyone at the table, 
except Inari, laughing. Inari stared at the blonde with narrowed eyes tears gather in the corners of his eyes as flashes of his father run through his mind. Why? Why? Inari thought as he clinched his small hand holding onto his jeans. The raging emotions deep within him swirled around like a typhoon fighting to get out as tears freely ran down his face. Naruto noticed Inari cry and got curious. What's the matter? That was all it took to break the floodgate the boy was trying to hold back. Why do you wear yourself out trying? No matter how hard you train you'll never be match for Gato's thugs. Inari slammed his hands down on the table. You act all cool, and you talk all tough but big strong guys like that are always too much for people weaker than they are. They'll destroy you. Naruto huffed and leaned back into his chair as he crossed his arms over his chest. And what makes you think that they're stronger than me? Gato and his band of flunkies don't stand a chance. Shut up. Just watching you ticks me off. You go off running your mouth when you don't know anything about us. This isn't your town and you don't know a thing about me, he yelled surprising Tazana and Team 7. You're always clowning around and having fun. You don't know a thing about suffering and loneliness or what my life is like. Naruto's face was shattered over as his anger spiked filling the room with killing intent making everyone go on edge. Shut the hell up you fucking brat, Naruto said with enough venom in his voice to kill an elephant. You're so lucky to even have a mother who's there for you and to cook you warm meals. Who loves you no matter what you do and protects you. Do you know what happened to me until I was adopted at 8 years old? Naruto open palm slapped the oak table hard enough to crack it down the middle. I was hated and attacked but my own fellow villagers. They beat the living shit out of me every day. They would beat me until I was a bloody mess on the ground and beat on me some more. Not only had that happened but they tried to kill me on multiple occasions. Everyone, but Kakashi, gasped in shock. On my birthday when I turned 6, 6 years old is when they crucified and tortured me for hours, and then set me on fire. They did all they could to starve me and shun me from everyone. Naruto was shaking as he cried. You can't image the pain I felt every day, how lonely I was. Kakashi looked way in shame as Naruto spoke with intense sorrow and pain that his voice carried. Tazuna's family and the Janan of Team 7 look on in horror of what Naruto was telling them with Sakura openly crying. Naruto did that really happen to you? Sakura asked herself as she shook uncontrollably. Naruto got the look like he ate something bitter. So don't you dare say I don't know what it is to suffer and feel the pain of loneliness? So if you want to compare us then don't because I'm way out of your league kid. Inari could no longer keep his head up and fell back into his chair unable to hold himself up anymore. You asked me why I wear myself out trying. Because the people of this country is suffering under Gato's control. Naruto's face twisted into one of anger as his whisker marks got darker. There are women out there as young as Sakura and women just like your mom being taken by Gato and raped every day. I'm training myself into the ground so I can stop that. All the while you sat here in your home crying like a coward wishing for change but won't get off his ass and make it happen. Naruto again slapped the table breaking it completely in half. I will not set by while this happens to them. I will not abandon them I refuse to. I want to end their suffering and bring them home for them and their families. That's why I'm trying so fucking hard and that's why even if I die I will not run away and hide. I'll face Gato and his army to free them even if I have to do it alone. Naruto screamed at the top of his lungs before he stormed out of the house slamming the door making it nearly fly off its hinges. Flashback end. The moment Naruto stopped thinking about the past the cell doors opened and the two bandits from before walked in but this time with a machete in hand. I uh, wonder where he got his hands on one of those? Well are you ready to talk now? I really hoping the answer is no so cut off that pretty face of yours. The fat bandit said with a smug look on his face. Naruto looked at the bandit and sighed. Okay this is how it going to happen. I'm going to kill you with that nice machete you have. The blonde ninja said nudging his head towards the fat one before looking at the other. And you I'm going to kill you by stomping your head in, he exclaimed in a monotone voice devoid of all emotion. The two bandit got dick marks on their head. Why you little shit? The fat bandit screamed and raged as he charged at the blonde machete held high. In a flash Naruto kick in the charging bandit's knee breaking it and making him fall. With another quick kick he hit the handle end of the machete freeing it from the bandit's grip and stabbing it into the selling. The other meat sack got over his shock and charged in attempt to help his comrade only to be rewarded by having the air knocked out of his lungs. As the skinny one crumpled on the ground Naruto gave a malicious kick to the fat one's face crushing bone and cartilage, rocketing him across the room. Naruto brought his right leg up and with all his physical strength brought it down on the skinny bandit's head smearing bone and bran matter across the floor and cracking the surface underneath. The vibrations loosened the machete making it fall. In a feat of great skill Naruto caught the machete and balanced it on his foot. Last remaining bandit managed to stand with the wall acting as a brace. Naruto flicked the machete off his foot like a hacky sack player, 
pushing a little wind chakra into the blade sent it sailing at the fat bandit beheading him. In a shower of blood his body fell like a sack of potatoes. Naruto gave a quick tug on his chains breaking them off the wall. Hey Q-chan what was the time? About 5 seconds starting when you busted that guy's knee. The QB said in a sing-song tone, Naruto face was in a stupefied look. Really? Damn it I was going for 3 at the most. He complained as he snapped off the shackles. Well they were kind of slow Naruto-kun, and why do you have show off so much? She said in a cute pouting voice, you know me, I love showing off. Naruto thought happily with a foxy grin. His smile slowly turned into a frown as a serious look came over his face. Let's go Q-chan we have women to save and Gato's base to destroy. Grabbing a hold of the machete Naruto yanked it out of the wall as he exited the blood-filled room. Naruto walked out the room and into the hallway that was filled with bandits and started to walk past them with so much as blinking as if he owned the place. Hey guys have a life insurance? He asked in a mocking manner. One of the shocked bandits shakes his head and charged with weapon pose to strike. Apparently it's great. The blonde shinobi yelled. Faster than any of the bandits could see the shirtless Naruto spun around and cut off his head. Soon the screams of the bandits could be heard all the way from the mansion to the town as Naruto tore his way through the bandits leaving the mangled and dismembered bodies where they fell. No bandit was safe from the blonde's wrath as he painted the walls with their blood. It didn't matter how many of them there were, they couldn't stop the natural storm made human form. Each time he found a group of women he would free them and have a group of clones guard them. The screams of the bandits trailed after the blonde before they were snuffed out. Just before Naruto's breakout, Kakashi and his team were walking down the road on with Tazuna to the bridge when they stopped to see the unconscious workers. What happened here? Was the general thought amongst the group. The thick fog that covered the bridge started to retreat reviling the figures of Zabuza and the masked Haku with the former giving a soft laugh. How clever of you Kakashi, I didn't think you would be able to get someone of his caliber on a mission like this. Ha 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 you even dressed him up as a Jinan. Everyone got a confused look on their faces. What are you talking about? The disgruntled Jonin asked. Zabuza narrowed his eyes in annoyance. Don't play coy with me Kakashi how did you find him? How did you find the wandering demon? Kakashi's one visible eye widened in surprise. You mean his real? I thought he was a superstition. Zabuza busted out in a madding and dark laugh making everyone uneasy. Oh I assure you Kakashi is very real. I can't believe you're working with some you don't know shit about. Ha 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 it's too great. Zabuza started to saddle down. Haku looked over at her teacher and tilted her head. Zabuza sama who is he, you never told me. The demon of the mist looked at his apprentice out of the corner of his eye before shifting it back to the group of Konoha ninja. I first meet the blonde while I was fighting in the bloodline wars around 5 years ago. That SOB of Amizukage decided to try an all-out assault on the refugee camps to kill of the remaining bloodline users. We were able to repel the first wave but it was only meant to weaken us. The second wave hit us in larger numbers and skilled shinobi unlike the Jinan and Chunin sent in the first attack. After that things got really ugly really fast. Flashback. The battlefield just outside of the camps was torn apart as were the bodies laid across it. Young and old were spread out laying where they fell forgotten by their comrades in favor of fighting. The sounds of screams and ringing metal sung over the area. Zabuza was surrounded by Jonin level shinobi and was panting pretty hard from fighting so much. Damn. What the fuck am I going to do now? The battle between Zabuza and the faceless nobodies of shinobi but they were too many and he was soon pushed back into a corner using his sword to keep him upright. Fuck I'm going to die here, it can't end like this. His face scrounged up into an angry scowl as a growl erupted from his throat. I won't let it end like this. He yelled his battle cry as he charged swinging wildly at the Jonin. With a lucky swing was able to cut two of them in half with his clever like sword but ended up getting stabbed in the back by a kunai. Damn it, why did it have to end like this? The demon though as he fell to the ground hitting with a thud. Finally we got the demon. Say hello to the blood whores on the other side for us. The man said as he put his arm above his head, clutching a kunai tightly in hand intent on stabbing the famed demon in the head. Zabuza closed his eyes waiting for death to claim him. He waited and waited but it never came. Slowly he opened his eyes and was shocked at seeing all of the Jonin the surrounding him lying on the ground in a pool of their own blood with a child no old than nine standing over him. The boy had blonde hair with whisker like marks on his face and had blotches of blood covering his clothes. Zabuza's mind couldn't comprehend what had happened so he asked the one thing he could think of. W.Y. The boy looked at the demon and gave a soft smile. Because you're trying to do what's right by saving this people. The world does not need less people willing to put their lives on the line to do what's right, it needs more of them. The odd blonde kneeled down and pulled out the kunai and bandaged the wound. After making sure the injury was treated the boy stood up. Where the fate of many lay, we are there to protect the innocent, and destroy the corrupt. Right, 
Zabuza? He asked as he started to leave the demon who was unable to say anything. Naruto drew his sword making a metallic ring then he started to run off at high speeds until he became nothing but a blur to everyone. Many of the less skilled Mist Ninja around the battle began dropping like flies in a shower of blood and gore. Soon the battle became a standstill as both sides stood across from one another. The commander of ninjas of the mist called out. Why don't you give up we outnumber you two to one, you don't stand a chance. Naruto balled his fist as his body shook uncontrollably until he couldn't take it anymore and throw his arms out to his side. We won't give up or given you know why. Naruto pointed a finger at the opposing army. Because we will not let you touch one hair on the innocent, we are protectors of the bloodlines. Naruto voice rang out across the field steering the emotions of rebels. We are savers of children who will take our place. Shouts started rage out in support of the blonde. We are the shield of our loved ones and their swords. The cries increased at every sentences. Where the fate of many lay, we are there to protect the innocent and destroy the corrupt. The rebel's shout became one into a thunder's noise that defend and stroke fear into the heart of the Kiri ninja. The rebels charged with Naruto out in front leading the charge. Their footsteps shook the ground under them. That last bit of Naruto's speech became a railing cry for the rest of the rebelling army until the war was won. End of flashback. After that I found out the brat was traveling around the country saving other blood users from Hunter Nin, Anbu, and Jonin for around a year before that. Not only that but he saved over 50% of the rebels and civilians, Zabuza said shocking the rest of them. I want to face him again and this time I know not to underestimate him so I will kill him, but if he really saved your life why do you want to kill him just because he stands in your way of your mission? Sakura asked trying to hide behind her Jonin sensei. Humphrey this isn't about the stupid old man or about a pity drug lord's greed. This is about my pride as a swordsman. He's strong and I want to see how strong I am when I know what my opponent's capable of. But I suppose since he's not here I'll saddle for completing my mission until he gets here, he said as the fog shattered their forms and disappeared into the thick mist. Okay guys get into formation and protect Tazna. Kakashi ordered. No sooner had the god in a protective stance around the bridge builder a circular of Zabuza's appeared around them. Sasuke smirked and that confused Zabuza. Go ahead Sasuke they're all yours. With Naruto. Because the fight at the bridge happens pretty much the same. The blonde sat atop a mound of corpses made from the bodies of the bandits as his cleaned his newly found coat. Man why did they have to get it all dirty? He sighed and stood up and put on his jacket, patting himself down to get out any remaining dust he smiled and nodded in satisfaction. Naruto sama are you going now? Naruto looked over to see the speaker to see a redhead woman about his age he saved in some old clothing he found. Naruto gave a bright foxy smile. Yeah after all I still have to save this country. The woman nodded with a small smile. Okay go get them Naruto-sama. Naruto got a tick mark on his head. Quit calling me that. I'm nobody's master. The girl smiled brightly giving a cheerful smile. I can't do that sorry Naruto-sama. Naruto sighed before shaking his head. Whatever. Naruto did a quick hand sign making 100 clones. You guys protect this place and everyone in it. Naruto then jumped off the pile and over the wall and ran into the forest towards the bridge. I wonder how the clones I made to protect Inari and Tsunami are doing? With the clones, the copies of our blonde hero were standing over the corpses of Gato's bodyguards after their fail attempt to kidnap Tsunami to use her as a hostage. Man these guys are sad. I know they were competently weak. The other clone said with a sigh. I mean it's not like I thought they would be stronger but they didn't even know how to wield a sword. Inari looked at the blondes with wide eyes. Hey Inari I want to apologize to you. You're not a coward after all. Because what you did to save your mom was very brave and you were so strong. The golden hair man said as he patted his head. The child felt pride walled up in his chest. Naruto's so strong and he thinks I'm brave, is this what dad meant when I said those things? Tears started to fall from his eyes as he tried to wipe them away but they kept falling. Damn I promised I wasn't going to cry anymore. Now you're going to make fun of me and call me a baby. Naruto gave a big smile. Now why would I do that? After all it's okay to cry when you're happy. Inari started to cry openly as he felt so happy after such a long time. Come on why don't we go back inside while the other me informs the boss what happened? The boy nodded and followed the clone inside the house. Boss it's a good thing you're so soft hearted, after all we are just copies of you. The blonde mused before he dispelled himself. Naruto, our favorite blonde just arrived at the bridge when the memoirs of his clone appeared in his mind making him smile at the thought of what Inari did. Rushing in to save your mom against two adults with swords with nothing more than a kitchen knife, I'm happy to say I was wrong about you Inari. Quickly putting aside those feelings Naruto hided within the mist to see what was happening. He found Sakura guarding Tazana while Kakashi was fighting Zabuza. 
Looking a little farther in Naruto saw Sasuke and Sai trapped within an ice dome on the verge of collapsing. Their bodies were covered in needles and seemed to be losing conciseness by the second. The masked hunter Nin seemed to be getting ready to finish them off so Naruto took off as fast as could. With Sasuke and Sai, Sasuke was looking around at all the mirrors trying to see which one Haku would come out of next with his Sharingan. Damn it which one, why did it have to go this way it started out so well. Now we're going to die. Sasuke kept looking around when he saw it. Haku jumping out of the mirror with the needles posed to strike. To his great relief a black blur slammed into Haku launching her into one of her ice mirrors and she broke through them. He was surprised to see his blonde hair rival standing over him in a protective manner as he was panting showing how out of breath he was. Got here, just in, time. Sasuke you just sit there and rest, I'll take care of this. What hit me? Haku thought as she got back up holding her head with her vision swimming. She looked over to the ice dome to see the blonde-haired boy walk out of icy prison with his open coat flipping in the breeze and his bare chest shone. Haku felt her cheeks start to heat up but quickly pushed the feeling down. I can't be thinking about that as my enemy right now. Haku quickly got into a defensive stance with her needles in between each of her fingers. Please surrender Hunter-san I do not wish to fight you, Naruto said as he reached for the hilt of his sword. I do not wish to fight the wandering demon either but you have to defend the bridge builder and Zabuza-sama to kill him. You can is why I must fight, because I will help Zabuza-sama reach his goal for that is my dream. Wow now that's a name I have not heard in a long time. Naruto stopped walking and stood about 20 feet away. Why does he matter so much to you? Haku had lowered slightly. Because he saved me from my loneliness and gave me a purpose. She told Naruto about how her life was like when she was a child and about when Zabuza saved her, raised her, trained her, and protected her. Naruto had a sad look on his face. I see. I can respect why you follow him. After all it's similar to myself and my father. However I will not sacrifice this nation and its people just because I understand how you feel. I will defeat you, then Zabuza, and kill Gato. I will free this country," he boldly said as he charged at the ice wilding ninja. They meet in a flurry of blows, sparks flew in the air as they block one another's attacks in rapid suction. Naruto sent a kick at Haku who caught it. Acting quickly Naruto planted his hand on the ground and tried to trip Haku with his other leg. She saw it coming and jumped back releasing his leg in order to escape. Sliding back a few inches Haku eyed her opponent to make sure she didn't miss anything. Naruto crossed his fingers in a familiar hand sign making four shadow clones and they charge without a second thought each swinging a copy of Naruto's sword at the fake hunter ninja. Leaving no time to think the blonde squid attacks the raven haired woman at a fast pass aiming for her mid deft causing Haku to jump in the air to avoid the attack. In a feat of acrobatics she threw a hail of senbone at the clones making them pop. She fast but not as fast as me even with my seals Naruto thought as he watched Haku battle the other two clones but she can keep up with me so I can take her lightly, I'm going to have to catch her off guard if I want to take her down quickly. Naruto ran quickly making three clones without a hand sign and separated from them running at Haku at speeds she could barely keep up with. In a flash of sliver light metal clashed against metal, sword against senbone both held firm by their masters. The blonde shinobi lashed out with a strong kick aimed for obsidian-haired woman's stomach only for her to knock it away and retaliate with one of her own. Naruto blocked with his forearm and shifted his sword for a hopeful stab at Haku's shoulder. She reacted quickly bending backwards to doge the strike and threw the senbone in hand hitting the blonde directly where his heart was. Victory seemed ushered as much as she didn't like killing he was too dangerous to her master, at least until he disappeared in a puff of smoke. Haku felt something hit her neck before she was overcome with darkness. Naruto raced to her and caught her before her body fell onto the cold ground. Man I love shadow clones, thanks boss. The clone said as Naruto just stared at it. Okay fine, it said with a huff before it dispelled. The blonde ninja looked at the girl in his arms with a small smile. Don't worry Haku-chan I won't let you be alone. I'll save Zabuza and free this country, he said with determination in his eyes. He gentle placed her on the ground before the sound like chippering birds broke through the bridge as the fog lifted. Naruto got to his feet in second and ran. Damn it Kakashi, let me make it on time. Naruto however didn't see Haku open her eyes at the loud screeching sound and form an ice mirror. With Kakashi at the same time. Kakashi, the copycat ninja of Kanahagakura was standing across from Zabuza who was trapped by several large summoning dogs. Each biting into his arms and legs holding him in place as blood dripped from the wounds. Lighting crackled and struck at anything near it giving of the sound similar to hundreds of birds chirping. This is the end Zabuza. With a strong push from his legs the Jonin ran towards his prisoner. Chidori. He screamed thrusting his hand forward straight at his chest as it inched closer and closer. 
to his surprise a mirror of what seemed to be ice formed in front of Zabuza with said man's accomplice stepping out of it ready to take the hit. With a quick flick of her rheus needles flew hitting the dogs causing them to disappear in a puff freeing the missing ninja. The world seemed to slow down when a black and yellow blur grabbed his wrist right at the base of his jutsu. To his amazement the Chidori was weakling without his consent. What the? Say all Kakashi could think before he saw a familiar blonde man as the electrical currents from the jutsu traveled through Naruto's arm and out his other one from his sword into the ground that was embedded in bridge. Naruto smirked as his two hands had smoke coming off them. Looks like I made it just in time again, Azabuza, brat. Was the demon's response to the blonde. Naruto way are you helping the enemy? Because I promised a friend I would, he said in a monotone taking a quick look at Haku. All thoughts were broken by the sounds of clapping echoing over the bridge as the mist lifted reviling Gato surrounded by a hundred bandits carrying all sorts of weapons from swords and spears to a modified garden hoe. The sort pudgy man walked out from the crowd with a smug look on his face. I have to say you're the hardest old man to kill Tazuna. But I guess with hired help of competent ninja it can't be helped unlike the ones I hired. The midget stated getting a growl from Zabuza. Oh yes I almost forgot I have some news for you demon of the mist. Gato said mockingly. You're fired Zabuza and I was never going to pay you in the first place. You see paying missing ninja is expensive, so instead I let them fight other ninja to wear each other out to the point where even normal bandits and thugs can kill them and then collect the bounty on their on their heads. It quit an easy way to make a profit. The greedy little man said with a smirk. Demon my ass if anything you're a baby demon. Zabuza stood to his full height and walked until he stood beside Kakashi and Naruto. It looks like there's no longer a reason to fight each other anymore, ah Kakashi? The silver hair man nodded. Yeah I agree. Gato tapped his cane on the concrete to get everyone's attain. Okay boys kill them but keep the woman alive for some fun. I want first creak at the one with pink hair it's such an exotic color for natural hair. The sick man said with a twisted grin pulling on his face. As soon as those words left his mouth gravity seemed to increase several times over across the entire bridge. Like in Bleach when someone releases a lot of spiritual oppressor, W what is T this? Gato and his thugs saw their life flashed before their eyes. Zabuza and Kakashi were sweating at the amount of dread he was feeling. What could be causing this feeling? This amount of killing intent is unreal. They focused in order to find the source of it and to their surprise it was coming from the blonde next to them who had his head down with the shadow covering his eyes. I it can't be be. Naruto looked up so Gato and his man could see his blue eyes that were colder than ice. You dare say that you would do that to those who have become one of my most important things. To Gato and his men their eyes widen as the killing intent manifested in their minds, they saw an image of a giant skeletal figure with horns coming out of its head and glowing red eyes as it carried two copies of Naruto's sword. You won't live past today scum, Naruto bellowed as the figure seemed to roar at them with such forces that some of the bandits were actually blown back. Gato felt like he was going to have a heart attack right there from the fear alone. HHER really is a D demon. He thought as he took a step back, Naruto crouched down with his sword to his side before he seemed to disappear with the skeletal image and not a second later he reappeared cutting down a group of bandits. Five bodies fell in a spray of blood as Naruto charged and starting to tire through the ranks of bandits sending blood in the air with legs, arms, and a few heads. The bandits that tried the attack were quickly killed and the one that tried to flee only died quicker. They stood no chance against the enraged blonde who become a storm incarnate, a mighty maelstrom in which nothing escaped from its grasp. Kakashi mind could not believe the amount carnage the blonde was causing luckily Sakura was passed out from the early display of KI along with Tazna. Haku as horrified as she was couldn't take her eyes off the blonde slaughtering them. No movement was wasted every step and swing killed someone in that mass of flesh and she was impressed but so were the two Jonin watching. Soon only Gato remained in the center of his army as blood pulled over the bridge. Blood covered Naruto from head to toe as he staked towards Gato as the midget fell on his ass too frightened to run away as he started to urinate in fear. W8 I if you let me live I'll give you anything you want. Naruto stopped right in front Gato making the short man claim himself a little but still very frightened. That right I'll give you anything you want money, I'll make you wealthier than you thought possible. Drugs, you can have warehouses full of them. Women, I can get you as many as you could possible want. The man started to stand seeing as how Naruto had yet to move from his spot. Shadows once again covered Naruto's eyes as he spoke. You know what Gato there is something I want. Gato looked relived and completely relaxed as he started to fix his tie. Sure whatever you want kid just name it. But to Gato's surprise Naruto's hand shot out and grabbed his throat and lifted him into the air as if he was nothing more than a toy doll. Naruto grip tightened as he stared the midget in the eyes. I want your life. The blonde said darkly as he ran his blade through Gato's head killing him. And so frees the people of wave from your evil. Yes Gato as die were freed. 
A voice yelled from the other side of the bridge soon followed by loud cheering. The noise walked the pink-haired Kunoichi and the master bridge builder up as every, who is awake at this point, saw everyone from the village armed looking like they were ready to fight if it wasn't for the fact that most were crying tears of joy. Naruto quickly ran through some hand signs making a large wave of water crash gently over the bridge and himself washing away all blood and bodies except Gato's as Naruto held on to that one. The now clean and wet blonde walked over to the town people and threw Gato at their feet before walking back to his temporary team. Dazunami not know how it happened but he didn't care all that matter was that Gato was no more, so he responded like any responsible adult should. Let's party. His voice rang through the crowds getting a happy roar in return. The party lasted for several days of food and drink that was supplied by many fishermen and sink makers. Zabuza, Kakashi and Tazuna got into a drinking contest with the old man somehow coming out on top. Sakura danced several nights away with the local kids and Naruto. Sai drew many of the villagers and his team having fun at the party. Haku got dragged into playing game with the kids by Naruto. Even Sasuke played some card game and dance a little, but not much. Naruto of course was held as the hero of wave and everyone wanted to talk to him, and many girls tried to get into his pants causing quiet the scene around the village making most laughed at him. All in all it was a blast for Team 7 but like all good things it came to an end. A few days later, Naruto was walking down the road by himself. Today was the day that Naruto and Team 7 would leave to go back Konoha and he wanted to make one stop first. Naruto walked to the once empty lot that now has a two-story building with seven bedrooms, a kitchen and large dining room. The building itself was painted red with brown roofing and a few windows. It was the building Naruto built with his own hands for the kids orphan because of Gato. Speaking of the kids they seemed to be gathered out around something and really happy. Then one of the kids spotted him and smiled brightly. Hey he's here. Naruto is here. The young child yelled as they all ran over to him trying to talk at once. Naruto laughed at how happy they were now. Come we got something to show you, they said as they pushed Naruto over to the building. They soon grabbed two ropes and started pulling on them raising an object covered by a blanket which he can only guess was a sign of some kind. Two kids who were in windows near it put it in place before pulling off the blanket. A black sign had big bold letters writing on it. The Uzumaki Orphanage. After spending an hour with the kids Naruto left to the bridge with the kids in tow. At the bridge, Naruto finally arrived at the bridge with the town there to surprise him with loud cheers and hellos. After getting to the team Naruto saddled in with them along with Zabuza and Haku. Dazuna and his family walked up with a teary-eyed Inari. Thanks to you guys we are free and our bridge is completed, but it's going to be awfully dull around here once you're gone. Tazuna joked lightly. Naruto gave a foxy smile. Don't worry if you're that bored I'll call Zabuza and Haku to cause some trouble and spice thing up. The bridge builder sweat dropped and waved his hand nervously. Never mind we'll be fine really you don't need to worry about us. Ha 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 ha. He laughed just a nervous making every snicker at the old man. Inari ran up and hugged the blonde young man the best he could. You better come back and visit Naruto, he said as he started to cry. Naruto hugged Inari back and promised we would visit sometime in the future. Naruto and Team 7 left for Konoha as Zabuza and Haku left for the Mist Village to rejoin. Tazuna let out a happy sigh. That boy touched Inari's heart along with the people of this village and built the bridges that will take us into the future. Speaking of we still need to name the bridge. Tsunami looked at her father with a smile. So what is its name going to be? Dazuna started to rub his chin and thought. How about, the Great Naruto Bridge? So that the bridge will stand forever as a symbol of triumph and endurance. That's a great name dad. Last chapter. Inari ran up and hugged the blonde young man the best he could. You better come back and visit Naruto, he said as he started to cry. Naruto hugged Inari back and promised we would visit sometime in the future. Naruto and Team 7 left for Konoha as Zabuza and Haku left to rejoin the Mist Village. Tazuna let out a happy sigh. That boy touched Inari's heart along with the people of this village and built the bridges that will take us into the future. Speaking of we still need to name the bridge. Tsunami looked at her father with a smile. So what is its name going to be? Tazuna started to rub his chin and thought. How about, the Great Naruto Bridge? So that the bridge will stand forever as a symbol of triumph and endurance. That's a great name dad. Now. So that's the mission report then? Asked the elder Hokage as he smoked his pipe. Kakashi looked away from his book to stare at his superior with a dry look. Yes Hokage-sama that's everything that has happened while we were in the land of waves. Very good work team 7 and 0 I'll mark this as a successful A rank mission. You may take your leave now. He told them as he brought down a stamp classifying the mission. Once everyone but Naruto left with the door closed the aged cage looked at the young blonde ninja. 
Naruto tell me how did your secondary mission went? Naruto sighed a little before taking out the scroll the old man gave him before the mission. It went perfectly. I was able to find the source of the corruption in Wave, emanate said problem and retrieve all his assets. Then I put most into the bank accounts of the people in the national treasury so their economy can stabilize. I made sure that all the corrupted leaders were disposed of and that Kana will be the one to take credit for bringing their nation to their feet and several trade and protection agreements were left at Tazana's home, Naruto said with a hint of pride and boastfulness. What of Team 7? Did you have to use the scroll? Sarutobi asked question. The blonde shook his head. No they were unaware of my activates and the scroll went unused. The elder man nodded his head with a small smile. Very good Naruto your secret A rank mission is complete so you'll get your pay along with your pay for the original mission you went on. Sarutobi's face darkened into a sad one. He could see how the mission really affected Naruto. It dug up old wounds that have yet to heal and guilt that doesn't go away. Naruto I know the mission has been rough on you and that you're trying to bury it but you don't have to my boy. Anytime you want to talk my door is always open to you. Naruto gave a small heartfelt smile. Thanks old man but I'll be okay. Now if you don't mind I'm going home for a nap. With that Naruto walked out of the building. Reclining in his chair the Hokage felt his age as he sadly sighed. You have taken things on by yourself since the day you were born haven't you Naruto? You were always alone with only yourself to count on. Even when you were with Itachi you did everything by yourself never asking him for help. The third mused to himself before inhaling another puff of his tobacco pipe. But you can't do everything yourself Naruto. Sooner or later you'll have to let others help you. Everyone needs someone to lean on every on and again for support. Later that day, within the village hidden in a leaf our favorite blonde ninja side has walked down the road just having got out of his mission debriefing with the third lord. His jacket moved around in the wind as it blew past him. Dark thoughts hung over the hero's head like a rain cloud swiping sadness and guilt. Soon Naruto found himself at a park, the very same one that his grandmother took him to before he lift the leaf for those three years. Setting down at a bench he looked out at the family running around playing. Going to wave meeting Zabuza again. It dug up the old memories from the war. All of the lives taken by his hand staining it with blood until all you could see was the crimson fluid. How many? How many men? How many women have I killed? How many of them had children waiting at home for them? He wondered to himself as a dark look gather in his eyes becoming cloudy and lifeless. His eyes scan over the people around him. Most are busy play with their kids enjoying the mid-afternoon sun but a fewer look at him with scornful looks. Hate shine through trying to claw at him with their stare. One that was colder than any winter and shaper than any blade. They still look at me like that, like I'm a monster. Naruto looked down at his feet like they were his only comfort in the whole world. I almost forgot what it was like. But now they have a right to stare. I have killed so many people that I can't even remember how many of them there are. So many faces and voices blurred together after so long. I have become a monster only good for killing those around me. A hard lump the size of a golf ball found its way into his throat stopping air from entering his lungs. Tears threatened to fall from his eyes as the guilt aided him from the inside out. He couldn't allow himself to cry he made a promise to himself to never cry again. Don't cry damn it. You can't cry anymore. He yelled at himself trying so hard to not let the tears fall. Stop being a baby. His hands griped the fabric of his pants in untold pain and frustration. Naruto? A soft voice asked as they put a gentile hand on his shoulders causing him look at the speaker. It turned out to be the shy Hinata Hyuga looking at him with worry. Are you okay Naruto? Naruto's eyes widened as he looked at his friend shocked to see her here. What are you doing here Hinata? The indigo haired girl started poking her fingers together as she swayed from side to side a little. I was walking to get some lunch after training today and I saw you sitting there. You looked like you were sad so I wanted to help if I could, she exclaimed as she fidgeted around. The blonde smiled a little as he wiped away his tears that was still in his eyes. Thanks Hinata but I'm okay now so you don't have to worry about me. A small frown found its way to her face as she clenched her hands together over Naruto's. You're wrong I do have to. Naruto looked at her owlishly. Slowly looking down Hinata quickly grew a blush that would make a tomato green with envy. You know because you're my friend, she said meekly a stem drifted off her head. Naruto face fell again as he brought his hands to his face resting his head onto his hands. Hinata you're a very sweet girl and very innocent to the darkness of the world that surrounds us. I have done things that you would never be able to look at me the same way again. The tone of his voice made Hinata worried for her friend. What do you mean Naruto? What did you do? She asked while taking a sit next to her crush. The blonde took a deep breath before looking at the blue haired with his sorrowful eyes that showed a world of pain and guilt. I have killed before Hinata. Dozen, no hundreds of people. Hinata's eyes widened in surprise and shocked as she covered her mouth with horror. There was no way Naruto, 
the same boy who has become her friend, the sweet boy who looked over their group and taught them to become better ninjas. The same person who they looked up to as a leader and teacher to her and her friends could kill so many people was just unthinkable. Naruto didn't seem to notice the look on her face as he kept talking, many had families, children, waiting at home for them to return only to later find out that they will never see their parents' smiling faces. Naruto's voice started to break as he griped his hands together until they turned white. There have been so many I can't even remember their names or faces anymore. Hinata's eyes were locked onto the blonde beside her as heart was breaking for him. Naruto, blonde hair covered his eyes and showed his face from view. I have become a monster who is only good for killing. No you're wrong, Hinata said loudly as she grasped Naruto's hand. You're not a monster Naruto a monster wouldn't care who or how many it killed. The fact that you care, that you feel guilty for having to kill is proof enough that you're not a monster. There is no way you would enjoy killing someone I can't believe it. Her eyes shinned with care and deference. You would only kill someone when there was no other way or if someone was in danger. With each word his heart slowly became lifted from the darkness. The blonde blinked a few times before a small, soft smile found its way to his face. Haha ha, you're so weird sometimes Hinata. Naruto laughed unaware of how the young girl has slumped down onto the ground while a storm cloud rained on top of her head. But you know something. The girl looked at her crush to see him with his hand reached out towards her to help her up. I wouldn't have you any other way than how you really are. You're such a good friend and you helped me feel better just by caring about me. Naruto's face gained a soft look as his eyes shined brightly once again filled with life. Thank you for being my friend Hinata it means a lot to me. With true style Hinata touched Naruto's hand, and fainted into an ungraceful pile. What happened? Hinata where are you? Kurenai has been looking for you. A familiar voice rang out though the crowed. Kiba get over here Hinata fainted, Naruto cried out to the dog using ninja. In a cloud of dust Kiba skidded to a stop. What happened this time? I don't know she just fainted. Oh man I better take her before something else happens. Why does this kind of stuff keep happening around you? Naruto's eyebrow twitched at the comment made by the brown haired boy. Just take her home please. Kiba left without a word. A couple hours later, Sakura and Dino were walking down the street holding crates of flowers to deliver while they talked cashing up. Sakura and Dino both fell for the same boy when they were younger and became rivals for his affection. Because of this they stopped being friends, slowly they started becoming rivals in every aspect of life. While they still talked to one another about life problems they have or to share the latest news and that was all they did until Naruto rekindled their friendship. He pointed out that the guy they chased after will only go out with the one he liked and no amount of fighting each other will make him fall for them. So they should stay friends because there was no way of knowing which one he would chose until he did and no friendship was worth destroying from some guy or girl who may not stay with you. It was going a little slow at first but now it was like they never stopped being friends in the first place. Then Sasuke and Sai started to fight again while Naruto laughed at them. Well until Sai said something he shouldn't have. Naruto hit him so hard that he went flying through a tree and indented the one behind it, Sakura laughed at the memories. Now Sai keeps calling Naruto Naruto-sama out of fear, Ino giggled at the story Sakura told. I have to say forehead that's a crazy adventure you went on good thing Naruto was there huh? Yeah it was, if he wasn't there I'm not sure what would have happened. Sakura nodded as they delivered the flowers to the nearby temple. Setting down crates of flowers the girls started to head back to the shop. But Naruto really was amazing out there. To see him in action defeating such strong opponents and freeing the country. A fond smile worked its way across her face. It's something I won't forget. Ino just looked at her friend with a raised eyebrow. Well let's get going then we have shopping to do and you have a cash to burn though. Grabbing a hold of her wrist Ino dragged Sakura through streets of Konoha. Soon the teens started racing down the street rounding the corners and people. They were neck and neck thought the whole race won in the lead of another only to be passed if only a little. Give up Sakura you won't win this. The blonde said with a smirk. Yeah right I have this in the bag, yelled the pink haired ninja. As they rounded another corner both hit a wall of hardened flesh but with two equal forces hitting it and it not expecting the crash of the two teens the wall came crashing down and tangling them together. Ow, Ino cried as she opened her eyes to see a mop of blonde and pink hair swarming her vision. What's on top of me? UGR are you girls okay? A male voice questioned while getting up. No it can't be. But it was the blonde who seemed to be haunting her lately. Nardo. What where? yelled Sakura as she shot up from under the blonde ninja headbutting him in the chin making fly off and crash into the ground as tears flow down his cheeks. Why me? Naruto whined as he held his swollen chin, feeling the impact on her head the pink haired teen turns around to see her new hero on the ground in pain. Oh my goodness what happened Naruto? Sakura pulled Naruto's head into her lap to better look at his chin to make sure it wasn't broken. Did Ino hurt you? 
she asked without a thought. Ino reacted with a clam and clear head showing her years of ninja training. You're the one WHO tried to knock his block off with her big head billboard brow. Sakura blushes at realizing Naruto was what she felt hit her head but anger replaces any sense of embarrassment. Shut up Ino pig I didn't ask you now did I? Ino and Sakura butted heads as they pushed each other back and forth while light and shot out of their eyes. You don't have to ask me I'll happily tell you when your big head starts getting in the way of people. Why don't you go jump into a lake to cool off you hot head? Ino crossed her arms as she huffed. Whatever. Naruto stood up from the hard ground and stretched popping his spine several times. As funny as this is to watch you fight shouldn't you two be heading to wherever it is you were in such a hurry to get to before? The two blushed looking sheepish while they gave a lame laugh. Our blonde hero just smiled at the two before chuckling and shaking his head. An idea popped into Ino's head causing a large smile to spread across her face. Hey Naruto why don't come with us? We're going shopping and we could use your help with the bags. Yeah that's a great idea. Sakura clasped her hands together and gave the blonde puppy dog eyes the best she could. You would want us to have to carry all those heavy bags ourselves would you? Naruto started sweating at seeing her cute face feeling his will slowly sap away from him. Okay I'll go with you just stop making such a cute face. And like that he folded like a house of cards? The two girls high five each other in victory as the blonde ninja sighed to himself. What did I just agree to? Come on Naruto let's go. Several hours later, the girls walked down the street as they licked their ice cream happily while what appeared to be a mountain of bags followed behind them teetering side to side. The two really put Naruto to work making him judge how clothes look on them because they wanted a guy's opinion. The poor blonde had to watch the two of them try outfit after outfit for hours. If Naruto looked at them too long he would get slapped and called a pervert. If he looked away too quickly they thought he didn't like it and it took several minutes of telling them otherwise before they believed him. Soon the group came up to Sakura's home and started to put her bags inside until only Ino's bags were left. Too bad that was only a little over half of them. Thanks Naruto you have been a big help today. The pink haired female said as she kissed Naruto on the cheek before going side and shutting the door behind her. Ino then pointed to the side with as much flair as she could muster. Well come on then blonde wounder to my house. She yelled at the top of her lungs before walking away with said blonde following behind. You know you're blonde too Ino. He did pined in a monotone voice. Ino smiled brightly at Naruto making him gain a small blush on his face. I never said it was a bad thing now did I? As Naruto grumbled the Ino giggled at how childish the blonde super ninja could be at times like this. So what have you been up to Naruto? Nothing much to be honest. But before you and Sakura crashed into me and made me your pack mule I was sitting in the park thinking to myself. He said shifting the bag to a more comfy passion. The blonde female leaned forward with her head tilted to the side to see Naruto's face better. What were you thinking about? Honesty? With one nod from his fellow blonde Naruto sighed a little as he gained a far off look in his eyes. You know how before I joined your class I was training for three years with my dad. Well during that time I have had to kill, a lot. It hurts my heart even when I don't think about it. Ino was shocked to hear this but what kept her quit was the seldom look on Naruto's face. It just seemed so out of place on his face and for some reason it hurt her to see him like this. Over time I couldn't remember their faces or their voices and I feel guilty that I can't. Like if their lives didn't matter. I felt like I was just a monster because I couldn't see who they were anymore and it ate at me. Naruto felt something tightly but gently wrap around his chest. Looking down to his amazement it was Ino hugging him with her face in his chest. Yubaka, she said softly. You aren't a monster. You only did what you had to do to protect someone or because they wouldn't have stopped. She lifted her head to look at him in his eyes. You're too soft and kind to be a monster. I know I don't have any idea of how heavy the burden of killing someone really is, but you're not alone Naruto. You have friends and family to help lift some of the burden off. I'm here for you to Naruto. I'll always listen to you and I'll help you as much as I can. She buried her head into his chest again. I promise you won't ever be alone because I'll be right by your side to help you if you'll let me. Naruto rested his head on Ino's as he smiled. Thank you Ino very much for supporting me and caring about me. I really don't know how to say thank you enough. For a long time I thought I would always be alone in the darkness. But because of all my friends and, because of you I don't feel alone anymore. I feel like I'm walking the warm sunlight. Tears slowly ran down Ino's face. Why am I crying and why does my heart feel so tight but light at the same time? I feel like my blood is on fire. Why do I feel like this? Rubbing off the tears she pulled away from Naruto. You better not forget this Naruto because if you do then I'll just have to pound it into your thick skull do you understand? She tried to say intimately but came out soft and kind. Naruto gave his brightest smile that caused Ino to blush. You got it Ino. I promise I won't forget. I never go back on my word because that's my ninja way. At the Uchiha residence. Thump. Thump. 
Thump. The sounds of the young Uchiha hitting a stump repeatedly filled the air. Why is he so strong? I was useless on that mission. Sasuke berated himself as he kept hitting the log. When he left he couldn't put up a fight. He started to punch hard while anger filled his being. Then he comes back better than I could have ever thought the dope could get. The image of his blind rival standing above him after all of their fight filled his mind, him always being looked down on like he was below the blonde. Like he wasn't even worth his time. Just a bug under his boot that he could squash at any moment he chose to. And he could have. Sasuke unleashed a powerful punch in his mad fury on the stump ending with a sickened crack of his bones. He didn't remove his hand from the log, his anger numbing the pain. He took pity on me. I was nothing but a joke to him. He clenched his fist until blood started to drip down his flesh. The last mission popped into his mind. He was so strong and fast. He had to protect me and stop me from killing myself because I was dead weight. The raven-haired young man arm slumped to his side. I was a coward who was too scared to move once the danger became real. Sasuke sat down and leaned his back against the log as a breeze swept through the training ground. Looking up at the sky he felt the sun's heat warm his face. How do I become stronger? By training the all your heart and soul. Sasuke jumped at the monotone voice of his brother before looking at the elder Uchiha. But that's not enough. I have been training until I'm about ready to collapse since I could hold a kunai. Sadness and loss filled his voice to the brim. He leaves for a few years and he became so strong that it just doesn't seem far. The older male stood there in silence thinking over his next words. Sasuke do you want to know how he became so strong? Sasuke looked at his brother giving him his full attain. Naruto trained every single day past his breaking point until his body wouldn't move. Sasuke's eyes wide in surprise and shock but Itachi kept talking, but he didn't train so hard for his own power but for the sake of those around him. He wanted to protect those few he loves and who love him in return. He let his words sink in for a few moments then spoke again. He trains until his bones break and his chakra runs dry, he still trains like this every single day in order to become strong. He is ever satisfied with how far he has come and continuously to strive farther. Always reaching farther than his hand reach and doing everything he can to make it do so before trying to attain even greater power. Itachi kneeled next to his brother and looked into his eyes. I'm not saying be like Naruto Sasuke, because you have always carved out your own path. Find your own reason to get stronger, find your own will of fire so that you can shine brightly. Itachi stood up and began to walk to their family home as he looked over his shoulder and said. Don't forget that sometimes it's how strongly you feel for your goals that leads you to strength, my foolish little brother. After Itachi left Sasuke sat against the log trying to comprehend what it was his brother was saying to him. I thought I did have a reason to get stronger, is it not good enough? I want to become strong for my family, to restore our honor. He lifted his hand to the sun to look at it like it would somehow answer him. Is my goal really not good enough for me to get the strength I want or is it that my will isn't strong enough for my goal? His pounder to himself in silence. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
Her hair was still the flaming red he remembered but now it's short and straight compared to her long and snagged hair she had when he saved her. Her hair was now in a bobcat hairstyle and she wore cherry red lipstick and black eyeliner that really brought out her pale yellow eyes. She had grey sweatpants and a plain black shirt on with a duffel bag slanged over her shoulder. Rubbing his noise Naruto just nodded his head while sighing softly. Why are you here Yuina? He asked as he started to walk back to the village with her walking beside him with his arm tucked in between her low D-cup breasts. Smiling happily hearing him call her by her name she started to push his arm into her chest even more. Well after you left I stayed to get in better health and help the village get back to its feet. After that I came here to serve you faithfully for the rest of my days, she exclaimed causing Naruto to freeze mid-stride. She looked at the blonde and confusing and poked his cheek. What do you mean to serve me? The young hero suddenly came to life scaring the poor girl half to death and getting her to scream in fright. After getting her heart to claim down she turned to her hero. I mean exactly that Naruto-sama I'm here to attain to your every need. She seemed to get a lot of pep back into her step as she danced around the blonde giving a show of what she would do as she said it. If you want me clean I'll make it shine. If you want me cook I'll make you a meal even a cage you be jealous of. If you want me to tend to a garden I'll be happy to look after it. You want me make a statue of you I'll make it out of marble and use my teeth to carve it if I have to. She suddenly stopped dancing as her face to very red while cupped her cheeks and a giant, perverted smile spread across her face. If you wanna fuck me until I can't walk I'll bend over and let you have it me as much as you would like. If my master wants me to bear his children I'd happily give you a dozen beautiful babies she squalled out happily at the thought. Naruto clamped his noise shut to try to stop the blood from likening out of it. She is trying to kill me I swear it. Taking out a tissue to clean away the blood he threw away the tissue and cleared his throat. Yuina-san why would you want to serve me in the first place? The young girl snipped out of her daydream when she heard the question and looked at the blonde man before her getting a serious look about her. Well for one you saved me from being some sicko's plaything and didn't even ask for anything in return. You saved not only me but hundreds of women in the country without a second thought. You protected us and took care of us when you didn't have to even going so far as to help heal those who weren't as luckily as I was. Naruto got a sad look in his eyes. What if I told you the only reason I did all that was because it was my mission and was ordered to do so? Yuina walked up to the blonde and wrapped his hand in hers making him look her smiling face and her eyes that seemed to shine. I would say that I don't believe you Naruto-sama. The blonde's eyes widen in shock at her word. No one outside of the country knew what was happening and even if you were ordered to save us I saw the look in your eyes when you saw what Gato and his men did to us. Your eyes were filled with rage at him and his men were doing and filled with sadness for us going through such an awful thing. But what I saw most was your guilt, the guilt for not getting to you sooner. She brought Naruto's hands to her blushing face nuzzling into them. When you took care of us you were so gentle and caring that you didn't stop until you saw each one of us was taken care of. I know that whether or not you were ordered to you would have come to save us anyways because you are such a kind soul. You a born protector. That's why I chose to serve you Naruto-sama because on that day you became my whole world. She was lightly rubbing her face against Naruto hands when she felt something wet hit her head. Looking up she saw her master's tears cascaded down his whiskered cheeks while softly sobbing tears of joy. She smiled kindly at Naruto before lifting her hand and with as much gentleness as she could muster she wiped away his tears. Don't worry Naruto-sama I'm here and I'll always be here for you. Thank you. For what master? She asked confused. For caring so much for me. For making me your world, he said as he silently cried in front of her. No one has ever said that to me before and it feels so good to hear it so thank you Yuina. Thank you so very much. The young girl smiled as she lightly kissed Naruto cheek. You're a mistaking master I didn't make you my world. You became it when you showed me how gentle and kind the world can be when I forgot. When I was in the darkness and you pulled me out of it. You are my light master, you are the sun that gives my world life. Naruto cleared his tears to see Yuina smile a sweet, kind smile at him. How about you show me where we live now Naruto-sama? He laughed and nodded his head before offering her his arm. Yes Yuina Chan let's go home. Across Kana XXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXXX
We have learned we're in our two lives now, right? Getting a nod from the others she continued her plan. All right now I know what time he usually goes to sleep and how to pick a lock. All we need to gather some supplies and we'll be set. Will you just get on with the plan already? One of the girl yelled getting ill-tempered at the waiting. Fine. Giving a heavy sigh the young girl pointed at the map. Okay this is the plan girls so less than close. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
It didn't have shoulder but an elongated cuff covering most of her neck and orange frills going around the seam and ended just before it would have gone under her arm. Her breasts were mostly covered by the black cloth expect for the heart-shaped part of it that showed off some cleavage. The stomach had a black corset with orange lacing and buttons that ran down her sides. The skirt of the outfit was black with orange fluff underneath it and just long enough to hide her womanhood from praying eyes. She wore high-heeled boots with orange boot laces that went up to her mid-tight with black and orange knee-high socks. I looked at your civilian clothes before I left and you have a lot of black and orange so I thought you liked those colors so I got this to match. Naruto held his noise and pointed an accusing finger at her. That's not the problem and you know it. Why is that skirt so short? A perverted smirk broke out across her as she slowly shakes her hips side to side in an entrancing manner. It's so short so my master can enjoy seeing me clean around his apartment. She slowly brought her hands up to her waist and hocked her fingers in the hem of her skirt. Or would my master prefer that I didn't wear it at all? Naruto was blown back with a noise bleed and knocked out back onto his floor causing Yuina to giggle at her master. Walking over to the falling blonde she kneeled besides him looking at him with eyes filled with love and adoration before giving him a soft kiss on his cheek. My master is such a pervert yet he remains so poor and perfect. After rubbing his whiskers for a few minutes she dragged him to his bed with great difficulty before cleaning the blood and going to sleep herself. xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
his ever faithful maid yelled as she busted in the door wearing full samurai armor that had the same color as her maid outfit with the kanji for faithful painted on the orange breastplate. She looked around frantically before she spotted her master tied to a chair within the mass of people. She started to hit and push the young fangirls out of her way sending them off in every which detraction leaving a path of bruised humans laying in her wake. Naruto could only sweat drop at the scene before him. Managing to wiggle her way through the last of the girls she was surprisingly back into her maid outfit as she hugged the blonde male as tears of joy streamed down her face. I found you Naruto-sama. Yeah hi Yuina could you do me a favor and untie me? Said girl happily sprang to her feet. Yes Naruto-sama. With one pull at the rope it came undone. Naruto quicker than most could even dream of picked up his maid tucking her under his arm like a piece of board stood in front of his kidnappers with a white ball in hand. Sorry girls but I have to go. He slammed ball down onto the ground and when it cleared away he was long gone leaving behind the cries of fangirls. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.